Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for another final table here at the 2022 World Series of Poker. Bonus coverage once more as we spotted a good final table. The chips are still being stacked up. We're going to be in here for a long one, Donnie, as we are down to the final nine in this 3K No Limit Hold'em event. Alex Foxen is the headliner at this final table with plenty more storylines to uncover here. You can see the payouts on the left-hand side of your screen. My name is Rem Karinka, and Donnie Peters, as always, with me here on our bonus coverage. Let's have some fun today, Donnie. What do you, what do you, what do you think about today's lineup? I think it's pretty great overall. Um, I mean, I know you spoke to Niall Farrell kind of late last night, and he ended up busting out in 12th place, I believe. Um, you know, it would have been would have been cool to see him make it as well. A lot of big names were running deep overall in this event. Poker goes very own Jeff Platt. Yep. Finished uh, like 42nd, something like that. So. Made a nice run. I think he. I think I saw on his IG stories that he cashed for around 11k. Johnny Moreno, aka Johnny Vibes, uh, finished uh, in the 30 somewhere. Our guy Romain Lewis, Romain Lettuce Lewis, as I like to call him, the French sensation. Yep. He finished in 19th place. His nines got beaten by Ace Jack to fall in 19th and missed out on an extra five points. But hey. We have Alex Fox in here. We got David Mishikowski. We have Joey Wiseman. I've used them in a in Europe. And we have. It's going to be fun. And oh, there's an Italian somewhere at the table who's got a great rail. At least he had a great rail last night. So hopefully that continues. I think it's the gentleman in seat 9876 on the right hand side who's grinding his phone like never before. Wow. If I, I got to get used to these players. I yeah. ran, ran in here like a madman because I was late. Why, why is there so much traffic on a Saturday? What is happening? I was driving all over the place. I was like, what is going on? If you are new to this coverage, we are doing some bonus coverage of final tables that are not part of the PokerGo schedule. Today is a dark day for the PokerGo live streaming team. If you are unfamiliar with our streaming say, team. You say it's a dark day like it's the end of the world. It's a dark day. <laughs> the curtains are closed. The shop is closed. Uh, if you want to see more about our behind the scenes and how our PokerGo streams come together, check out the vlog we released today on our PokerGo YouTube channel. So if you're watching that channel right now, hit subscribe, like the video, and then check out our vlog whenever you have some time. We show you some behind the scenes on how these live streams come together. And there's not much really to say about how these streams come together because it is Donnie, myself, and producer Brad here running the show for you. We have a very basic three camera setup, but it's enough to give you an insight into what is happening at this final table. We'll try to give some commentary, analysis, have some fun with it. Just uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show if you're a true poker fan. Uh, we hope you enjoy this type of added coverage here on our YouTube channel. If you're in the chat, please let us know where you're watching from. We'd love to interact with everyone that is tuned in, dialed in. Oh, my girlfriend Jess is already in the chat here to clear up some sandwich talk. My, my wife wanted me to let you know that she does have YouTube. She does? Yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I actually, when I watch YouTube on our Roku, I actually log into her account. Oh, wow. So her her algorithm is completely tuned into uh, it's just tuned your, into poker. your preferences. Um, I believe we're playing 100k, 200k with a 200k big blind Annie. Um, chips are the chips are easier to distinguish between compared to a housewarming event when we had five colors in play. Right now, only two colors in play, Donnie. We have the blue slash purple. 100k chips and the green 25k chips. We are nine-handed at this final table. 44k guaranteed for the final line players and more than half a million dollars up for grabs. 425, Foxen comes in with a raise. Despite the fact that Foxen is not even near the top of the chip counts, he's going to be one of the betting favorites given his experience. Um, what is he, three-time or two-time GPI player of the year? Two time, I believe, and I believe it was back to back. Back to back, um, one of the most accomplished tournament players without a World Series of Poker bracelet, so he's looking to change that today. Kevin Mathers in the chat. Kevin, thanks for tuning in. Jimmy Bluff is with us as always, our valued moderator on the channel.
We're trying to engage with every single question, every single remark you have in the chat today. It's going to be a long stream. Yeah, even all you haters out there. Even we'll for the haters, at, we'll we, we even love the haters. Uh, Producer Brad will show us the uh, flop close-ups every time we have an exciting hand going on. So don't worry about you know, the views from, from the sky here on our uh, helicopter cam. There it is. Look at that. Three deuce, ten, three spades on the board as Misikowski defended his big blind here versus Foxen. Foxen started the day with 20 big blinds. Misikowski started with 49 big blinds. From left to right on your screen, the gentleman in the white hat with the blue brim, with the dark blue brim, is Nicholas Dolan. Next up, Nathan Rustler, and then Misikowski and Foxen as we head to the turn after a bet and a call. Five of hearts. Donnie, we're going to have to assume that Foxen's range is pretty tight given his under the gun range at a full ring table off a 20 big blind stack. Yes. I mean, most. Obviously, position plays a big role in it, but stack size as well in combination with the position. I don't think Alex Foxen is getting out of line here. I mean, Alex Foxen is certainly going to lean more aggressive in a lot of spots, but I'm not sure he's just coming in here blasting on a 20 big blind stack right away. Check, check on the turn, indicating he might want to get the showdown here. Eight of clubs on the river. Foxen intently staring at Mizikowski, anticipating his move. Checked to Foxen, who glances at the river immediately to see if anything changed. What types of hands, Donnie, do you think that Foxen will try to go for value with here? Um, does it have to be, you know, does he, does he even raise a stand suited under gun? I don't think so. I think that, you know, Jax would be the very minimum hand that he might have here, given the full ring situation. Yeah, I agree. I think Foxen will play, will lean a little bit more cautious here overall. It does look like he's going to go for value, though. And it looks like a sizable bet here. It looks like 1.15. You know, he could have something like jacks through kings. I mean, obviously, maybe aces without a spade in his hand. Yeah, because if, you have, if he has ace-king with the ace of spades, he's more likely to barrel the turn. Would you yes. say that? Yes. I mean, that hand might have a little bit of showdown value, but probably likely to just barrel the turn and go for it versus a hand like, you know, two red jacks, for example, right? You know, on the turn. Kind of a tricky spot, just kind of looking to get to showdown, but then given the check again for Mishikowski on the river, can try and get a little bit more value here. Mishikowski, I mean, look at the staring contest. They get a little smirk, Fox and smirks back. Look at this. They're like, what are we doing here? <laughs> this, is, this is the perfect time to be a chat pro. There are no graphics on our bonus coverage stream. This is just a three-person team running these streams as extra coverage. I think she said 1.25. That's also what it looks like. Um, but yeah, this is the perfect time to be a chat pro. Give us your predictions, your ranges, your assessments on every single hand. This is where you can really shine. Misikowski really considering it here. What kind of hands do you think Misikowski will defend with here in the big blinds? A he's pretty wide range, but I think in this spot, where he's thinking he probably just has one pair. No I mean, He could maybe even have an ace, ace high. Uh, no show for Foxen, who picks up <laughs> the first hand here at this final table, which is crucial given how the stack sizes are aligned right now. Misikowski, chip leader with 49 big blinds. Toby Boas, the shortest stack with 10 big blinds. So pretty tight bunch. One double up for the short stack would immediately put him back in the middle of the pack. Like I said earlier, the blue slash purple, depending on, depending on your level of color blindness, I, I, <laughs> I, I sometimes don't know if I am, but it looks like purple or blue to me. Those are 100Ks, and then the green chips are 25Ks. So let, let, me, let's, let me have a look at the chat, see if I missed anything during that hand. Christopher C says, did anyone ever tell you that you look like Edge and Christian had a kid? I don't even know who those people are. 
I, I don't WWE, know. WWE, bro. Come on, man. I know who they I are. I don't watch them. And I would agree. I don't watch fake sports. I can't do it. Little I did I know that Davide Siriano in seat six, the Italian who I pointed out has the rail, has a gold bracelet. Oh, wow. He won. I mean, he won a, a sick event. 2014 $10,000 Heads Up No Limit Holding Championship. <laughs> I mean, glad we were paying attention. Wow, we were not paying attention <laughs> at all. I mean, that's great, though. Jacob Bully with the hot takes. He says, my prediction is someone will win this tournament. That's, that's, a, that's a very spicy one there. Coming in hot, baby. Action folds around to Misikowski in the small blinds. Facing only Foxen in the big. Misikowski comes in with a raise from the looks of it, and Fox and shoves, and that's enough to pick up the pot. Looks like a raise to 500k from Misikowski, and Foxen is just swinging for it right out of the gate here. <coughs> Love to see it. I mean, it'd be, it'd be great for Alex Foxen to be able to notch his first WSOP gold bracelet. Let, let me just point something out here, Donnie, to the people watching. Look at the right-hand side of your screen. Look at the guys in the 7, 8, and 9 seat. Um, Toby Boas, Kevin Stevens, and Stefan Lenner. They look almost sort of relaxed and trying to, I guess, trying to sort of wake up here. It's uh, just past the noon hour in Las Vegas, while Alex Foxen has this look in his eyes of, like, I'm coming for all of you right now. He is here to really fight for every pot. Of course, pay jumps are very significant, so a, a player like Boas with 10 big blinds would very much enjoy seeing someone get eliminated. Meanwhile, action is on Joey Wiseman, sitting straight across from the dealer. Uh, excuse me, he's in the big blind, so action is on Boas, who moves all raise, in. 1.2 plays. 1.2 million is the raise from Boas, who has a little less than a million behind. He is the short stack at the table at this point. Folds around quickly to Foxen. Action now on Wiseman. He tosses him into the muck, and Boas rakes this one in. We have three gold bracelet winners at this final table. Wow. We got David Mishikowski. We have Joey Wiseman. And then, as I mentioned earlier, Davide Seriano have all previously won WSOP gold bracelets. So it's not just your your sort of like housewarming type final table. These are some some real killers here. Hope Jones says my prediction. Rustler one, Fox and two, Miskowski three. Can we bet on that? I don't know. Uh, George Waller saying, is this in Bally's? Yes, it is. This is in the Bally's ballroom. If you are in Las Vegas, you can just walk in here and give it a watch. We are not on a delay. This is as live as it can be. 550 is the raise from Kevin Stevens. Floor. Floor. It's a bent card. Bent card. Got to fix them cards, man. AC is doing much better, George. Thanks for asking. You, I mean, I know you went home early last night, but and we were here till like 3.30 in the morning because that heads up match was out of control. Um, but this room was electric last night. There was three... Well, there was this tournament playing out, which wasn't like exactly at a final table, like but they had two tables going. The 1K freeze out had a final oh, yeah, table. You had the $2,500 mixed triple draw had a final table. And then you had, of course, the 10K Omaha high low final table all going on at the same time. It was pretty buck wild in here. It was great to see. We haven't quite seen that yet. I know you have talked about how this room is like set up to have a great atmosphere, great energy when we get deeper on into the WSOP and specifically with the main event. I think we got a little taste of that last night. So this room is certainly like poised to come alive. And I, I mean, when the WSOP main event gets in here, oh, it's gonna be amazing. I can't wait. I love also how the tables are a bit more spaced out than usual. There's not a lot of uh, seat banging where you, know, you slide out your seat and you hit the player sitting behind you. And I think that's gonna contribute to the atmosphere during the main event as the cameras will be roaming 
not only those aisles, but also, of course, focused on um, a multitude of feature tables as we have a main feature table where all the Pokemon final tables are played out. We have a secondary and a, and a third feature table set up for final table action in the main event, and then we have the two tables inside the horseshoe, uh, one of which you are watching right now, which we are using for this bonus coverage. Action, meanwhile, at the table, Misikowski comes in for the min race to 400k, folds around to Boas in the big blind. He gives it up, and Misikowski takes this one down. Jesse Kirtland says, shout out Queen Angela Jordison, third in the 1k. Damn right, shout out. That's very impressive. Appreciate it. I remember when she she won, I believe it was three tournaments in a row. I want to say around like 2014, 15. I'm, I'm going to look this up. So Angela Jordison's been around for many years now, but she kind of burst onto the scene when she had a trio of wins in some smaller stuff. Yeah, 2015, April 2015, she won three tournaments at uh, the Poker Roundup Series in Pendleton. I believe that's in Oregon. I'm trying to look it up. Well, Pen Pendleton, Oregon, yes. She won three tournaments. Small stuff, but still, you know, put her on the map. She won a 10K, 18K, and then $8,700. And then obviously comes here, gets kind of a, a breakout score, her largest live tournament score, third place for 150K. Some early shining from women at the World Series of Poker. A woman won the first bracelet of the entire WSOP, Kate Kopp, in the Casino Employees event. And she also finished third in the Casino Employees event before, I think it was in 2018. So good on Kate Kopp there. And then obviously we have Angela Jordison here. She had a crazy rail last night. Crazy rail. I think her daughter was there on the rail. Faraz Jaka, she was wearing a Jaka coaching patch was Angela Jordison. So looks like she's getting some coaching from a former WPT player of the year in Faraz Jaka. I think we could see some uh, we could see some fun, exciting runs from Miss Jordison coming out this World Series. Great to see. For everyone who won a giveaway, including Clayton Leeds, please send a DM to, to PokerGo on Twitter and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Just uh, reached out to Robert Fenley, one of the winners from last night's giveaway. Might take us a day or two, but we'll get it sorted out. Uh, Clayton, I don't see a message from you. So if you have tried to DM us, please try again and we'll get you set up with your T-shirt. Uh, War Battle is saying, will you be streaming until there's a winner? Yes, we are here for the long haul. Even, as, even if Alex Fox and busts right away, we're going to stream until there's a winner tonight. And given you know, the stack sizes and the pay jumps, we might be in here for a long one. Stranded on second with Tony Clark. Had a deep run in this event, Donnie. Was watching our stream while he was playing. Cashed for some good money. Love it. Tony Clark, glad you're with us in, again today. Right. Is Tony Clark going to be diving into the monster stack now? <laughs> I mean, he should. Uh, Ryan Mann says, can't see the cards. This is not fun to watch. Ryan, this is where your imagination and your ability to estimate ranges comes into play. And of course, you know, this is uh, bonus coverage. So we're trying to keep it basic. A lot goes into creating a final table stream. As you can see in our most recent vlog, Donnie and I went behind the scenes to show you more of what goes on to put this together. But the only room in this entire building that we do not have access to is the POV room, as they call it, where the whole cards are carefully processed. Only one person has the key. If you're just tuning in, by the way, we uh, do some raffles also during this bonus coverage show and as always the first raffle is when we hit 250 likes on the video so smash that like button we'll give away a Phil Hellmuth Queen 4 offsuit t-shirt no better way to show up through your home game with a Phil Hellmuth Queen 4 off t-shirt to really keep him guessing meanwhile Foxen is back in action raising to what looks like 425,000 blinds currently 100 200 with a 200k big blind Annie Action folds around to Stevens in the cutoff. Oh, 
Steven sitting on roughly 5.8 million chips. Maybe a little bit less after uh, paying the blinds and antis. Dolan gives up his small blind action now on Nathan Rustler in the big blind. I can only imagine when you're a tournament grinder below the high roller level that it's still quite intimidating to play against someone like Alex Toxin. And oh, of course. Rustler makes the call. I would be scared to play against Alex Foxen. Flop comes down. 10, deuce, 5, rainbow flop. Aaron Collins is asking, what if you win a raffle and you don't have Twitter? Well, either get Twitter or hit us up on Discord, discord.gg slash poker go. You can find myself, Remco, on Discord. Send me a direct message if you happen to get lucky today. Rustler checks, check folds to a small bet from Foxen, who picks up his third pot of the day so far. Donnie, do you feel as though players will be watching Foxen even though he is not the chip leader by any stretch? Yeah, I mean, you already talked about his experience. I think everyone is pretty well aware of it. And then also, like you know, he's, he's the type of player, I mean, similar to what we saw with Joe Cata, uh, in the $1,500 six max final table where you don't want to start giving him any momentum. You don't want to make a loose play, whether that's a call, whether that's a shove, whatever it may be, because you just don't want to risk giving him chips. If Foxen is able to get chips, if he can double up here early, he has chipped up here early, but if he's able to score a double up, then it's going to be really tough on the other players. Alex Foxen looks like he's getting a little uh, squat there. Open up them hips. Former football player from Boston College. Believe he was a tight end. He's a big human. <laughs> he, he is. Not only an, an imposing figure for I, sure. I mean, he's been doing these sort of like, I don't know, what, what, what do you call this? Like a, a squat or whatever? Yeah, just, just, a, just a, a squat pause. He's been doing these squats and sort of lunges. And I do these every day, by the way. For I try and do multiple of them and try and hold them for at least 30 seconds. They're extremely good for you. Um, they really just kind of open up your hips, flex your knees, your ankles, all that sort of stuff. As we have Suriano here, bracelet winner, the Italian, moving all in. Two point three twenty five. What do you think? Yes, but I don't. I'm not sure he actually went all in. I th I think the four in the back are just behind. Still? I heard the dealer say one point eight two five, so he might have basically committed himself. It's enough to take it down, though. Suriano takes his first pot of the day. At the Poker Go Studio a couple months ago, I heard Alex Foxen talking with some of the players how one of the things he's working on this year is his pliability, mobility, flexibility, however you want to classify it. Doing a lot of stretching, doing some yoga. He does lift weights and work out, as you can likely tell. But uh, he wants to get a little bit more flexible overall. I might be trying out this squat position right now. I'll tell you if you're doing it wrong. There you go. Heels on the ground. Yep. I rode my bike for 60 miles this morning, so that really felt a lot harder than it should be. Tim Duckworth turned me on to that. <laughs> Tim Duckworth, who are, are uh, he's, in, he's in bulking season, so we can't really make fun of him. But it's, it's funny how you know we, the, the older we get, I mean, we're not we're not super old, but <laughs> we're kind of withered. The more we are weirdly health conscious about different things. I mean, I try and stretch every morning, you know, just. Because every time I get out of bed, I feel like, you know, I just played a football game and it doesn't feel too good. Action and fold it over to Stefan Lenner from Austria. Stefan Lenner, I'm going to guess, is a pretty good soccer player. <laughs> yeah. Because he has, he has a backpack that has a Nike soccer logo on it. And then I can just kind of tell... 
having played soccer my whole life, I can tell by like the way people stand if they're good at soccer, which you, you can probably tell similarly, like, oh, that guy rides a bike, you know, you just, you're just used to it. I thought you were going to say you could tell by his haircut. No, not by his haircut. His haircut looks like he's in an emo band, like <laughs> Taking Back Sunday or something. Uh, race the 400K here from Leonard, and uh, is that Mizikowski turning the screws with some new sort of black chip, Donnie? What's a, a we got a what, black chip out what, there? Where's the, where oh, did this baby. chip? Wait, where did this chip come from? <laughs> I mean, I'm that does look that is a totally different colored chip. That's great. I'm I'm assuming that's a 500k chip. Yeah, it must be. Th that's usually been the denominations here. Uh, 25k, 100k. Then they'll have a 500k. Usually it's been pink so far, and then they also have a million chip that we saw in the house warming. Uh, for Casino Magazine and Sebastian, who are you know a little bit unsure about this uh, split screen setup. The only reason we have it this way is so we don't have to adjust cameras or have robo cams or have extra personnel to run these bonus coverage streams for you guys. It's the only way for us to do this right now. And uh, if you guys, you know, if, if you guys keep watching, if we get enough likes and engagement with these channels, we're going to have a good argument to expand the coverage in years to come. But this is an experiment. and. We hope you guys enjoy the content. We're trying to give away some T-shirts. Maybe we'll give, you, give away some Pokego subscriptions later in the show. It's going to be a long night. Um, if we hit 250 likes on today's video, we're going to give away the Queen 4 Phil Helmuth T-shirt and more giveaways to come as the night goes on. Ed must play says, will we get to see the 7-card studs championship final table? Donnie, is that, is that on our list? I'm not sure. I don't think so, but it could also be one that Remco and I possibly fire up. So listen, we don't do the secondary stream when Poker Go mainstream is running just because we don't want to cannibalize the two things. And obviously we want to showcase our best in class product with the Poker Go mainstream. As Remco pointed out earlier, these are the dark days for <laughs> Poker Go <laughs> and uh, we're just trying to give you guys a little bit extra. Um, I'm checking on the schedule right now to see if we will get the 10K Seven card stud. I saw Phil Ivy bagged oh. second in chips in that one, so Phil, maybe uh, maybe that guy makes a run. I heard he's pretty good at stud. I mean, I'll you know. Table. I, I got some so I, I'm not sure we will get that final table because we have a competing event on that day that'll take place tomorrow, and it's quite a big competing event. It is the 25k high roller PLO, which still has Daniel Negrano in the mix. Daniel Negrano, tons of big names in that one. More than 1.4 million dollars up top. I think it had. Around 200 players or so in that field. So, but it's also a, a case where there are two secondary feature tables set up out there. They'll likely put the seven card stun on one of those two, swing the jib over, swing the camera over, give you some look ins to those events, you know, letting you know what's happened. And then, of course, you guys can check out WSAP.com for updates as those play out. Here comes Toby Boas once again with a large committing raise. He's not all in, but you know he might as well be at this point. Um, most players do this kind of raise to prevent themselves from getting into a spot where three more players go all in behind them, and then all of a sudden they can give themselves that option to fold to make a few pay jumps. But in this case, we are down to just one opponent for Boas, and that is Davide Suriano in the big blind. He's giving it a real look and a nod and a smile. We might have a showdown on our hands here. Oh! First card was a... Uh, <laughs> second card was a deuce. First might have been an ace. Boaz rakes in the chips. I think um, life is good. Or Someone in the chat said, can we get an estimation on the updated chip counts? Yes, we can. I'll try to do my best to count them here from our sky camera. Um, in the one seat, Nicholas Dolan looks like about 4.5, looks like about 4.9 million. Keep in mind, we're playing 100k, 200k with a 200k big blind Annie. Uh, two, four, five, six, six point five, six point six million for Nathan Rustler in the two seat. Two, four, six, eight, eight point eight point nine million for Misikowski. And keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen. This is also a good way to train your chip counting abilities, which is very helpful when you're playing in live events. I'm going off the same screen that you guys are. Uh, two, four, five, hey. 5.8. Looks like 6.3 million for Alex Foxen, and please correct me if I'm way off on the stream, but I'm pretty confident. <clears throat> Looks like about 4.4 million for 
Wiseman, who's on the button right now. Meanwhile, min raise from Leonard once more to 400k. Wiseman double checked his cards before glancing over at his stack and letting him go. Soriano with the quick fold in the small blind. Action down to, to Bo Toby Boas from the USA in the big blind. Wearing, wearing the, a t-shirt that I would buy in a heartbeat if it's under $50. Looks like Boas is going to make the call with about 2.2 million behind. Leonard sitting on 2, 4, 5, about 6 million. Deuce Deuce Queen on the flop, rainbow flop. Leonard has Boas covered by quite a big margin. Action check to him. Bet. A bet of one big blind by Leonard. Ethan is saying, why is this the standard coverage we get? Well, it's not. This is bonus coverage. The standard coverage is on PokerGo.com. We stream every other day, at least, some, sometimes even two to three days in a row. It's a big production. Crews about 30 people to put the stream together by my estimations, including, of course, the commentators and the people in the room where they do the card graphics. This is a three-person setup that we are doing right now. Boas gives it up, by the way, and Leonard rakes in another pot. Back to the counting, Suriano, who, you're, who you can see on the right-hand screen on the, on the far left side. It looks like about 2.7 million for him. Boas remains to the short stack with about 2.1. And then we have Kevin Stevens from the USA in the eighth seat. 245, 5.5. Looks like about 5.6 million for him. I hope, that, I hope I did a good job there at estimating the chip counts. Quick reminder here, 250 likes on the video and we will give away our first piece of merch of the day. I just like the video. Did you? Yeah, Good. It took me a little while, but you know. 250 I, likes I is all we need. Chris says, is this live live? It is live live. Literally live. Like, could not be any less live. When I look- They changed out my image. I just realized that. Given the double piece sign. Yeah, my Jess even asked, do you like the photo? She emailed you. I haven't looked at you're my not email even today. You're not even awake yet. I haven't looked at my email today. I have not. I'm, I'm so behind, it's not even funny with today. I'm supposed to do 9,000 things. I just finished an article in the last 10 minutes. That's why I wasn't talking. Um, I still have to send our email out. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's, it's busy times. I feel like someone is smoking in this room right now. Well, let's go. Where's security? Security was nowhere to be found last night. Last night was getting buck wild. People were standing on chairs, sitting on, <laughs> sitting on the edges of the set. Meanwhile, we've got some... Potential multi-way action. 425 is the raise from Dolan in, sorry, from uh, Rustler in the two seat. Foxen makes the call. Both blinds still are yet to decide. Well, we're closing in on 250 likes for that first giveaway. We'll do plenty, so don't yeah. go anywhere. <coughs> Three players. Ooh, baby. There it is, the first multi-way flop of the day as Stevens called from the big blind. Okay. Four, six, king, two clubs. Rustler, the initial raiser, checks immediately from the sounds of it. Okay. Fox and checks. Oh, sorry, excuse me, I'm, I'm getting way ahead of myself. Action checks to Foxen. <laughs> Over 200 likes. Love it, guys. Bet. Fox and bets.
Looks like 450. Stevens with the quick call and the initial razor, Nathan Rustler, lets go of his hand. Two players, maybe. Right. Ten of clubs on the turn. Stevens checks two Foxen. Let's consider some ranges here, Donnie. You know how much you while Foxen inquires about Steven's stack. And Rustler with the initial race from early position. Foxen with the call. Of course, we've got to put a lot of pocket pairs in this range. Perhaps even some, some, some connected kings. From the big blind, of course, Steven's getting a really good price. So his range is even wider. Check, check. Always Play. getting a good price from the big blind. Check, check it is. And Deuce of Spades completes the board on the river. If Steven leads here, it's going to be tough for Foxen, given how we've not seen much from Stevens. Of course, these guys might have some history from the previous two days of play, but that club is definitely something that looks like it could have hit Stevens. 750. 750 is the bet. Firing. Yeah. So 450 on the flop from Foxen. Call from Stevens and check, check on the turn. Said, <laughs> I'll show you one. Wow, Donnie, talking means strength, right? Yeah, I mean, there's a rule that <laughs> I think I forget what it is. My friends and I used to talk about it all the time. But if you ask the person, "Will you show?" and then depending on your answer, it's kind of a snap decision one way or the other. We got to get Mike Caro on the show. If they say yes, I think it's a call because it's likely a bluff. And then if they say no, you usually fold because it's value. But I don't know about the show one. <laughs> <laughs> Fox and folds. And do, or do we get to see one? Yeah. Yeah, we do, actually. That's oh, a, club. a club. Nine of clubs. I like, mean, I think he had a flush. I mean, I think he had a flush also. Uh, RL from Chatsville says, I liked, I liked and got a phone call for a great deal on my car, car warranty. Got Le two two shows. I wouldn't be talking to someone like Alex Foxen. Like Al Alex Foxen is clearly asking questions or <laughs> talking to you, trying to gain further information. That, given his experience that he already has, that he already presents at the table, I would avoid engaging with him to a degree that I don't need to. Yeah, you're going to have to play hands with him. I get it. But I would not engage with him in any sort of way that would lend Alex more information to then make better decisions. Hey. If Stevens did have a flush there, he might have cost himself some value talking back to Fox, right? So interesting situation. Of course, we don't fully know if he had a flush or not, but I'm going to guess yes, given that we did see one club, also that line. Would have been interesting to see Stevens check the river. I mean, earlier we did see a hand between Mishikowski and Fox and where it did go. Check, check on the flop, and then Alex went for value on the river, or what we think is value on the river. He at least bet the river. Um, so check, check on the turn doesn't necessarily mean Alex Fox is then also checking back rivers. So it could have been a spot where Stevens was able to extract some extra value that way got in a check raise, etc. But hey, either way, chips went to Stevens, so. Fox in here, raise. staying on the gas. Comes in with a raise. Players are playing 100,000, 200,000 with a 200,000 big blind ante. I believe that raises to 425k from Foxen. Slightly more than the min raise. Earl Sulling says, who would pay for this garbage? Well, nobody, because it's free. This that is, is a, true. This is as free as it gets. Even the Fiji water is free. Um, but yeah, this is bonus coverage, Earl. Don't worry about it. We're not, we're not charging your account for this. If you want to check out our book of coverage, though, we got a, a good deal. 
And you if you do happen to get charged for this, I mean, I mean, you need to take it up with YouTube, not us. <laughs> it's not our problem. <laughs> I mean, on our last stream that we did, which ran for about seven hours, um, we received some donations from some wonderful people in the chat. That money all went to our coffee budget. I already bought one. Today. And I was going to say, Donnie already used it immediately. The la late at the Starbucks. So the Starbucks, I have a Starbucks right by my house, and I usually go there. It's just, it's just convenient. I mean, I don't. I'm kind of indifferent on Starbucks coffee. It's just the convenience factor. I, I hate, right I hate there. you for it. Let's put that on record. I hate what? you for it. Support local, bro. Yeah, but I, mothership. I, I'm mothership. I'm telling you why. Your, I know. Mothership is not on my way. Mothership is way out of the way. Okay, fine. I know where mothership is. So it's just it's the convenience factor for me, and and also like, you know, I can just snap order it on my phone, True. pick it up at the like it's just simple, <laughs> right? I I get it. Um, but I do, when I have more time on the weekends and when it's not, you know, busy WSB season, et cetera, I do like to go to more local shops. What's the one that... Dark, um, Dark Moon? Have you been there? No, I haven't been there yet, actually. But there's one on St. Rose. What's it called? Uh, Over by, like, a subway. Oh, uh, Founders. Yes, Founders. I go there a bit. Founders is good. Uh, Mothership is better. Really? Dark Moon is even better, I believe. Yeah, mo Mothership is, is good. as I've had it as well. It's just a little bit further out of the way. But... We got under the gun raise here from Miskowski to 400k and a three bet. Our first one of the day for Joey Wiseman. Wiseman hasn't been active at hasn't, all, right? Hasn't done anything. Yep. Um, hard to see here what the total bet is, but it looks like at least a million. Founders is my spot if I'm, you know, making a Costco run because it's basically across the street. They got some good stuff there. But anyway, the lady at Starbucks said, "Oh, you went with Trenta today. <laughs> yeah, it's WSOP season. Like it's it's, it's Trenta or nothing. Trenta red eye." <laughs> Miskowski makes the call. It does look like a million chip three bet there from Wiseman. So about 2.3 million in the middle here as we look at five, eight, nine with two clubs. Donnie, right. I mean, Wiseman's range, three betting the undergun razor has to be extremely narrow. We're thinking aces, kings, queens, ace, king, suited, that kind of hand. Yeah, I think both players have pretty narrow ranges here, given that Mishikowski won open under the gun and now called the three bet out of position against a good player in Joey Wiseman. And then, as you pointed out, Joey Wiseman is three betting an under the gun razor. We haven't seen Mishikowski get out of hand at this final table, so given that this went check, check on the flop, there's a lot of, you know, ace kings, ace queens in both players' ranges. King could be a fun card here on the turn. See a check from Mishikowski. We also have to keep in mind that some of these players might have a lot of history with each other from previous days of play or even previous years of play, both live and online. So those are all factors that these guys are keep taking into account. If I'm Mishikowski here, I can certainly have ace-king. You know, I, I did, I, I know people might say, well, he'd four bet ace-king. Not necessarily, because again, going back to the positions, he was getting three bet and he opened under the gun. So Joey Wiseman is representing a lot of strength. So it could be a good spot here for Mishikowski, if he does have an ace king. By the way, Joey Wiseman, the only player at the table getting showered by <laughs> our camera layout. Um, once we get down to eight handed, we'll, we'll have everyone in sight. But hey, we can see like half his arm. Half, you know? If he just leans in a little bit, we can see Wiseman as well, who, by the way, bets on the turn here. Looks like a. Is it 800 or a million? K? Yeah. I just realized my cord is super long, so I can actually stand up. Clearly so. representing a king here for Wiseman. Mishikowski is going to give it up. Huge pot here for Mishikowski. You mean Wiseman? Uh, sorry, <laughs> Wiseman. Given that he folded there, you know, when check check, I would say Mishikowski is looking at like an ace queenish type of hand. Didn't connect right. with much. Doesn't think he has much value to proceed to the river. Just gives it up. Mug said, wait, you guys are here for poker. I'm just here for Donnie Peter's interesting talking points. Listen, I'm half delirious right now being on 
about four hours of sleep. Was here till 3.30 in the morning watching the Dustin Dirksen, Daniel Zach heads up match in the 10K Omaha High Low Championship. Got home at four o'clock, had to wake up at about 7.30, 7.45 with my daughter because the wife was off to work. So yeah. I don't know what I'm going to be talking about. And it's probably going to get a little bit weirder the longer this final table goes. So just deal with it. Happy to have you here, though. <laughs> Is that CSM? Yes, that's CSM. I won't say what CSM stands for, but uh, yes. If you guys uh, are on the social streets, <laughs> you know what uh, CSM is referring to. Robert Cole says, is it me or are Donnie Peters' eyes extremely close together? I don't think my eyes are that close together. I mean, maybe they are. I, I don't know. No one's ever told me that, <laughs> Robert, <laughs> until, until now. So I'm going to say that I've gotten through 38 years of my life without someone telling that, meaning that my eyes are yeah. good. You made, it, you made it very far. Uh, queen for Queen. Guys, we're giving away the Queen 4 shirt when we hit 250 likes. We are 293 likes. So Gotta the, love the Queen 4. The Queen 4 hands definitely in play here. And while Donnie pays attention to the action, I just want to give a shout-out to Quickshade for the $20 donation here on the YouTube stream. He says, a few coffees on me for the fellas. These multi-camera angles are the Stone Cold Nuts. Well done, Poker Go. Quickshade, thank you so much. Appreciate it. And if you ever make it out to Vegas, let, let us return to favor and buy you a coffee. Check here from Mishikowski. Dolan fires 400K. Dolan, a player with $41,700 in live tournament earnings, entering this event, has two previous WSAP caches. He is here making his third World Series of Poker cash. Mishikowski, of course, has the bracelet that we talked about earlier. Also $1.5 million in career live tournament earnings entering this event. Boom. He won a 5K event many years ago for 700, 800K, something like that. Puts in a check raise here. Looks like it's going up to a million with two black 500K chips. Dolan doesn't take too long and makes the call. We've got quite a bit in the middle right now. We do. And Again. we hit we hit 250 likes on the Queen 4-4 four, four flop. Oh my gosh, that's just perfect. Wh which is wild. We're gonna do a giveaway right after this hand. So Queen, Queen 4 on the flop, two hearts. Turn is the five of spades, bringing a second spade. So now there are spades and hearts out there as possible flush draws. Check. Mishikowski checks again. After check raising. I mean, double check raise is still possible here. We need, a, we need a triple check raise at one yes. point on one of these streams. I pulled it off once. It I pulled it off once, but it was limit, so I mean, it's kind of whatever. <laughs> it's just easier to do it in limit. I've tried to perfect it many times. Uh, do, Donny, do you think that Miskowski is going to have a lot of complete air hands that he just check raises? I mean, he just snap folds yes. to a bet. Yeah, I think check raising and then checking there is, is going to be a lot of air for Mishikowski. I think if he, I mean, that a lesser experienced player, a recreational player, you know, if you get if you get check raised on the flop and then the person checks the turn, you can include a lot of full houses in their range. But someone like Mishikowski, I think, is just going to continue with his full houses. Like if he check raised a queen five, turns a full house, well. You know, he's just going to continue there and try and get maximum value on all streets. Because once you get check raised in Dolan's spot, if you aren't very strong, you're probably just going to check behind on the turn and not open yourself up to getting check raised again. So Mishikowski there. Just trying to take it down on the flop. Got caught a little bit with his hand in the cookie jar, but he has a lot of chips to play with, so not that big of a deal. Do you think that Dolan, in a situation like this, uh, when he gets check raised, still going to continue with some of the pairs lower than a queen? Do you think it's an intimidating check raise? Because hey. Miskowski, of course, has him out chipped by quite a fair margin. Like, are you going to be extra careful in that situation? Or are you just not continuing with that type of hand on a, on a queen? Depends queen how four? low the pair is. If it's lower than tens, he might just check back with the flop. You know, if it's, if it's jacks or tens, he can maybe bet it. I'm going to guess he had better than queens. He had aces or kings in his hand. Or he might have had a queen, to be honest. One, one or the other. Two players. Raised the 450 by... Oh, Do the water boys here. By Dolan again. Oh, wow. Some waters. Thank you. Thank T you, Tim Duckworth. Tim Duckworth in the house. As always, 
giving us that support. 7-4 Jack on the flop. John Johnny Reddy says, it's different but cool watching without whole cards trying to put them on a range okay. of hands like playing along. Exactly right. I feel the same. Meanwhile, Dolan continues. Staying active. Looks like 300. 300, yeah. Small bet here. Fox and defended from the big line. You guys are overdue a giveaway, but we went straight into another ex interesting hand. Three of clubs on the turn. A little, little back and forth here with our zoom cam to keep everyone updated on. Check. And the reason why we zoom out is it helps Rem Remco and I call the action because we can see the full table and we can see the players' bets a little bit better. People are saying, why do we have to look at your faces? That is so we can haunt you in your dreams. Yeah, come on. Foxen checks once more and, oh, there's a black chip. Looks like a million fifty thousand from, or sorry, 550,000 from Dolan. He's keeping it pretty small on both streets. Didn't increase too much from street to street, which this tells me that he's just going to try and get some, some value. This might be the first WSP final table with three players wearing a white hat. <laughs> it's important information. It's a great observation. <laughs> we need Alex Foxen to switch it up, get a white hat so we can have four. Dave Mitchell's asking, any of these guys Canadian? Uh, no, we have seven Americans. Then the Vide Soriano in seat six from Italy and Stefan Lenner from Austria in the ninth seat. Foxen makes the call to the river we go. Two players. Check on two streets here from Foxen as the deuce of clubs hits on the river. Backdoor flush draw gets there, backdoor straight draw as well. Foxen taking his time. Check. Checks again. Action on Dolan. He's going to go for a bet here. 8.50. Again, another small bet. Small but not insignificant for Fox and Stack at this point of the tournament. The uh, tall stack of blues is 2 million. So that's 3 million as he stacked down. Actually, probably two, two chips ch uh, shy there. So 2, 3. 3.8, 4, about 4.2 million for Foxen right now on the river here. 850k to call. I mean, this this reeks of a very strong hand by Dolan, who's just going sort of casually for three streets of value. It does, but it's it's a question of how strong, and we, we haven't seen Dolan play anything yet that we can use to further our information. Like if Alex Foxen just has a jack here kind of don't mind check jamming with a jack and turning your hand into a bluff, knowing that you block pocket jacks for Dolan, and if he's got queens plus, it's just a horrible spot for him, getting check raised here. Especially also because the club completes on the, on the river. Yep. I mean, Foxen can certainly have a 5-6 here that turned to straight. I mean, given that he defended from the big blind, could he also have 10-9 of clubs, for example? You had the gut shot on the flop, turning a back door. Yeah, ten nine of clubs, eight nine of clubs. King queen of clubs even perhaps. Yeah, you can certainly have clubs All here. Right. All in, All there in. we go. Wow. Donnie Peters called it and Dolan does not snap call, meaning that he has a decision and he folds. Oh. Alex Foxen rakes it in, quickly mucks his hand. No show there from Alex Foxen. Ladies and gentlemen, let us know in the chat what do you think Alex Foxen had there? This is some power poker right here. Also, I mean, with how fast Dolan folded, unless he, you know, he, already, he might have already made up his decision, you know, I'm going to bet this river, try and get some value, but if I do get check raised, I'm just going to quickly fold. That is certainly possible. I'm going to lean on the side that he was bluffing there, um, which is interesting that 
he basically showed the table. Most importantly, he showed Alex <laughs> Foxen that he went for three streets with some very small bets on what was likely a bluff. Right. So Foxen will sh certainly catalog that in his brain and use that going forward. And a nice pot for Alex Foxen here, which I'm sure a lot of the other players at the table did not want to see him take down. For the giveaway, let's do it right now. All you have to do is answer my question in the chat. I will do a random draw among everyone who answered the question. And the question is, who do you want to see win today from this final table? Alex Foxen, of course, is the headliner. We have Joey Wiseman in the mix. All right. And plenty other players to choose from. If you don't know their names, just describe them. <laughs> the guy in the white hat. We'll give you, we'll oh, give you, we'll give you uh, two to three hands to submit your responses, and then we'll do a random draw for the Queen 4 Phil Helmuth t-shirt giveaway. We have an all in here. All in here from Toby Boas. Action over to Fox in the small blind now on Wiseman in the big blind. Boas wins this one and wins his third pot of the day after coming into the final table with 10 big blinds. I just pulled up Twitter quickly. I see Brock Parker tweeted that he has tested positive for COVID. That said, David Baker, ODB Baker, who is on our 25K fantasy team, quote tweeted, said, when I got COVID was day before the 10K dealer's choice, one of my favorite events and Felipe Mojave, AKA Felipe Ramos, gave me a 2% free roll because he knew I loved it and was sad to miss it. David then said, I know Brock loves Limit Hold'em and he wants to pay it forward, so he's going to give Brock a 2% free roll in the 3K 6 max limit hold'em tomorrow. Wow. So kind of cool that, uh, you know, paying it forward. Listen, COVID isn't as bad as it once was. I mean, it's, it's still obviously not good to get it, but um, all the signs point that, uh, you know, you'll just be able to tough hey. it out and, and be healthy. If that said, if, it, if it is healthy, going yeah. around, and it's yeah. unfortunate that you have to sit out five, six days and miss, uh, miss the, the, the best series of the summer, even if you just miss a small portion of it. These guys want to be grinding every single day. But it's good there to see that, um, or learn that Felipe Mojave gave a 2% free roll and that David Baker is now paying it forward. Pretty cool to see amongst the community. All right, final hand to get your submissions in for who you want to see win this bracelet in the 3K No Limit Hold'em event, event number 16. $558,000 up for grabs as we see action here with Nathan Rustler raising it up to what looks like 450 from the hijack and Miskowski calling from the cutoff. Action now on Soriano in the big blind who is having a little bit look a look over at his own stack to see how much he has left to work with. Might be considering a shove here with all that money in the middle. Thanks to everyone submitting their responses. Fire him in there. You can only enter the giveaway with a response. And if you don't know what the question was, just guess. Throw something in there. <laughs> <laughs> Soriano deep in the, in the tank here. Oh, he just, he went for the, for the big grab of his entire stack, and then he just sort of flinched and went back to his <laughs> original position. Fake out. Feels as though he's on the verge of coming to some kind of conclusion. Soriano is pained by his decision. I mean, it's pretty tough to make a move right now after you've done this much acting, Donnie. Like, why would you? Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot. I don't understand this at all. A lot of times players act and they kind of give off what they're going to do. Like, if he now comes in with a raise, it's kind of like, well, it was he was acting the whole time. He has aces. Or, you know what right. I mean? But. Sorry, I don't mind <laughs> Soriano gives it up and heads up to the flop we go. Two players. Rustler versus Mistakowski. 6-9, jack, three hearts. Two hearts. Thank you, Brad. Producer Brad in my ear. 125, 250. 
I mean, clubs and clubs and hearts look so similar, right? Check. Yeah, same color, right? After this hand, we'll do the draw for the giveaway. Last chance to enter for a Phil Helmuth Queen 4 t-shirt. By the way, thanks to everyone tuning in. If you're just tuning in, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. We release a new video from the World Series of Poker every single day until the end of the main event. You don't want to miss it. Rustler checks to Misikowski, who takes over to betting lead. Fires in a small bet, but looks like only about 250K, and that's enough to take it down. All right, time for the giveaway. Let's spin the wheel, as I like to say. The winner is Faya West, F-A-I-A, -A, Faya, Faya West, who said Alex Foxen. Faya West, congratulations. Send a DM on Twitter to Poker Go, or to myself, at Remco Rinkema, as you can see on the screen, with a screenshot of you logged into your YouTube account. And of course, what shirt size you need and what your address is. And we'll get that sent over to you as soon as possible. Thanks everyone for playing. Our next giveaway will be at, let's call it 600 likes. So let's almost double the likes that we have right now. Next giveaway at 600 likes for a t-shirt. Let's do a different t-shirt, Donnie. Can we do the Mount Rushmore High Stakes Poker t-shirt? Yes. All right. Next giveaway is going to be our Mount Rushmore High Stakes Poker t-shirt. Probably my favorite t-shirt in the store. What is it? It's a Doyle, Doyle Ivy Helmets Negranu? I, I believe so. All right. There we go. I mean, it's a, it's a great t-shirt. Uh, shop.pokergo.com if you want to see what you're liking for. And also, if you just want to check out our shop, we have some cool stuff in there, including, and this I think this is the coolest thing ever, we're selling some used felts from High Stakes Poker, uh, WSOP, Poker After Dark, High, Heads Up, uh, High Stakes Duel. If you're a real poker fan and you are looking to freshen up your home game table, consider getting an authentic felt. Why not? Sports memorabilia is all the rage these days. Yeah, but we're all about that poker memorabilia, baby. Action falls to Suriano, who's uh, hoping to perhaps win the blinds and antis here versus uh, Toby Boas. R Mix Indiana back in the house. Thank you so much for tuning in again. Wow, a walk. Haven't seen that much. Walk it out, baby. Looks like a nice little king, king high hand here. Once again, Fire West, the winner of our first t shirt giveaway. Next one at 600. Tell your friends, tell your family, like the video. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. By the way, my name is Rem Kurinkuma, joined by Donnie Peters. You can follow us on Twitter. It's on the screen. Final nine, by the way, guaranteed $44,785. All the way up to five fifty-eight. dollars We're playing down to a winner today. No matter how long it takes, we will be here with you to bring it home. If you have any questions for us, please let us know. Bruce. Mishikowski talking to Wiseman about the hand they played earlier when he opened under the gun. Wiseman three bet. Mishikowski called check, check on the flop and then Wiseman bet the king turn and won the pot. Trying to pick his brain a little bit. Never hurts to ask, try and get some more information.
Mishikowski staying active, comes in here with another raise. We have a call from Leonard out of the big blind. Jack five deuce, two diamonds on the flop. Leonard first to act, checks to Mishikowski. Justin Godfrey, the blinds are 125,000, 250,000 with a 250,000 big blind ante. Cool. Bet of 300,000 from Mishikowski. Call from Leonard. Going to the turn, Jack of Diamonds pairs the board, also brings in a third diamond. Very interesting card here. Just so everyone knows, any politic talks, no matter what side you're on is not allowed in this chat. I'll ban every single person talking <laughs> politics. Like, seriously, shut up. And he's not even American. No, I'm not even from here. <laughs> Just enjoy the poker. Jesus. Another check here from Leonard. Mishkowski looks like he's going for another bet. What do we got here? Uh, 1.6? 1.1, oh, I think. Oh, 1.1. Yeah, you're right. 1.1. If you can't see on the World Series of Poker logo, there is a black 500K chip in addition to what looked like six 100K chips. They keep surprising us with these chip colors, Donnie. They do. We haven't. I, I mean, I, I like it. I know, I, but we haven't seen the full range yet. Yeah. I, I can't wait to see what comes out during the main event. The chips The chips are pretty awesome o overall. You know, they're, they're, they're really great. The colors that they've come up with, work well together. I really like the little um, like indented World Series of Poker that goes around the outside of the chip. I love how I just said people to shut up about politics and we just got six new subscribers to the YouTube channel. So I guess I guess, I guess people agree with me. I yeah, appreciate politics it. Politics free zone, baby. Exactly. Just enjoy some poker action. Oh, we got a call here, by the way. This pot is quickly getting very large, Donnie. Definitely very large here. For Leonard, I mean, I think you have to think he has a jack or a flush. Deuce of hearts on the river. Now two pair on board. If you have a jack or a deuce, you are holding a full house. Sharp. Check, check. Check, check. snap checks behind. Showdown. That looks like a flush to me. And that looks like a flush also. Queen high flush versus a ace high flush. Wow, that is a huge pot for Misikowski. If it wasn't for the deuce on the river, Donnie, we might have seen some more blood. We might have seen some more blood had it not been a double paired board like that. Misikowski with that quick check behind seemed a little bit, uh, you know, one of those like, man, come on, type of type of uh, reactions, but. Nevertheless, he is pushed the pot. I know he necessarily didn't get the maximum value that he was hoping for, especially given Leonard's hand, but also could have gone the other way had Leonard had a jack in his hand, so. Looks like about almost 12 million chips for Misikowski, who's chipping up very nicely. For those asking about the chip count, since we don't have live graphics or you know live chip counts, we are counting the chips ourselves going old school here. Good thing Donnie and I have a long history of doing live reporting from back in the day. So we've counted a stack or two in our past. Oh, if, yeah. If you're watching I this. I mean, we're, we're no Mickey Doff, but uh, yeah, we, we do our best. We do our best. Here. And if you're watching this at home, if you're watching us full screen, you can, you can count with us. Obviously, we'd love to 
We'd love to get it right every time. Leonard after this hand down to about, looks like about 4.5 million. Still plenty of chips to play. Thanks to everyone in the chat. Tuning in, asking questions. Play folds to the Italian, Suriano, in the hijack seat. He moves all in for what looks like about 1.5, 1.6 million. Kevin Stevens on the button. Eyes the stack. Dealer's going to break it down right here. Let's listen in. 1.7 million. See, I was off by 100K. Hey, you know, it was pretty close pretty to me. Close. Only three players left to get through, but Stevens looks as though he's going to... Stevens looks like he owns a boat. <laughs> he for sure <laughs> owns a boat. <laughs> or at least a house on the water. Yeah. And you know what they say. You never want to be the guy who owns the boat. Nope. You want to be the best friend of the guy who owns the boat. Exactly. Action, please. Action, Stevens please. seemed interested, but decided to fold, and so do the rest of the players as Suriano rakes in this pot. And he's... Oh, oh. He, oh, is it going to show? Oh, that's aces. Oh, that's no, aces. He, I think he was taking a picture with his phone. He was. Which means Aces. he probably had a good hand. Exactly. <laughs> That's going on the let me just show. Let me just show him. That or he had like 10 deuce, you know, and he's just like, let me, sh let me show what I got through. That's going on the gram for sure. That is going on the gram. So we haven't seen any action from Nathan Rustler in C2. Has he played a hand? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I know Joey Wiseman has only played the one three bet pot. Um, Toby Boas, I know, got, got involved earlier once, at least. I think he moved all in, got a fold. Um, of course, we've seen uh, Nicholas Dolan has played a couple hands, most notably the one where he bet all three streets and then got check raised on the river against Alex Foxen. But Nathan Rustler sitting there in C2 with the white hat. I think it's a Spurs hat. Here we go, Soriano all in again. With a, with a smile. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like about 2.3, 2.4 million. We're playing one. If anyone here asks for a count, I'm going to be so mad. Because yeah. he just shoved the last hand. You know what the blinds and antis are. <laughs> oh, getting his phone out. Yep, get the foot. Get. Yeah, there you go. Sweat oh, it. Sweat yeah. it. Maybe, maybe he's a vlogger. Oh, yeah. Could be. Look at that. Maybe he's, uh, he's letting him know. <laughs> he's working on a strategy article about this final table. Follow me on Instagram. Oh, okay. You, you see my card. I see the, I see the hat. Yeah, yeah. Thanks to everyone tuning in. Next giveaway at it's 600 like likes. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll say this: we need, we need 300 more likes, or uh, sorry, 300 more subscribers to get to 273,000. <laughs> <laughs> if we do that during this stream. To hit, hit 273,000 on a YouTube channel, I will give away a free year of Poker Go. How about that? That's a big one. Yes. A free year of Poker Go if we pick up 300 more subscribers during this stream. Don't miss out if you're already a subscriber. We, we very much appreciate it. If you guys have any good suggestions for what to put in the right box. I'm also getting tired of looking at myself. Chip counts, however, would not make a whole lot of sense since we don't have live chip count tracking. It is just Donnie and I doing the counting ourselves. Still nine-handed, by the way. If you're just joining us, we are taking it home tonight at this final table, playing down to a winner who will take home over $558,000. Oh. I believe Wiseman just called the raise from Foxen. Foxen made it 550 under the gun. Wiseman called from his direct left. We're going to see a flop here from the looks of it. Neil Cowan is Neil Cowan wants us to be quiet. There, there's a mute button. Hey, I, I, I'm not a hater. Always okay to do that.
Action around now to Dolan in the one seat on the button. He also makes the call. Three players in the mix so far. Good price there for the players in the blinds. Misikowski likely to defend here with a very wide range. He gives it up. We have three-way action. Three Fox and Rays under the gun. 550 per player into the middle here. Five, five, four, two clubs. And he missed the box. He missed the box by <laughs> quite a bit, actually. <laughs> He's going rogue on us here. <laughs> Just do it after his hand. Fox, and, con Fox and continues for 550. Stares over at Wiseman immediately. Wiseman gives it up. Dolan's still thinking about it and looks as though he's grabbing chips. Zero percent chance I would Gives it up and Fox and takes yet another pot down. No, I mean Okay. Alex says, "How about a seat number with player names? We can definitely consider that. It's not a bad idea at all." By the way, thanks to everyone tuning in. We have a microphone on the table. A couple of them, I think. I think my spot's really important. Yeah. Wow, I just got a sandwich handed to me, Donnie. Wow. What do you have today? You're running hot. Uh, this is just some eggs and oatmeal. Same crap, different day. Donnie Peters. Whoa. Just dropped my watch on the floor. That's not very smart. I got I got off the rails a little bit last night, so don't don't go. Did, you have, did you have pizza? No, I had a a Capriati sub. Ooh. That, I mean, I think that's what I just got handed. It was, Where is? It was a um. Which one's that? Ch is chicken it? chipotle. Chicken chipotle. See, last night we were trying to figure out what that meant <laughs> on there. I had in I had a cheesesteak okay. made with impossible meat. Really? Huh. Because I don't I don't eat regular I didn't, meat. I didn't even know that existed. Either did I until they stuck it in front of me. Was it good? It was very good. Wow. Well you you're about to have to call probably two and a half hands while I eat this sandwich. That's fine. We do try to be quiet whenever the players are talking, players. but we covered a seven hour housewarming final table where they said two words. <laughs> so, you know, don't don't hate if we uh Raise here, from, over? raise here from Dolan, call from Foxen. I'll let you destroy that giant pile of food first, and then I'll eat my sandwich right after. Sounds good, but I'm also very intrigued about this matchup here, knowing what happened last time. And this Foxen stare, man. I mean, it's just... Yeah. 400 and a fold. Gives it up that time. Blinds are 125k, 250k, but 250k big blind Annie. Thanks to everyone tuning in. If we hit 600 likes, we're going to give away our next t shirt. It's going to be a high stakes poker Mount Rushmore t shirt with Ivy Brunson Helmies and Negrano on there.
Action still nine-handed here. This is bonus coverage of the 2022 World Series of Poker. Oh, all-in shove here from Boas. That's his fourth attempt at doubling up today. Looks like 2.5. 5.75, the all-in shove. Wiseman with the double take and... 1.375, yeah. Really giving it some thought and lets it go. I'm surprised, Donnie, we haven't seen an elimination yet. It's been about an hour and a half. Yeah. Yep. Players seem to be settling in a, a bit. Nathan R Russler there in C2 is certainly settled in. Hasn't played a hand. I'm about to settle into the sandwich. That's right. Wow. That looks amazing. This cannot be good for you at all. Are there, are there actual Cheetos on my sandwich? Amer America is like the <laughs> land of opportunity, I can tell, by what they put on their sandwiches. Mishikowski makes it 500k to go from the cutoff seat. Everyone folds. And he'll pick this one up. Yes, blinds are 125,000 for the small blind, 250,000 for the big blind with a 250,000 big blind. Ante. Chapelgate, we are not showing whole cards because we are live here, and this is not an RFID table. The regular Poker Go stream, crew, and all of that good stuff is off today. But Remco and I are here bringing you bonus coverage. I know we're not showing whole cards, but we are showing as much information as we possibly can. Views of all the players. You got the chip stacks there. We can see the bet sizes. We'll be calling the action. Adam Jensen says, I wonder if the shuffler is just as loud at the table. Well, the microphone is re right near the shuffler. You can see it in the bottom screen. That said, you can also hear the shuffler at the table. You know, I've been at the table with those shufflers. They are they are loud, but uh, it's a noise you deal with because they help get the hands out quicker. <coughs> the shuffler can handle the shuffling while the dealer deals the current hand. They switch it out and keep it going. Better than uh, better than a couple years ago, you know, when you had the hand shuffle on everything. <coughs> on the left hand side of the screen, you guys can see the payouts more than five hundred fifty-eight thousand dollars up top. There are still nine players remaining. We started the day with nine players, still nine left. They are all guaranteed forty-four thousand dollars in prize money. <coughs> this tournament. Event number 16 here at the 2022 World Series of Poker, a $3,000 Nolan Hold'em event, more than $3.3 million in the prize pool thanks to 1,240 runners. Quite an impressive turnout. Prior to reaching this final table, Niall Farrell finished in 12th place, Brock Wilson finished in 13th place, Justin Zaki 15th place, Romain Lewis 19th place, Philippe Ramos, 34th. Amir Lahavit, former WSOP main event final table player, 36th place. Get Eric Baldwin in 43rd. Jeff Platt, Poker Go Zone, commentator and sideline reporter extraordinaire. Jeff Platt finished in 45th place. Really good field. 
in this one, making it deep. We have three bracelet winners here at this final table. Mishikowski, Wiseman, and Suriano. 500,000. All in. Raise here from Mishikowski. All in from Suriano here from the button. We have a call. Mishikowski turns over two red aces. Suriano is quite dominated with the ace nine. Suriano standing up, grabs his water, puts his backpack on, trying to get all the juju working in his favor. Classic move. The stand up, grabbing the backpack. Here we go. Not much on that flop at all. Four queen jack, all clubs. Chop is almost the best he can hope for here. Yep. And that's not going to do it. Queen of spades on the turn. Seals the deal as Davide Suriano is eliminated in ninth place. He takes home 44,785. And we are down to the final eight. As Mizikowski rakes in this pot to extend his chip lead. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this guy is on a roll. Battle of the bracelet winners there. Mishikowski gets the better of him. Increases his chip stack nicely while allowing all the other players to ladder up about $13,000. And now we get a little bit of a better view of Joey Weissman there in the middle of the table. Yeah. <laughs> a little extra space here for the boys. Just going to quickly run through what else is going on here at the World Series of Poker. Let my guy Remco dive back into that sandwich. That looks mighty good from Capriotti's. Also running today at the World Series of Poker, we have day three of event number 19, $25,000 PLO high roller. 28 players remain in that one with Scott Ball up on top. David Williams also in the mix. Sam Stein, Daniel Negreanu. Making a cash, he's in 10th in chips. Jared Blesnick, Ben Lamb, Brazilian Yuri Zivilevsky. You got Noah Schwartz in there as well. Reigning WSOP Player of the Year, Josh Arie is in the mix, as is Chance Corneth. That tournament will be running today with day three, as I said, more than $1.4 million up top to the winner. Action here in our event on the table. We have a raise from Alex Foxen. Two players. We have a call from Kevin Stevens. Player one checks. Out of the small blind. Stevens checks dark. A little bit of a Phil Helmuth move. <laughs> Alex Foxen said he'll wait to act. 10 10 4 with two diamonds. Foxen goes for 375,000. <laughs> Stevens' range here is probably a lot of, a lot of pairs. So Foxen's going for value. Small bet works very nicely on this sort of board texture. Stevens does make the call. Turn is the three of diamonds, bringing three diamonds to the board. Stevens checks. He waited to check until seeing the card this time. Foxen, as he always is, deliberate, thinking things over, also eyeing his opponent. Point four there from Alex Foxen. Okay. 
Stevens check raises all in. Foxen looks back at his cards, throws them into the muck. Sure. Stevens offers to show one again. Shows the but ten of hearts. Time's right. Gentlemen, thank you for your time. The deal is coming in. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll be back. Maybe about an hour. Yes, no whole card yeah, cams on this bonus stream. Myself, Donnie Peters, alongside Remka Rinkema, we are calling the action. Little bonus coverage. We are as live as live can be here at the 2022 World Series of Poker. You are watching the final table. Eight players left of event number 16, $3,000 no limit hold'em. Before that hand, I ran through uh, the 25K PLO high roller that was still going on. We also have... A $1,500 limit, deuce to seven, triple draw hand, go, or tri hand, uh, <laughs> tournament going on. Nine players remain from the field of 350 in that one. Benny Glazer is in the mix, going for yet another World Series of Poker gold bracelet. Today is day 1B of the Monster Stack. Yesterday drew about 3,000 entries, quite a big field in that one. Day 1B today, field should be even larger than it was, you know, creating quite a hefty payout for that tournament. Uh, $10,000 seven card stud uh, will be kicking off shortly in just under a half hour time. Bertrand, Elke, Grospelier, the Frenchman is the chip leader followed by Phil Ivey. Elke, by the way, <coughs> former winner of that event. Yeah, I believe it was a 5K though. Oh, it was a 5K, yeah. But but it, former winner of the event, that's, when, that's one of the years that they kicked the 10K championship down to 5K. Uh, Yuki Zhu, also known as Rich Zhu, third in chips, fourth in chips is Randy Ohel. Seventh in chips, our guy, Kevin Gerhardt. Let's go, Kevin Gerhardt, make it happen. The legend, Jack McClelland, is in 14th place in chips. Uh, that event looked like it drew 85 entries, 41 returning for day two. So yeah, lots going on here at the World Series of Poker across both Bally's and Paris. On the Las Vegas Strip for the first time ever. You are watching the final table. Final eight players of event number 16, $3,000 no limit hold'em. Thank you everyone for tuning in. We appreciate all you guys. We did one giveaway earlier when we hit 250 likes on the video. Remco pointed out if we hit 600, we'll do another giveaway. Yes, indeed. And We're less than 200 away, so let's go, go, go. Like this video, make it happen. Also, for those asking about the chip counts, we'll do more and more frequent chip counts as the tournament progresses. If you want to count them at home, the blue slash purple chips are worth 100K each. The greens are 25K. Meanwhile, action folded over to the small blinds. He put in a raise. Nicholas Dolan, that is, to 500K and wins the pot. Let's do a round of counts right now. Let me, let me give, it, give him a little stare. Looks like about... A little under five million there for Dolan in the one seat with the dark blue brim on his hat. The two seat is Nathan Rustler. Looks like about 4.5 million, so those stacks are pretty close. And then our overwhelming chip leader, David Miskowski. That's 10, 12, 13, 13, 5, 13, 7. About 13.9 million chips, which is absolutely unbelievable there are 49.6 million chips in play and he's already sitting on 13 million uh, then alex foxen with the backwards hat and the orange t-shirt in case you're new to poker one of the best tournament players in the world two four five Raise. looks like about six million chips for foxen perhaps a little bit over six action folds once again by the way to dolan who comes in for a raise this time on the button making it 500k Looking over at Joey Wiseman's stack. Looks about 3.9 million for him. Then we have Toby Boas in the pineapple shirt, my favorite shirt at the final table. He is the short stack with about 2.4 million chips right now. Blinds are 125K. 
Five hundred. As we have an all-in shove from the small blind here, Rustler shoving after Dolan came in for a raise. Dolan, Dolan assessing the damage here. These stacks are fairly close. Big decision for Dolan, as we could see a massive all-in showdown here. You annihilated that food. I mean, we got a stream to do, man. I can't be sitting here eating all day. <laughs> it's likely going through Dolan's head that uh, Rustler hasn't played a hand yet. Yeah. <laughs> so, probably picked up a hand, probably a bit strong. I mean, unless he just went with his image, you know, sit tight forever and then finally put it in. <clears throat> Rustler does finally get involved, though. Stevens, meanwhile, is uh, second in chips. Looks like about nine million chips for him in the eighth seat, or in the seventh seat now that we are down to eight hand to play. And then last but not least, Stefan Lenner in the eighth seat next to the dealer on the other side. He has about 3.5 million in front of him as well. And since we're playing 125K, 250K, Donnie, we have a lot of shove slash reshove stacks at this final table. So. It's only a matter of time before some of these meet in the middle and we get to see some all-in showdowns. The longer it goes without a lot of big all-in clashes, the more likely we'll just see a flurry of them come at some point. We did lose Davide Seriano, the Italian, a former gold bracelet winner. We have an all-in here from Joey Wiseman, under the gun. Boas throws his cards in and lets the dealer know that one of them might be marked or bent or something. Might need to get a new one there. Fingernails. People, be, people be squeezing hard with them fingernails. Action over to the blinds now. Miskowski and Foxen. Foxen. <laughs> Foxen pump fakes. Shows his cards, but that was a fold. Wiseman takes down the blinds and antis. Much needed for him. We are definitely on our way to some fireworks. And for those that are just joining us, 600 likes for the next giveaway. Some Pokemon merch. And we need 268 more subscribers on our YouTube channel. Oh. Before we give away an annual subscription. Oh. Bringing out the big guns. Big guns today. An annual subscription. That's worth $99, people. There we go. Come on. All you gotta do is sub to the channel. I mean, come on. Random raffle when we hit when we hit 273,000 subs on our YouTube channel. By the way, much appreciated to everyone <laughs> tuning in. Brad Brad Mills says over under 9:45 p.m. finish. Will this be over in eight hours? Asking for dinner reservations. Well, first of all, Brad, you can always watch us on your on your phone. Your girlfriend will be totally okay with that. You know, she can, she might even want to listen in on us. What we have to say. Um, secondarily. 9.45 p.m., Donnie, what do you think? 1.5. What would you ask me, sorry? 1.5, please. If, if uh, this thing is going to finish by 9.45 p.m. I think uh, it's going to be tight. Yeah, by the way, I'm going to say yes. We have a, a, a the same move that Boaz has been making before. He does it again, this time raising to 1.5 million with less than a million behind. Foxen quickly gives up his small blind. Back to Wiseman in the big. Tosses him in as well. Boas wins his fifth pot at this final table. He started the day with 10 big blinds. Still doesn't have a ton, but he's been maneuvering his stack very well at this final table. It's the power of the pineapple shirt. Exactly. I would totally buy that shirt. Big blind ante is indeed to speed up play. One player pays the ante for the entire table. Therefore, the dealer doesn't have to worry about collecting the Andes from everyone, and we all know that famous 2006 moment when Jeff Lissandro and Perlot Friedman <laughs> were basically about to throw fists at each other over a missed ante, and guess what? Could have been prevented if we had Big Blind Annie. Now you might say, well, we would have missed on such an epic moment. Also true. True facts. I love how everyone's on tilt because the fifth place finish is missing a dollar sign. I think it's because they haven't decided yet if they're going to pay out that person in dollars or euros or perhaps Canadian dollars. So 
We don't want to currency assume here, Donnie. Like, they can never currency serve. assume. Like, if they're at an official casino, I'm pretty sure they get, like, audited and serviced in a way that makes it almost impossible to. But if you can, like, I'm pretty sure it's, like, you can effectively jailbreak them, kind of, right. if they're at, like, an un... Yeah, yeah exactly. That's what I, uh, <laughs> as far as I understand, that's what they're doing. Action folds to Miskowski in the cutoff. 2.5 behind. Exactly. 2.5 million behind for Boas in the big blind. Miskowski seems to like that information, making it 600k to go. There were 1,240 entries in this event, creating a prize pool of just shy of 2.5 million dollars. Donnie, uh, Trip Hop is asking, does Big Blind's anti change the strategies a lot? Um, a little bit. I think some players might overreact when they are in the Big Blind thinking that, you know, oh my gosh, I basically just paid two big blinds, which yes, you did, but you also have to remember that, you know, you paid the antes for your entire round at the table. So then you're getting a whole bunch of free hands once you're not in the big blind. <clears throat> just something to keep in mind. I tend to lean a little bit tighter in tournaments with big blind ante, which I think are, you know, the majority of tournaments these days. Spots like, you know, folds to you in the cutoff, you might shove when you're short. But in the past, you know, you're paying the ante every single time. Now, you have a couple more free hands that you can uh, sit back and wait for a better holding. Also coupled with the fact that I think people that are in the big blind might overreact, play a little bit more looser because they think that they're a little bit more committed. Therefore, have to adjust your ranges accordingly. That's kind of my take on how Big Blind Anti has affected strategy. RMX Indiana says Big Blind Anti makes life real hard for short stacks. Shouldn't really matter, right, Donnie? Because you still get all those free hands. Yeah, I mean, it makes it makes life hard when you're sitting there under the gun. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know you got to pay two big blinds the next hand. Foxen, meanwhile, <coughs> raised to 500K. Wiseman with the three bet. like 1.7. I mean, Wiseman's basically committed himself here without actually going all in because it looks like he put uh, what? It looks, he said he started with 3.7, so if he makes it 1.7, I mean, that's a pretty big chunk of his stack. Foxen gives it up, and this one will go to Wiseman. Shane C. with the excellent reference. So I don't trust you, sir. For Law Friedman versus Jeff Lissandro. I'll take your head off, buddy. Phenomenal moments from the 06 main event. The look in Jeff Lissandro's eyes scared me, even though I was watching it from the comfort of my living room. Dana Craven seems to say that it's not a pure ante. I don't really understand how it's not a pure ante, but okay. It's the only ante. That's what it is. you're just tuning in, this is event 16, $3,000 No Limit Hold'em final table bonus coverage. No card graphics, but lots of fireworks at this table as we will broadcast this until we have a winner. $558,000 up for grabs as Boas once again moves all in and takes down the pot. Every now and then I'll do a round of chip counts here, but you can also count them from home to challenge your brain a little bit. 
the purple slash blue chips are worth 100k and the greens are 25k. Jeffrey 27 RJ says the thing that sucks the most about big blind ante is when you're down to three to four people in traditional ante you would only pay one tenth of the ante, but now you're four-handed and paying a full table ante. Yes, yeah, true, but move the game along. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> raise get, and, get the money and let's go. Raise and take. Let's go. Let us know in the chat if you're a fan of the big blind ante. I mean, how can you not be? I love. If you're not a fan of the big blind ante. You, I mean. You should go watch fishing. Uh, I don't. I don't really know. 460 likes, 140 more, and Remco's giving away a free annual subscription to Poker Girl worth $99. Everyone. Yeah. And if you want to subscribe to Poker Girl on your own, you can do that, and you can get a nice bonus or a nice discount, I should say, <laughs> $30 off. Use the promo code Get WSOP30 for $30 off the regular annual price. So let's hit 600 likes. Right. Wait to see if you win the annual subscription. And then if you don't, you go sign up. You get $30 off. Lock in our best price of the year. Now the 600 likes is for the T-shirt. We need to hit 273,000 oh, subscribers. Sorry, 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 see, sorry, like, sorry. Normally, I'm the one giving it all away. Yeah, but I'm on four hours of sleep, so give me a break. There we go. We got Wiseman here with a raise to 500K, and Steven's calling on the button. Action now on Leonard in the small blind. He kicks him in. SS, no delay. No delay at all. Got an inquiry on Fox and Stack. As soon as he moves his hand, we're going to go try to see if we can count those up. Hard to tell how many of those black 500k chips he has. Oh, as I said that, I think he has just only one. King, three, jack, two clubs on the flop here. as Wiseman is still sitting in the rabbit hole five seat. Or in <laughs> so we, can't, we can't even, he's leaned back so far that he, we cannot even see him anymore. He checks though, we see the little fist, the fist dance on the rail. Stevens up against the invisible man. Three king board here. As I said earlier, Stevens looks like a man who owns a boat. <coughs> Love it. Diamonds on the river completes the board. Joey Wiseman first act. Steven says, I think I let you get there. Wiseman shows two sevens against two fives for Stevens. He did not get there. He had you the whole time. <laughs> and Joey Wiseman takes this one down. Not the biggest pot, but every chip counts, especially when you're trying to chip up like Joey Wiseman is. We're trying to show Wiseman a bit more now, adjusting our framing just a tad here. Like when he just sits at the table normally, we can see him just fine. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Event number 16, $3,000. Nolan and Hold'em here from the 2022 World Series of Poker. Don't forget to check out our latest vlog. It's also on the YouTube channel. You can find it under the video section. We'll be releasing one of those vlogs every Saturday throughout the WSOP. First one was last week. If you missed it, go back, check it out. This week, uh, I dove into playing the housewarming event. Remco gave us a behind-the-scenes tour of how the sausage is made here at the WSOP Love involving the Poker Go crew. He talked to our director, talked to our lead producer. <coughs> Had a little cameo from Mori Escandani. Cameraman John jumped into the field as well, playing the housewarming event. Tried to save the vlog like the superhero that he is. 
check out that vlog now, guys. Appreciate y'all. Raised from Fox and then a call from Rustler in the two seat. King 9 3 on the flop, two clubs. Rustler called from the big blind. Ask the chat where they're watching from. We have not. Where are you guys coming at us from? Let us know. Drop it in the chat. Fox, and meanwhile, picks up another pot here. Looks like two black chips, perhaps. One, two is enough. Two, three, four, five, six. A uh, little over six million for Foxen. We're playing 125k, 250k with a 250k big blend Annie. Jerry O'Sullivan said Remco equals Conor McGregor. Yeah, I've heard that before. Seems like a compliment. I wish I had his 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 bank money bank account. <laughs> his silk pajamas. Oh my god. His uh, whiskey line, proper number twelve. Yep. If anyone out there is uh, listening from proper number twelve, <laughs> we're looking for a sponsor. Yeah, there you go. Hit us up. Hit us up. <laughs> we, got we, will, we will do shots on air. <laughs> we have uh, Orlando in the house, Illinois, Phoenix. Ohio, Sweden, Boise, Vancouver, India, Ind India and Indiana, back to back. Boise, Ottawa, Tennessee, Alabama, Zimbabwe. I call that bluff. Trip hop. I call that bluff. Be cool though. Be very cool. Uh, Pennsylvania, Nebraska, Toronto, White Hills, Arizona, Basel, Switzerland, a pub in Ireland. Gary O'Sullivan. Drink responsibly. Ben Order some proper number twelve. <laughs> ben Snyder from Ohio. <laughs> War Battle is from Planet Bob. Not, not sure where that is, but sounds far away. Hollywood, Florida, Bl Brick Nation in the house. Thank you for tuning in again. Nate Little from Monterey, California. We have NYC, Denver, UK, Palm Springs, Delaware, Orlando. Nate Delonte in the house. Amex, Donkey Bell. While, while, while we're uh, giving free shout outs, yes. I want to give Remco, I want to give a shout out to. A product that you turned me on to, the Yellow Bird Hot Sauce. Yes. You told me about it on the podcast a couple months ago. Either that day or the next day, I ordered the a pack. Yeah, the, the sample. I think it came with five, maybe six different hot sauces, but good sizes. Like, you, you think sampler, and you think, oh, I'm going to get, like, a tiny little bit. No, I mean, I still have them all. I think most of the bottles are half full. I, I like to change them up. Um, but, uh, yeah, Yellow Bird Hot Sauces, really, really, really good stuff. They should be a sponsor of the show. Really. They should be a sponsor of the show. Where? Let me see what this sampler size comes with. By the way, looking at the action right here, looks like Leonard made a committing raise to 1.3 million from the cutoff, and Rustler in the small blind is giving it some serious thought. He has his hand in front of his eyes, doing some really deep thinking math from the looks of it. <laughs> I never understand people that give out reactions of any kind before acting. Uh, unless, of course, you are just Hollywooding and you are folding for sure. Um, Misikowski lays it down as well, and we move on to the next hand. So I picked up the Variety 5-pack from Yellowbird. It comes with a jalapeno sauce, a serrano sauce, sriracha, habanero, and then ghost pepper. The ghost pepper one is by far the hottest. That will light yes. your mouth on fire, but if you're in for a kick and you like hot sauce on your, on your food. I pretty much put hot sauce on everything. Same. Some kind of hot sauce. That yellow bird hot sauce is very good. And then I'll give a shout out to Flavor God Spices that I use all the time. An Instagram ad got me years ago, <laughs> and I've been hooked ever since. Flavor God Spices. Well, Check you, them out. If you end up buying any of this stuff, let yeah, them know, let let know, know who sent you. Um, where was I with my shout-outs? England, Detroit, Switzerland, Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. I've been there, actually. Savage is watching from his Lamborghini yacht. Um, East Coast, New Brunswick, Canada. Israel, Orange County, Wisconsin, Montreal. More New York in the house. Texas, Detroit, Malta, BC. SoCal, High Desert, Cali. 
Vegas. Appreciate that. Please. Hanoi, Vietnam. Oh, I've also been there. One of my favorite places I've ever been to, Hanoi. Actually, that was Hoi An, sorry. Also in Vietnam, Hoi An. Uh, Danville, Virginia, Savannah, Georgia, Tornado Alley. Hope, hope you're safe out there. <coughs> Philippines, Montana, San Jose, North Carolina, Santa Ana, a lot of California. I appreciate you guys all tuning in. Seattle, Washington. I'm just going through all of these. We've got Milwaukee in the house, East Africa. Table 28 at MGM. <laughs> Love it. B Mules, thanks for tuning in. George Young is saying, did we know if the chips are clay chips from Paulson or another producer? I have no idea. You would be you would be breaking some news here if you know where these come from, how they're made. I have zero clue. The one thing I'll say is these are clean. I love What's the, that. Someone is saying is asking about who made the chips, like which company. I have no idea. Um, but I, I do I do want to say they look beautiful. I think the WSB made an awesome uh, change to the new venue with the new chips. The chips are great. I'm, I'm really excited to see what they put into play for the 50K PPC, because yep. they usually have like a, a dedicated set for that. And then also, of course, the WSB main event usually has its pretty own badass chip set, so we'll see what that is. We got Long Island, Ham Hamilton, Ohio, Manila, Philippines, Berlin, Austria, more from the Netherlands, I appreciate it, my home country. PEI Canada, by the way, of Baltimore, Maryland. The Belmont Racetrack, Mitch is in the house. Jeanette says, shout out to Remco and Don, doing a great job. Thank you so much. Appreciate everyone tuning in. I think I shouted out everyone. If I miss you, let me know. Summerlin Hospital, Kevs, I hope you're all right, man. I hope you're just dropping someone off <laughs> or whatnot. Rocky Point, Sonora, Mexico. I, I, I've never been to Mexico. I'd love to go. Never been to Mexico? Nope, never been to Mexico. Of all the places that I've been to. Mark Ivan says, are you showing the 25K high roller PLO at all? Yes, the final table of that event will be on PokerGo tomorrow. It's going to be pretty awesome. Hopefully with Negrano, who's still in the hunt. Romania in the house. It's Fain is watching from the 510 game in Bellagio. Copenhagen. Yeah, we were still on the side on what fifth place gets paid. Florida in the house. Majestic Few says it's exactly midnight here. Leonard, meanwhile, comes in with a race to 500K. After he made a committing race to one point, I believe 1.5 million earlier, this time he's going for the regular race size, the min race. Boxen is considering something here. Tim Duckworth in the chat as well. Tim, when they go on break, could you give us some chip counts? That'd be awesome. Take a 15 minute break. If you come back and your chips are in a rack, please do not take them out. Some chips are coming out of Foxen play. Foxen gives it up. Wiseman in the house, and he also kicks him in. So Leonard takes down this pot. Players are going on a 15 minute break. We'll use this moment to um, answer more questions that you have in the chat. Yeah, live Q&A, let's go. Look at the guy with the pen, aggressively counting the chips. I think that's Will Schillebeyer from Poker News. Very aggressive pen movement. He's trying to be like Mickey Doft out there. Can't. No one can ever replicate well, Mickey Doft. Often imitated. Never, never, never duplicated. Never duplicated. Chris Miller, do we know the chip denominations? Yes, we do, Chris. The green chips are 25,000. The lavender purple chips are 100,000. And then there are some black chips in play. I think you can see two on stop, 
to on top of David Mishikowski's stack, two next to Alex Fox's stack in that upper left quadrant. Those are worth 500K. Sharon Cook says, who is in the chip lead? That's David Mishikowski. In the upper left quadrant, he is the <laughs> seat three. How many showdowns in two hours? There's been quite a bit of showdowns. Quite a bit of showdowns. We did see one elimination so far. Davide Siriano busted in ninth place. Yes, kill a clown world. There are eight left. Eight left from a field of 1,240. The man there in the black shirt and the white or red lifeguard shorts showing off his sexy thighs. That is Tim Duckworth <laughs> counting the chips. <laughs> the only counts we trust. What kind of music do we listen to? Any favorite artists or songs? I kind of listen to everything. I prefer hip hop the most. Probably some EDM next, but I got a wide variety of stuff. Oh yeah, my my music. As long as it's not country, I cannot stand country music. Same. I'm sorry if you like it out there. Just with me, it just doesn't jive. Other than that, and you know what else? I've realized, on, at least on Vegas radio, they got a lot of like religious rock, Christian rock, whatever you want to call it. I'm like surprised that there's a lot of that on the <laughs> Vegas radio. But anyway. I'm so deep into podcast world that I don't even listen to much music these days. But Same. I also listen to a ton of podcasts. The, the, the most re l l let's do this then. In the chat, let us know what your three most recent concerts were that you went to, whether it was a festival or like just a one-off show. Your three most recent music shows, concerts, or festivals. I had tickets for Pearl Jam here in Vegas. That got canceled, so really bummed. That's my favorite band. But my three most recent, Rolling Stones, Metallica, and then, of course, Greta Van Vliet was the opener for Metallica, and I'm a big Greta Van Vliet fa fan as well. And then my third most recent was probably the Black Keys. So lots of guitars, but I'm also I'm also a big fan of hip hop. Um, I, I can go every direction. It depends on the mood that I'm in. When I'm working out, it's usually hip hop. It's Fane said, "What kind of coffees do you guys want tomorrow?" Ooh, I mean, I'm a, I'm a bit of a snob, but. Uh, just a black iced coffee is usually my go-to when, when I'm working. But black iced coffee, black cold brew, that's all I need. Nothing but, in it. But then when I go to a coffee place that I know has good coffee, I usually get an oat milk cortado. That's like Ooh. my go-to. That, that sounds very sophisticated. And then, and then getting the iced oat milk cortado, because it's 190,000 million degrees out here, is also very, very nice. Jasper Jr. said, Remco, please unblock me on Twitter. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know what you did, Jasper, but it was probably something bad. Oh, boy. Candace says, of course, anyone who likes hip-hop could never like country. I mean, I, I don't really know about that. Aren't there some, like, crossover artists that kind of do, like, hip-hop country? Hip-hop country. Wow. You guys listen to reggae? I love reggae music. What's the what's the guy again? I'm, I'm just, I'm wish, I, I literally Google country singer with beard. There's this one guy that I really like that is a country Mika White said he went to Pearl Jam. It wasn't canceled in Oakland. Oh, my God. Also went to Blondie and Coldplay. RMX Indiana said Lumineers, Lindsey Ster Sterling, and Kid Rock. Dana Craven said Alice Cooper last year, Willie Nelson 16 years ago, Blues Traveler 20 years ago. Blues Traveler. Whatever happened to Blues Traveler? Wow. Uh, Jasper, I don't know what you, Jasper, put your Twitter handle in the chat and I'll unblock you. But You know what concert I want to see? I haven't been to a concert in a while. You know what concert I want to see coming up? Yeah. September 17th at the M? Nelly. Oh, my God. Country Grammar up in yeah, here. Yeah, I'm like, I'm in. Let's go. That'd be fun. Throwback to the old Poker Stars party. Yep. <laughs> I got a funny Nelly story. I was at EBT Monte Carlo, and this was probably 2009 or 10. Nelly was invited by Poker Stars to play. Uh, some, some, I think played a main event in some other tournaments, and he busted pretty quickly. So he ends up in the cash game slash sit and go area to just you know, play for fun. And Poker News, uh, Gloria Balding did an interview with him, and I'm standing there watching, and she's talking to him about what he's playing, and he says, "I'm here because I love to play those cash game tournaments." I thought that was one of the best <laughs> quotes I've ever heard. <laughs> Nelly, cash of game course, tournaments, baby. Hip hop legend, Nelly. Um, Matthew says, "Old Town Road" is my favorite country song. Who's the Who's the country singer with the beard, with a really deep voice, who writes all his own lyrics, has that cool-looking I mean, guitar? It, it is kind of like country, but kind of like sort of like Americana test. I, I don't know. I have no idea. I can't. I can't think right now. What else we got here? Bipolar says, "Last concert was Rolling Stones in 1981." That's That's a while ago. That is a while. Concerts ago. are a lot of fun. You know, I 
I regret not going to more more recently, and I need to I need to make a change in that. Teddy said he's seen Nelly next Saturday. That's right, baby. Wow. EI, let's go. I saw, I saw Nelly live at the Focus Stars party. Was it the, was Snoop Dogg the year after? Yeah, I think so. I think he was the year after. I think it went Nelly and then Chris Stapleton. There it is. Jim Hammond and Armix and he had a Chris Stapleton. I like Chris Stapleton. Never heard of Chris Stapleton. He has a really good voice. <laughs> Mike Jones. What? Oh, the country singer with the beard and the guitar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They got it right almost immediately. <laughs> Chat is way smarter than you than you think. The down part for final two. You guys are good, right? Sometimes when people are are sarcastic on Twitter, I do like a snap block. I don't have time to deal with the bullshit. But Jasper, I'll unblock you. I just I need to know what your Twitter handle is. A few minutes left here on break. If you guys have any more questions for Remco and I, fire them on into the chat. We'll try and answer them. Can I see on Twitter? Who I've blocked? I have no idea. I don't know if I have anyone blocked, so I can't even tell you. <laughs> I usually mute people. Yeah, muting's better. Yeah, I don't see it. You can just give those to me. Wow. Ten million. And then, right? and then we'll, we'll verify when they come back. We'll yeah. Once again, again, you are watching the final table, final eight players. Yeah. Of the three thousand dollar no limit hold'em tournament, three, another five hundred thousand here at the twenty twenty two World Series Poker. Players are on a break. It was a fifteen minute break in total. Here, Probably just a couple games, minutes left here. Two, oh, so that's the chips okay. in the rack. They're going to be so taking some chips one, off the right. table, coloring them up. You see two, the dealer four, playing six, with some eight. black five hundred thousand chips that are going to go into play. Remco, how many times have you seen Pearl Jam live? David Mitchell said he's seen it them three times. I've seen um, I've seen Pearl Jam live twice, and I've seen Eddie Vedder solo uh, live once, which was in Amsterdam at the Carré Theater. One of my favorite shows of all time. Danny Craven said, I have a question. Have you ever met Tony G? I've met Tony <laughs> G many times. Yes, many times. I've had phone calls from Tony G. I mean, Tony G used to, I guess, technically be my boss, our boss, because he was the owner of Poker News, and we worked for Poker News. Yep. But yes, have met Tony G. I like Tony G. He's a lot of fun. I just found my list of blocked people on Twitter. Yep. There you go. Come it's in. not many. There's no Jasper on my, on, on my blocked list. Sharon said, will any of Event 9 final table be on here? Event 9 already happened. So the answer is no. Event 9 is... $1,500 seven card stud that was won by Alex Livingston. If you mean a different event, let us know, but event number nine is already completed, so that will not happen. If you mean event number 19, possibly, the 25K PLO high roller, that will be on the regular PokerGo stream on PokerGo.com starting tomorrow, I believe 5 p.m. Vegas time, 8 p.m. over on the East Coast. You would like Wilco. Is that a band? Sounds like it. <laughs> yeah, bookmarked. I'll check out Wilco after the stream. I don't see I don't see you as my uh, as my ban on my band list, uh, Jasper. I'm very sorry. I think he said sometimes sarcastic. Sorry. Just making you look over here. You're making my man grind through his look, look. his blocked people. I'm I'm grinding. <laughs> This is a list that includes Annie Duke. You got a lot. You got a lot of people blocked. Annie Duke, James Woods, <laughs> Anna Kate. A uh, bunch of trolls in here. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, you know what? Joe I Ben said, "When's the card shuffle up and dealing?" Well, they have been playing. They've been playing for two hours already. They are on a break right now. A 15-minute break. About four or five minutes left. Whole cards for event 19, says Stefan. Yes, Stefan, on the regular Poker Go stream, that is where you will find the final table of the $25,000 PLO High Roller. They will have all the bells and whistles, the whole cards, the much better commentators, the multiple camera angles, roving shots, the jib, all of that sort of good stuff. It will also be played out on the main Poker Go TV stage. 
Adam Pasquale said, who are the players? We'll run through the players once we get back from break and you guys can put a face to the name that we run through. We also have updated chip counts at the break from our guy Tim Duckworth down on the floor. So we'll run through that as well. Little update here. We're 200 subscribers away from hitting 20, 273,000, meaning that we're giving away an annual sub when we hit that number. And only 100 likes away from our next merch giveaway, our next t-shirt giveaway. We're just here to have some fun, give away some fun stuff. We are. I, I wish we were giving away a pineapple shirt because then I would for sure enter the giveaway. Dana Craven asked, when Tony G fires people, does he tell them on your bike? I don't think so. I also don't know if Tony's ever actually fired anyone because he usually has other people that do the firing for him. You guys look completely different to what I imagined, not that I imagined you much. Anthony, please describe what you imagined <laughs> because I'm very not curious. Not really sure how to, uh, how to take that comment, but hey. Primus, another band. I'm getting some great music recommendations. Primus, I, I have never heard of any of these bands before. As long as it's not metal, I, I'm, I'm sort of down with most music. Like death metal and screaming and stuff, not really my jam. Same for same for like hip hop. I, I love hip hop. Listen to a lot of it, but then when it gets to like this mumble rap stuff, I just I'm out. I'm the out. new stuff is just I'm out. I can't do it. It's not even real. I mean, Donny knows that we have we have a song so far during this WSOP we play for every before every stream. Through, through the wire. Through the wire. Kanye, Kanye West. Kanye West. I'd probably pass out. Players starting to come back to the table right now. Going to get things back underway shortly. I believe they're going to be moving into 150,000 small blind, 300,000 big blind with a 300,000 big blind ante. Again, eight players left in this tournament. 1,240 players began the tournament. <laughs> More than five hundred and fifty-eight thousand dollars up top. Five million, five point five. Yeah, that's a lot of grapes. We got some chip counts from Tim Duckworth, Donnie. Did we, did we run through those already or not? We did not. I said uh, I said that we'll do it when the players sit down, just so that uh, anyone that's yeah. new joining us can put a face to the name as we go around the table. <laughs> In like ten hands, everybody will have one. <laughs> I mean, Jasper keeps being on this unblocking thing. I, I don't know what to tell you, man. I mean, it's just, it just is. Just tell me what your Twitter handle is, and I can just go to your page. I mean, it, it, see, it, it might be this, like, PB something or other. I, I don't really know. I have to actually look at my Twitter now, which is. You know. Oh, one million there. One million here. One million here. All right, Jasper, I sent what I think is your Twitter handle to Remco. Wow, we're going. And then he can take it from there, and I'm done with you. No more. If you ask me again, I'm going to block your ass, okay? We're gonna That's go how it's going to be. We're going through great lengths here to... InSync or bust, am I right, guys? Yes, I like InSync. Bye, bye, bye. But I, I also like Backstreet Boys better. Sorry, guys. Sorry, sorry, That's sorry. A hot, That's a hot take right there. I don't do it for you. George says smash that like button. Yes, everyone, please smash that like button. Just past 500 likes, going for 600. Remco's going to give away another t-shirt. <laughs> All right, we got chip counts updated on our sheet. Donnie, we have the seat draw in order. How about you run us through it? Yes, so we have Nicholas Dolan from the U.S. He is in seat one with 3.35 million in chips. We have Nathan Rustler in seat two, who is not currently at his seat, although they are dealing, so he needs to hurry back. He has 4.375 million. David Mishikowski in seat three. He is the overwhelming chip leader, also a recent winner from a few years ago. He has 14.9 million in chips. That was smart for him to get on his button for me to have the big line so he could skip the button. That was a good play. Alex Fox in, yes, not seen there in seat four. 6.3 million. Joey Wiseman in seat five. You can see him on the left-hand side of the upper right yes, quadrant as 5.4 million. 
Toby Boas, the gentleman in the pineapple shirt that we've been raving about, has three million. Kevin Stevens, the older gentleman with the white hat and the glasses, we like to think he owns a boat and we're gonna be riding on it someday. He has 8.1 million. And then Stefan Lenner from Austria, the only non-American left. He's in seat eight next to the dealer with 4.1 million in chips. Again, the chip denominations are 25,000 for the greens, the purples are 100,000, and the blacks are 500,000. Run, Fox, and run. It's on you. You got a lot of hands. We tried to wait, they went last. Uh, I started the hand with 3 million exactly before the Annie. So. Alex, 1.5 million? The hand and then it was the hand. Despite the fact that Jasper called me a loser on Twitter, yeah. I uh, unblocked him. Wow. No, Who's really? the bigger man now? Wait, <laughs> he tried to, wait for he you tried to hold yeah, up the game. Yeah, yeah. No, no, cool. I appreciate All right, it. let's get caught up on chat here. People ask my favorite Pearl Jam song. Uh, Yellow Leadbetter, probably my favorite Pearl Jam song. Especially with that long, All slow right. intro. Oh, we got a shove here. All in on a call. Let's go. Wiseman versus Boas. Wiseman shoving with 7-4 of diamonds from the small blind. Boas making the call with ace-queen of hearts. Boas at risk here with ace-queen, but in a great situation here to double up. Wiseman's going to need some help here to send a player to the rail. Flop comes out. 8-5-3. That's a great flop for Wiseman's hands. Jack on the turn is not going to make any difference to this hand. The river card, a king, and Boas doubles up, looks to the heavens. After seeing the beautiful king of spades on the river. Basically an all-in for three million. Hi, said Donnie, are you ready for the football contest? Heck yeah, I am. Can't wait. I think he's talking about either the super contest or the circus sports million. I get involved with those every single year. Hey, thanks for talking. With my guys over at the Gridiron Gamble podcast, check us out on iTunes. Especially so you can play the button. <laughs> yeah, I, I, got, I took a full advantage. Yeah, you really yeah. took advantage of that. <laughs> That's why he gets good as draft. <laughs> Stefan Bosoy calls us the best commentators, Donnie. The best. He must be drunk. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what to tell him. Thank you, though. That was a dirty flop. Yes, it was a dirty flop, but Boas did fade it. So ultimately, it turned out pretty clean for him in the end. Stephen Seven for all in. Yes, he was attacking a shorter stack. Stefan Herskind coming in with the cycling questions. Shram, Red, ETAP, or Shimano DI2. I've, I have uh, no idea what that means. I've never had the budget to afford Red ETAP, but I do have, uh, I think it's Force ETAP. And I had DI2 on my previous bike. What is the absolute best like course or ride that someone could do in Vegas? If, if they could only do one, where do they gotta go? If you can only do one bike, bike ride in Vegas, do the Red Rock Loop. The Red Rock Loop is phenomenal. You can start at the Chevron just off Charleston, ride into the Red Rock Canyon, make sure you bring a few bucks for the entry fee, or if you have a National Parks Pass, you can get it for free. The loop, the loop is 13 miles. It's beautiful. All right, action folds over to Rustler. He goes all in. Quick folds around the table. Rustler's gonna pick this one up. It was a fairly quiet first two hours of play. One elimination. There were some, some bigger pots, but not too many fireworks. I think we're gonna see play start to pick up quite a bit here. Now that the players have settled in, They've got a full two levels of playing with their opponents on this day four. Know a little bit more what to expect, a little bit more information on how everyone is playing. But maybe, some, maybe some of those final day nerves have kind of subsided a bit. But yeah, to finish off my cycling question, I have so, I have Force ETAP on my bike right now. I have only one bike. I sold Great. two bikes, downgraded. The one bike. What's guys a, very, a hustler. Very oh, nice bike. I got a Trek Checkpoint SLR7 for those who are into cycling. And I'm also currently borrowing my friend's full suspension mountain bike for some of the trails here in Vegas. You guys might not think like Remco's a serious biker, but he goes in these races and he's like top three every time. But I mean, 
I'm just waiting for him to be in the Tour de France. Did 60 miles this morning in the Vegas heat. No, oh, that just sounds brutal. <laughs> Don't even worry about <laughs> it. Going up to Mount Charleston tomorrow, by the way. Have you been up there, Donnie? I have not, no. It's such an, it's such, it's so embarrassing. My wife keeps, I know, my wife gets on me all the time. We need to go to Mount Charleston. We need to go to Mount Charleston. Yes, have we'll go to Mount Charleston, I promise. Have you been to Red Rock? Yeah, yeah, a bunch. I, I love hiking at Red Rock. Um, we go up there a few times a year. Try and bring some friends up there that are out of town. You know, it's a good spot to go for that sort of thing. Show them, show them, you know, the not so known side of Vegas. Vegas is pretty great for nature overall. Great. Get out there, hike a lot of the good trails, and then sometimes I just go up there by myself, honestly, and you can get a good hike in. Same, I agree. But yeah, Mount Charleston, my favorite place to go in Vegas. Want to have a little bit more time, so. These guys need to hurry up and finish by 9 p.m. so I can get, get to bed by 10 and leave my house at 5 a.m. to go riding up there. Mastro said he just got his yeah. first nice bike last year, a Trek Marlin 7. Nice. Let's go, Mastro. Put in those miles. Put Six, in those 60 miles is no joke, Remco. Props, says Thank base of City, City and Bear. Thank you. Yeah, I've been trying to average about 10 to 12 hours a week on my training schedule. Officer Doofy said, take up running like a real man. <laughs> Drop your tricycle. Listen, <laughs> running does a number on your knees Yes. as you get older. I mean, listen, I, I straight up admire people that, that run and run as they get older because it does take a lot of wear and tear on your body. Myself as someone who's been playing soccer since I was four and a half or five years Sick. old, I mean, my knees Puppy feel dog. like they're like and grenades went off inside them every single day. <laughs> I've, been, I've been telling you to get a bike. You live in a good spot for it, I too. I just ride my Peloton. Ah. Let's have a look at the chat here. Yeah. Blake Swain says, you bike in Vegas, which was there, and I was melting. I try to get up before 5 a.m., get an early morning ride in most days. But then, of course, when it's not June, July, or August, the cycling in Vegas outside is phenomenal. Weather is great I mean, most of the year. for two and a half months, pretty much. Yeah. Other than that, it's, it's really nice. Negreanu on pace to make his first final table of the year. Yeah, let's go check on over at the f uh, 25K PLO high roller. Ray. Anthony Pettit asking, what time is it in Vegas? It is 2.23 p.m. in Las Vegas right now. So play just kicked off for day three in the 25K PLO high roller. 26 players return. Negreanu has knocked out Chris DeMacy. Oh, wow. So he's already chipping up early for Dean Eggs in quest for a seventh WSB gold bracelet. Pretty overdue, seventh WSB gold bracelet. I mean, Negreanu's been been close in recent years. Oh, here goes Leonard, all in from the hey, button. All in. Look at that shove. Got to love it. He's got, oh, like the, he's got like the Benny Spindler emo hair going on. Oh, do we have a raise here, by the way? Did I misread this? Oh, yeah, Misikowski. Made it 600 to go, and Leonard moves all in over the top. So yeah, Negreanu took out Chris Macy early on. The two got it all in on an ace 7-7 seven, seven flop with two spades. Negreanu had ace king queen nine with the king nine of spades. Macy had ace ace queen four. Turn was the four spades. River was also a spade. And Negreanu's flush knocked out Chris DeMacy. Josh Aria hey. also scored an early KO. So the big names are moving over in that 25K PLO. We'll keep, we'll keep an eye on it through the updates on WSP.com. We'll check in every, every now and again as they push forward to that final table. Once again, that final table will be on Poker Go tomorrow, starting at 5 Las Vegas time. Foxen, meanwhile, raises under the gun to 600K. Uh, Jason Taylor, I saw your question about having seat issues hey, with cycling. Send me a DM on Twitter, Jason. We'll figure it out. I'll help you out. Remco's always at some kind of bike shop getting yeah. something fixed. Yes. By the way, shout out Tyson Apostle. Yeah. A fellow cyclist of yours who yes. is going to be on the challenge yeah, on yeah, MTV. Okay. I don't know what that is, but it's You don't know what exciting. that is, no. but it's awesome. All right. Okay, it's great. We got an all in here from Dolan. Looks like about three million. Foxen is deliberating. I would describe it as a cross between Jersey Shore and Survivor. Wow. Like if you put those two shows together, that's what you get out of the challenge. 
That's phenomenal. Foxton definitely has a big decision here to make. He's got him covered, but you know, losing an all-in right now would really hurt his stack. I'm going to go with Foxton is on an ace-jack, an ace-queen-ish type of hand. Maybe a pair of hmm, nines. Eights, nines. He makes the, the call. call. All-in and a call. Let's see him. I mean, Looks I like ace-jack suited versus ace-nine. Nicholas Dolan at risk with the ace nine of clubs. Foxen looking to watch his hand hold up to knock a player out and bring us down to the final seven. Three, ten, four, no help there for Dolan. Turn card to seven, a nine and a nine only will send him to the, or keep him alive. Ace yeah. on the river, and Foxen takes this hand down. Nicholas Dolan from the USA eliminated in eighth place, taking home $57,683,000. And we are down to the final seven in this tournament as Alex Foxen chips up. Final seven here. WSOP 2022 event 16 to 3K no limit hold'em bonus coverage. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy the content. Hit that notification bell if you want to know whenever we have something exciting going on here on the channel. We have daily highlights, recaps, and every now and then, one of these bonus coverage live streams. No whole cards, but you get the fireworks and you get to see how some of these events unfold. <laughs> trip, trip Hop in the chat says, I live next to Negranu on Huntington Drive. <laughs> Was friends with his wow. kid. Must be a different is, Negroni. Is, is that is that is, <laughs> is that the Lake Havasu uh, joke? It must be the Lake Havasu joke. The Lake Havasu joke coming from Daniel's vlog. Wasn't wasn't really. I mean, I mean for, it was it was for, serious for Daniel. It's pretty serious. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hoping he's doing all right. Um, shout out Daniel Negroni's vlog. If you guys want to check that out, you can do it on his YouTube channel. He gave a shout out to our podcast a couple times. Beautiful. Remco and I have a podcast, Poker Go WSP podcast. Check it out. Find it on wherever you guys find your podcast. Grateful Mouse in the chat. What's up, buddy? How's, how's it going? Too bad you're not here, but I love the Grateful de deck, of, deck of cards. Yeah, how that great are those cards? Those are so beautiful. Beautiful deck of cards there, Grateful Mouse. Great to have you here, Grateful Mouse. Some tournaments going on break. Dolan, who just busted out, had just shy of 10 big blinds. There were like nine big blinds left, and he was all in. Raid. We're only 70 likes or so away from our next merch giveaway. Please make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. You guys are watching the final table of event number 16 here at the 2022 World Series of Poker. $3,000 no limit hold'em. This is Poker Go's bonus coverage. He's Renko Rinkema. I'm Donnie Peters. You guys can see our photos in the bottom right. Follow us on Twitter if you like. Our handles are there on the screen. Seven players left in this one. $75,000 locked up for each of them. More than 558k up top to the winner. Leonard here in the seat to the right of the dealer. Comes in with a raise. Makes it 600k to go. The players are playing 150k. 300k with 300k big blind ante. Joey Weisman in the big blind is in the tank. Weisman moves Ray, all in. All in. Oh. Probably about 2.7 million is the shove. Two million four seventy-five. Okay, two million four hundred seventy-five thousand.
D Zomer is asking tomorrow's PLO High Roller Stream, are they playing down to a set number of players? Uh, yes, they are trying to play down to five, and then come back tomorrow with the final five. PLO tournaments move pretty slowly, so we'll see if they get there. Should be should be a good stream tomorrow. Meanwhile, Wiseman all in for not that much. No, 2.475 million. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's less than 10 bigs. Less than 10 bigs after a min raise from Leonard, who has two invested and needs to call basically seven more. I mean, this is a good chunk of Leonard's stack, though, which I think is something he's thinking about here. Yes, it is about eight big lines that Wiseman is all in for, but Leonard came back from the break with 4.1 million. He did get one shove through to chip up, but still about half his stack here would need to go in if he makes this call. Breaking down his stack to see exactly how much he has. Alex Foxen and David Mishikowski just, you know, having a little chit chat on the other side of the table. <laughs> Big decision for Leonard, for sure. You see Boas is standing up, eyeing a pretty decent pay jump here of 22K. I think that was Leonard apologizing for taking too long, but we haven't seen too many tanks, so, you know, you get to a spot in this tournament, once in a while a long tank can be warranted. Not that big of a deal. What do you guys think? What does Leonard have? What is he thinking with? Let us know in the chat. Yeah. Is he going to call or fold? I just saw that during my ride, Donnie, when I got back, it was 113 degrees right before I got home. Meanwhile, Leonard kicks it in. Wiseman wins. Made Wiseman sweat it out. 113 degrees? Yeah. What is it right now? Let's look. When I left my house, it was 79 degrees. When I got home, it was 113 on my bike computer. This only says 106. I mean, I don't know. Weird on my phone, I didn't, so who knows? I didn't know what I wanted. <laughs> I really don't know. Like, you could have. Are you happy to win the money? I'm happy to win the money. I could see, I could see you calling and me dominating. I could see Gabriel is asking, don't have time banks there. No, this event has no time banks. There's no shot clock for this tournament. It's only for the high roller events where they use the shot clock. Toby, how much you got? Five? Five? Three hundred, please, big one. Five in the chain. Oh, I'm sorry. I saw it. Didn't see it there, my Action resumes here. Seven handed play. We have quite a few short stacks that are hoping for a quick double up. David Miskowski is not part of that group. <laughs> He's just looking for the knockouts. Yep. I really feel like Miskowski looks like Thomas Walrus with a shaved head. Okay, I can see it a little bit. Where's Owen? Here we go, another shove. This time it's Alex Foxen from the button, applying pressure on both blinds. Wiseman and Laos. Bo sorry, Boas <laughs> let go of their cards. Fitvac said, is it possible to put blinds on the graphics or is that asking for too much? 
it's a it's a legitimate ask, but we can't do it, unfortunately. We're pretty static with our shots. But we can tell you that they are playing 150,000, 300,000 with a 300,000 big blind ante. The level after this will go up to 200, 400, and so on. We'll work to keep you guys updated as much as possible through our commentary. My name is Donnie Peters. I'm joined here by Remco Rinkima. This is the event number 16, final table here at the 2022 World Series of Poker, the greatest tournament series in the game. I think it's 88, 89, live gold bracelets up for grabs, another 13 online. If you are in one of the states that offers WSP.com. You can get in on the action there. New Jersey, Delaware, Nevada, of course, Pennsylvania. I believe they're live in Michigan as well. Bernal Hansen said, You're doing great, guys. Thank you very much, Bernal. Hopefully, I'm pronouncing that right. If I'm not, forgive me, please. Where's Owen? We have an all in here from Boas over a raise from Mishikowski. Mishikowski made it 600K to go. He does a pump fake, does a second pump fake, finally throws them in. Boas takes the pot. Does anyone know if Craig Chade is still in the seven card no. stud championship? I'll pull it up right now for you. <laughs> oh, he fucked him up with them, yeah. Yeah, I'm down. <laughs> Dude, never again. I don't believe Craig Chape made it through the day on day one, so I'm going to say that he's out, at least according to WSOP.com. He's not in the chip counts. Yeah, of course. And just to make it worse, he has ace nine. Yeah. We're responsible hand to have. Hot off the press, sounds like we're about to get air conditioning. <laughs> or an air conditioning fixed, how about that? Bruce. Just bumped into one of the workers here at Bally's. Word on the street is that one of the AC units over in the Bally's Convention Center has been malfunctioning <laughs> since the start of the World Series. So it's been a little bit on the warm side in here. That said, we were just told we might need some uh, some sweatshirts, which is a good sign. So we're back to the Rio in the Amazon room and freezing ice cold temperatures, which I personally love. I mean, you know, we can always put a jacket on, but I can't get naked while, while I'm working, while I'm playing poker. <laughs> we have a raise here from Alex Foxen. Makes it 600K to go. You got it, Jassy. Any questions you guys have? Just drop them in the chat. We will try to get to them as much as possible. Pineapple shirt for the win. Yes, pineapple shirt is the best shirt at the final table. That is for sure. Remco, we were just informed that uh, we might need to put on sweatshirts because the AC might be working in a few minutes. Oh, boy. Here we go, baby. Oh the WSOP is back. Going to Vegas Tuesday, says Dale Laney. Is Poker Go located in Bally's or Paris? The main Poker Go stage is on the Bally side, the far back conference room, convention room. I don't really know what this room is called. I just know it's awesome in here. So go to the Bally side, walk past the little security podium that has to do with the hotel elevators. You can skip right past that and then uh, head on back. You, you won't miss the set once you get into it amongst Where the sea it? of tables. Anthony Pettit said, what are people watching this on? Laptop, phone, TV, et cetera. Yeah, what do you guys watch? What device do you use to tune in? When I'm at home and I want to watch poker, usually just fire it up on my TV, but I, I do it through a Roku device. I am one of those cord cutters. Garage 69 says, let's go Kev Stevens, the local boy. Tell us some more about, yeah, does, does he own a boat? <laughs> Garage Stevens, please let us know if, if he owns a boat. 
and as much information as you can provide about Kevin Stevens, would love to know it. About, about any player for that matter, if you are friends or family of any of the players at the final table, please let us know. Sorry about that. Kevin Stevens from Phoenix, Arizona. At least according to Hendon Mob. And then turned over my ace ten suit. iPad, laptop, phone, <laughs> Google Pixel, Roku, laptop. A lot of Roku here. Chromecast. Less than 40 likes away from that 600 mark, and that means Remco's going to give away a t-shirt, so uh, if you guys want to hit that like button, you will have a chance to win a t-shirt from shop.pokergo.com. That is our online store. A lot of great merchandise there, some memorabilia and collectible items as well. Shirts, hoodies, hats. Get on in there. The best merch in the game is at shop.pokergo.com. Also, two live booths here. Oh, we have a hug from the AC guy. <laughs> God bless this guy. He's, what, he, what's he, your name, sir? Rick. Rick, the AC guy, is fixing it for everyone. Let's go, Rick, baby. <laughs> yes, sir. Let us know in the chat if Donnie Peters is the loudest person you've ever sat next to or, or listened to. Don, I'm, I'm, when Donnie Peters gets fired up, like it starts crackling in my headphones as if someone is, uh, is, is about to break the speakers. But if Rick, if Rick fixed it, and if we're about to go 10 degrees down, I'd be Put him happy. in the main event. Put him in the main event. Let's go. Deuce 310 on the flop here, three clubs. We got action between Misikowski and Stevens. Two big stacks clashing, even though Stevens, from the look of it, has gone down a little bit. 750. Shout out Rick, the AC guy, the unsung hero of the WSOP so far. That said, if the AC doesn't start working, we are going to need to find Rick and have a talking to him. <laughs> to the turn we go. Five of clubs, four clubs now. Ooh, Stevens is going to double check to make sure he has one. Four of hearts on the river after two checks. One point eight. One point eight million is the bet from Stevens and Miskowski. Seems a little bit disgusted and tosses him into the muck. What do you show? You show. You did show that. You show that. Is it a set of threes? Mr. Kowski folds his set of threes instantly. <laughs> Stevens <laughs> takes down the pot. For those that are just tuning in, we're about 170 YouTube subscribers away from giving away a free annual subscription to Poker Go. If you don't want to, if you don't want to hope for some good luck, y'all can also use promo code GetWSP30 to save $30 on your annual subscription. This deal is only valid during the World Series of Poker, and it'll break down to about $6 a month if you decide to sign up. You also get, of course, yeah, the new right. season of High Stakes Poker. You get all our WSP Classic action, High Stakes Duel. We got a $1.6 million match coming up between Scott Seaver and whoever his challenger will be, most likely Phil Helmuth. No, Phil Helmuth won. Oh, sorry, Helmuth won, so Seaver has to challenge him. 
Grateful Mouse asks, asks oh, ugh, sorry, once Bally's is rebranded to Horseshoe, yes, Bally's is undergoing a rebrand. Currently, it'll be called Horseshoe Las Vegas pretty soon. Do you think the room rates will go up? Probably. Possibly. If you renovate. I mean, it's more about inflation, I think. And inflation right. is through the effing roof right now. If anyone out there is, uh, you know, puts gas in their car, they know exactly what I'm talking about. But I don't know. I mean, it might be pretty reasonable overall. I feel like this is a reasonable venue. It, it seems reasonable here. Still seven-handed, by the way. We're playing down to a winner tonight. Fitvax says, what if I already have a sub? So Fitvax, if you already have a sub, if you are monthly or quarterly and you want to upgrade, you can upgrade to annual, use the promo code GetWSP30, and then you will be locked into the new price. If you're a current annual sub, I think you can just like resubscribe or something and use the promo code and get locked into For the better moment. price. Always got to be out there price shopping. We have an all in here. Ooh, and a call. Let's have a look. Ace King versus that King Jack or two Jacks? I think it's King Jack. King Jack of Hearts for Wiseman, but it's the Ace King. Yeah, he's all in for sure. Yeah, against Nathan Rustler, who has the Ace King of Spades. I guess he does have him covered by the look of it. So. Rustler is the one all in and at risk with the better hand. Let's see a flop here. Four, eight, nine. Gonna need running cards or a jack for Wiseman oh to send oh, that's quite his the card to the rail. Now he has a flush and straight draw. A ten heart or a king. Yes, sir. Three of clubs on the river. Have, have the, has the best hand won every time going in? I don't think we've seen a beat. I think you're right. Uh, Rustler double. We have the ace nine versus the aces. It's going to be close. Hold on. I can't. I got to count. We have the ace jack versus the ace nine. Uh, this hand here. There's three, three, six, two, five. Three, five. Oh, it's going to be this close. Three, six, two, five. Yeah, it's close. 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 Yeah, it's Wow, Joey Weissman barely eliminated there. Joey Weissman, former bracelet winner. Goes out in this one. We are down to just one bracelet winner left, and that is David Mishikowski in C3. Alex Fox said he folded pocket fours. What a flop this set. But then again, if Alex Foxen gets in, butterfly effect, four doesn't run out that way, so don't worry about it, Mr. Foxen. Joey Wiseman takes home $75,000 for his efforts, and we are now down to the final six, all guaranteed just shy of $100,000. Did I beat you? No, I thought this For those who are, that are just tuning in, this is bonus coverage. No Poker Go stream today. This is Rem Quindani on the bonus coverage dress down stream, giving you guys an opportunity to watch some events that we would otherwise not be streaming. We only do this when we have a chance to do so. You're good, man. Yeah. The final table, you're good. Please. Action over in the 25K PLO High Roller. Noah Schwartz recently doubled up. Brazilian Yuri Zavalevsky also recently doubled up. Chance Corneth doubled up through chip leader Scott Ball. A lot of big, name, big names left in that one. Again, that, that event will be streaming on Poker Go tomorrow. More than $1.4 million up top. There are 25 players remaining. That'll be on the subscription product for Poker Go. Sign up using Git. 
promo, get, promo code get WSP30. This stream here, this is our bonus coverage stream. Action right now between Alex Foxen and David Mishikowski. Foxen checks. Mishikowski with a bet, 600K, acting from the button. Foxen was acting out of the small blind. We have a jack, seven, five, flop. Foxen mulling over his decision, reaching for chips. Makes the call. Good clear. Here we go to the turn. Deuce of spades. Brings two spades. Foxen taps the table, pushing the action over to Mishikowski. Again, jack seven, five, deuce with two spades. Rainbow flop, second spade coming in on the turn. Foxen keeping okay. his focus locked in right on his opponent. Mishikowski is the chip leader. Checks behind. Here we go to the river. Five of hearts, down and dirty. Foxen up first. Jack seven five deuce five on the board. De decision is still with Alex Fox in there. In the orange shirt backwards cap. Here comes Foxen. Foxen looks like a nice, healthy bet there. Mishikowski doesn't seem to matter much. Quickly folds. Alex Foxen takes this one. Thanks, everyone, tuning in to the chat. If you have any questions, please send them in. Hope Jones with a good one. Who's leading POI so far? I think we can get a little bit of an update on that. POI right now. Jake Schindler in the lead. I'm sure that'll make a lot of people happy. David Peters in second, then Brad Rubin. Henrietta Akane, winner of the house warming. Dara San Martino, Dan Smith. Chad Eifsledge, Alex Livingston, Leo Soma, and then Raj Vora, the top 10. Still lots of poker left to be played. We are only on event number 16 here. How many events are there, like 96? So there are 89 live gold bracelet events if you include the Tournament of Champions at the end of the summer. And then there are 13 online bracelet events. Bruce. Two players. Negrano is still in the 25K PLO. The weather forecast is basically so hot that it doesn't matter. That's how hot it is. King, King, five on the flop here, by the way. Action between Stevens and Foxen. Foxen on the button. RMX Indiana says, I think Dario is going to make a strong run for POI this year. I, I agree. I think already a great start. I think Dario's off to a good start. And I'll pull he, up uh, the standings. Yeah, I just went through it. Oh, sorry. I wasn't listening. I was in a chat. They're arguing about whether it should be hot or cold inside the Rio. Well, it should or be in it the Rio. It should, be, it should be a lot colder than it is now. Four They're saying that we shouldn't go. We shouldn't go from it being, you know, 110 outside to coming inside and it being 60. My, my claim is that no one actually goes outside in Vegas during the summer. Unless it's super early morning or you're going to a pool party or something. Yep. You have to be insane to go outside. Ace of hearts on the turn here. Stevens check called Foxen's bet.
Foxen reaching for more. One point three million is the bet to Stevens. Stevens has made some strong hands, trip tens, flush, that he got paid off on. He looks a little bit pained right now, but. Did we ever get an answer if he owns a boat? I don't think we did. Cashing in, show one. Jack of clubs. Not sure if that's going to help him, but <laughs> could be a king jack, could be an ace jack, could also just be. He certainly wanted to see an ace or a king. Yeah, turn that one. Sees a jack, and you know you're still kind of just guessing. Frog seven one one says, "Just wait. You got August heat in June. How high will it go?" I'm not going to be here to find out. I'm going to leave. 121. I always, uh, I, I always try to leave in August. I mean, you've been here for a while now. I've been here since 2009. I mean, we, we're just used to it. Like, yeah. You know, it's you just stay inside. You stay inside, and you know, you go outside. You're outside for a little bit. It's not. I mean, it's a dry heat, and you just kind of get used to it. Like you get used to any climate. It's still better than living in I'm the sure Netherlands, the where it rains half the time. Yeah. You get used to the rain there. I'm assuming. No, um, I hate the rain. Yeah, but when you live there, I'm just saying, you kind of... It becomes normal. You get normal. used to that it happens, yeah, is yeah, what I mean. For sure. You live in, I don't know, Where's northern north? part of Canada. You're probably used to it being freezing cold. Like, you just get used to that. True. Miss Scouts oh. with the raise here, making it 600K to go. We're playing 150K, 300 with a 300K big blind ante. Action on Leonard in the big blind. Anthony Pettit said, how much is food and drink in Vegas during the WCP? I mean, it's... It's, if you're in the casino, it's casino prices, and it's casino prices everywhere. You know, so if, if you're aware of what casino prices are everywhere, I mean, oh, bottle of water, one. five bucks, I, I don't know. You know, it's just, it, that's how it is. It's, it's very similar anywhere. The WSAP specifically doesn't, you know, make the prices be 3X. It's just standard casino prices. All in from Leonard here from the big blind. Viskowski has this look in his eyes. They're like, ah, oh, I guess I kind of have to call. But he doesn't. He lays it down. Leonard picks up this pot. Uh, Sander, Sander is trying to start stuff here. Well, Guys, when you call it, when do you call a sandwich a sandwich? Well, we debated this for about an hour on the last stream. Uh, right, can we not get into this again? Basically, <laughs> bread with a topping. It's a sandwich to me. Well, Tucson Collectibles is also trying to start stuff. WSB will not be a disaster. WSB has been awesome so far. Yes. It's been great. Numbers have been high. New venues have been really, really good. I think everyone is loving it. We've had a lot of big names winning their first bracelets. A lot of fun so far. Had a 20,000 entry field already. I mean, come on. This stuff, is, stuff is great. Here. I am so surprised. Who is smoking here? Like, like I can smell cigarette smoke. It's weird. Security. Maybe, maybe there's like an employee who's like sneaking off in the back, yeah. huffing on a cigarette. Uh, Peter Moss is asking what the chip denominations are. The blue slash purple chips are worth 100K. The greens are 25K. And those black chips, of which you don't see too many, are worth half a million. Eight likes away from 600. Let's go. Wow. Let's go. Only 150 subs away from giving away that annual subscription. That's going to be huge. Six hundred likes means Remco's giving away a T-shirt to the chat. So, a couple more, and he'll be uh, he'll be doing his super sophisticated random draw. Absolutely. Benny Glazer, meanwhile, going for another bracelet in the what is this event? The triple draw, down to yes. the final seven. 
Grayfell Mouse says, take a walk to Planet Hollywood and eat the Earl of Sandwich. <laughs> That's true, right, Rem? Yeah, we were just talking about it. Earl of Sandwich is a great spot. The sandwiches are like, I don't know, four by two inches about. Like They're, they're on the smaller side. You can get a few of them. Very, very good. Did he show? No, he, he looked like he was about to. I also heard a, a tip from Joey Wiseman, actually, who just busted from this final table. He said, if you have a 90-minute dinner break, walk over to the Cosmopolitan. Their food court is a little bit classier slash higher end than most strip casinos. So quick service, quick food, and good food, apparently. So that might be interesting. How do I get in on the t-shirts at EMP? Well, once we hit 600 likes, which we have, nice. ding, 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 Remco will do a random drawing based on a chat question that he asks. If you just respond to the question in the chat, you are entered. He will draw a random name. If you don't win, head on over to shop.pokergo.com. Do some shopping for yourself. A lot of good merch items there. Foxen with the raise to 600K, and that'll be enough to take it down. And We are keeping a close eye on all the action. We won't miss any important hands. Can I ask the question for the, <laughs> yep. for the thing? Go ahead. Go do it right now. All right. Right now, we're going to do a giveaway because we did hit 600 likes. The giveaway will be for it's the High Stakes Poker Mount Rushmore t-shirt. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. So I want to know. We've been talking a lot of it about the temperatures. What's the temperature where you are? Just put the number on in the chat, and you are entered into the raffle, drawing, whatever you want to call it. We will draw the winner in a few minutes. Again, that's what is the temperature where you're watching from. Beautiful. Hmm? Let's hear it. How hot is it? Well, it's 106 where we are. <laughs> 108 now. Excessive wow. heat warning. It's going to be like that every day for the next I month know. or so. Month, just month get used so. to it. Oh, we got all the temps rolling in. If you're coming to the World Series of Poker, standard World Series of Poker attire is probably shorts and a t-shirt, bring a backpack with a hoodie. That's the rule. And gloves. Yep. You're, you're going to need the shorts and a t-shirt when you're walking in from the parking lot, and then you're probably going to need the hoodie when you're inside. That's just the rules. Come prepared for multiple temperatures. We got a wide range, Donnie. What's nine Celsius? I'll take one. Forty? No, it's a little more. Nine Celsius is like fifty-two. Oh, that was pretty close. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna look that up. I'm curious if I four Celsius. That sounds really cold. Wow, fifty-two is eleven. It's very close. Four Celsius is like 39. Jeez. Maybe 40. Ms. Skowski here raising from the button. 10 million. Ms. Skowski has been losing some chips. Fox and lets it go. All in here from Boas, and Miskowski quickly gives it up. Boas, very impressive showing, Don. He came into the final table with 10 big blinds. It's the shirt. Has has definitely been channeling the shirt vibes. Pineapple Four, man, five, as we call him. Up to six million. Walter Jacobson said it was com it was so it was actually so comfortable during the housewarming event. I mean, I don't know what room Walter Jacobson went in, but it was pretty hot in the Bally's Platinum room. <laughs> Looks as though Alex Foxen is our new chip leader after those recent hands, up to about 13 million from the looks of it. 87 in Niceville, Florida. Niceville, Florida sounds like the most made up place in the history of my man. <laughs> Just like Lake Havasu. Sounds like pleasant. All right, time to spin the wheel after this hand. Final chance to let us know what the temp, temp is, where you're, look, where you're watching from. This is a real place. I can't believe it. Well, Population uh, is 15,000. Wow.
What is Niceville, Florida known for? Arts and culture. Wow. The Boggy Fest, previously known as the Boggy Bayou Mullet Festival. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. Remco's going to pull that drawing pretty soon, so get those entries in. Just let us know the temperature. It is where you're watching from. Super random. That's why we love it. All right, spinning the wheel. Let's have a look. The winner is Joe Volpe. Maybe it's Paul's dad. Who knows? Joe Volpe, 101 Fahrenheit. Maybe he's somewhere close to Vegas. Joe, send a DM to, to PokerGo on Twitter, twitter.com slash PokerGo. With your, with the screenshot of you logged into your YouTube account as well as your shirt size and your address, and we'll send you that high stakes poker Mount Rushmore shirt as soon as possible. <laughs> Alex Fox in here with a raise to six hundred thousand. Again, they are playing one hundred fifty thousand, three hundred thousand with a three hundred thousand big start. blind ante. Leonard makes a call out of the big blind. Heads up to the flop. We go. King 7-5 with two spades. Leonard checks over to Foxen. Final three tables, meanwhile, in the 25K PLO. Daniel Negreanu still in the mix, as, as, as well as David Williams, both in the top 10. Josh Aria in there as well. Min bet here from Foxen, 300K. I still can't believe there were 264 entries. I mean, it's just, it's bananas. The, t the 25K high roller that happened earlier, that was run by Chad Eavesledge, that had 251 entries, largest 25K in the history of the WSOP. So, I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's the, the numbers are huge. The, the yeah. $1,500 Omaha Eight or Better set a record with 1,086 entries. We had the fourth largest field ever at the World Series of Poker with the housewarming event drawing 20,080 entries. All signs point to just massive numbers throughout the course of the series leading into the WSP main event. Maybe we see the biggest one ever, topping 2006 when they got 8,773 entries. And Jamie Gold won it for famously $12, $12 million in un unlimited blueberries. Exactly. Do you think he still eats blueberries like every single day? Top, top. I said top, top. Chop, chop. Chop, chop. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, man. I think this is a bet of 300,000 by Foxen after Leonard checked, and he check raises to 1.2 million. Leonard does have about 2.4 ish behind after making this move. Looking on, looking down on King seven five with two spades. Foxen lays it down, and Leonard picks up a much-needed pot. Are you a rounders needs a sequel guy, or rounders oh doesn't need man. a sequel guy? I mean, first I off, just saw a tweet I've only been interested in rounders <laughs> as a sequel if Koppelman and Levine are responsible again, if they're doing it. And then I think that with how much, especially Brian Koppelman loves the game of poker, I think it would be awesome. However, we are so far removed right now from the first rounders that, actually, let me, let me rephrase that. It would only be interesting if uh, Matt Damon's character is once again the vocal point, whether he's balling or struggling. I think that needs to be the emphasis of the movie. So if those three people are involved, I'm in. But it needs to build on to the same timeline, same characters. We need to see how everyone's doing. Right. We, need, we need some closure and some storylines. Start with six and a half. Kevin Stevens here with a raise. Said he started the hand with about six and a half million. Looks like he makes it 650K to go on the button. Nathan Rustler in the big blind was the player who asked Stevens how much he started the hand with. Russell's been very, very quiet, the quietest player at this final table in terms of his play. Yeah. So 
750? <coughs> yes. Yes, sir. The raise is to 750,000. Rustler confirms it with the dealer. All <laughs> right. Peter Moss says, I'd rather just have them do a remake of the movie, not a sequel. What do you mean remake? Rounders was perfect. It was a phenomenal just, movie. Just do it over. All in here from Rustler. Wow. Here we go. The decision is on. Kevin Stevens in the upper right quadrant, the older gentleman with the white hat and the glasses. Stevens double checks his hand, removes the chips from the top of his card. Is that going to be a full? Ooh. Now he's looking back at his hand. Oh, he's not happy. He is not happy. Are we going to see a call? Are we going to see a fold? Is Big he Hollywooding? What's going on? Big spot here, though. 40K uh, pay jump, basically. 34,000 to be Shows exact. Shows an ace. Wow. And kicks it in. Shows the ace of hearts. I do not think Rustler is going to gonna return the favor and show any cards here as Rustler collects the pot. Taking a chunk of chips from Stevens there. Action continues here, six-handed if you're just tuning in. This is event number 16 of the 2022 World Series of Poker. It's a $3,000 No Limit Hold'em event. Payouts are on your screen, as well as our Twitter handles. My name is Remco Rinkema and Donnie Peters alongside me to provide commentary on this bonus coverage live stream. We'll be with you until the end of the night. We're playing down to a winner. Alex Foxen going for his first WSOP bracelet. He, of course, the headliner as the two-time GPI player of the year. By the way, speaking of GPI, happy birthday to Eric Dani. Oh, wow. Shout out. Saw it on Twitter earlier. Joe Volpe, you did indeed win the giveaway. Send a, DM right. on, send a DM to Poker Go on Twitter with your address and your shirt size, and we'll send you that high-stakes poker Mount Rushmore T-shirt. Meanwhile, Ace, King, Jack on the flop. Action between Miskowski and Foxen. Had a raise here from Foxen under the gun. Miskowski defends from the big blind. Have the type of flop here that should be in favor of Alex Foxen, especially given the position that he opened from, being under the gun. Mishikowski likely to defend wide from the big blind. Looks like he wants to continue here. Foxen with a bit of what looks like 400K. Mishikowski makes the call. We're going to 4th Street. 4th Street, that's... You don't hear that too often. You like to mix it up, you know. I say turn, flop, or flop, turn, river so much. Sometimes you got to work in. Burn and turn. 4th four, four Street and 5th Street. You know, we got to switch it up. So is the flop is 3rd Street? I don't know what the flop is. The first three community cards. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Nine of clubs here on the turn. Mishikowski and Foxen heads up in this pot. Check, check, going to the river. Pairs the board with the king of hearts. Ace, king, jack, nine, king on the board. Mishikowski first to act. Foxen staring quite intently at his opponent. Mishikowski reaches for chips. So it looks like it might be a 400,000 bet.
Fox and folds. Mishikoski takes this one down. Lindsay says, what are the chip denominations? Lindsay, they are. The greens are worth 25,000. The purple or lavender chips are worth 100,000. And the black chips, the ones you see Alex Fox and shuffling right now, those are worth 500,000. The players are playing 150,000 for the small blind, 300,000 for the big blind, and a 300,000 big blind ante is also in play. This is the final six from a field of 1,240 players in event number 16, $3,000 no limit hold'em here at the 2022 World Series of Poker. Sure, the ammo? I think I started with five, six, five, seven. I just placed an order for us, Donnie. I love it. Uh, we have a raise here from Kevin Stevens. And we have an all-in from Nathan Rustler. Again, attacking wow. Kevin Stevens. This time, Ooh, he's <laughs> this time Rustler took much less time to shove over the top of Stevens. Rustler on the button. <laughs> Stevens is so frustrated right now. Well, you know, when you're, when you're on the, I mean, not that he's super short, but you know, 20, 25 big blinds. You try and open it. Oh, here, here we, we go. go. He makes the call. He is dominating. Ace queen like. offsuit versus ace king. Nathan Rustler in a position so now to Kevin, send. Kevin Stevens says it's ladies' night. We'll see if that happens. Oh. 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 Queen in the window. King right behind it. Ten on the turn. Still plenty of outs here. Let's see it on the river card. That's an eight. That's not going to do it. Counts look to be pretty close. Let's have a look here, Donnie. Looks like Stevens is eliminated. It does look like it. Round of applause here, signaling his elimination. Kevin Stevens was second in chips for quite a while here, but all of a sudden he finds himself on the rail after calling all in with ace queen offsuit versus Nathan Rustler. Wow. We are down to the final five as Kevin Stevens takes home $99,000 for finishing in sixth place. The remaining five are guaranteed $133,000. Action continues then. We should probably have a look at these chip counts, Donnie, to see what we can count here from our vantage point. But Nathan Rustler is making some waves here at this final table. Heather is just popping in to support the stream. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you are new to the channel, please consider liking and subscribing. Milik saying, why are they zooming in and out? Well, we believe that the action is most easy to follow on the big overhead view. You can count the chips more easily. You can see who's still in the hand. We're a big fan of that specific vantage point, but you know, to each their own. Blinds might be up here to 200,000, 400,000. Raise. Raise from Nathan Rustler out of the cutoff position. He makes it 850 to go. Everyone folds this one. He's going to Rustler. Two in a row for the man that just scored the KO of Kevin Stevens. 
five players remaining here in event number 16. $3,000 no limit hold them. More than $558,000 up top. Each player remaining guaranteed $133,000. You have Nathan Rustler in the white and blue hat with the black t-shirt in the upper left quadrant. Next to him, David Mishikowski. Alex Foxen next to him with the orange shirt, blue backwards cap. Toby Boas in the pineapple shirt. Definitely the best looking fashion item at this final table. And then the Austrian, Stefan Lenner, is next to the dealer in the black shirt in the upper right quadrant. I'm sorry, Savage, we're going to keep it this way because we can see the action the best on the overhead camera. Play folds to Boas in the small blind. Boas has been on the shorter side for most of the final table, picking his spots extremely well. Here he moves all in. Leonard quickly gives it up. Another shove gets through for Boas. We might be able to get another camera installed at some point. But hey, I say it's a work in progress. Unions. We're trying to trying to get it trying to make it happen, you know. Doing what we can out here. Donnie, give us a chip count update. Do your best magic here on these stacks. I'll write I'll write along with you. All right, so Nathan Rustler in C1. 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 I would say 14 million wow. for Nathan Russell. Mishikowski. 10 million. All right. Ten. Alex Foxen, I'll go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Nine. 6, 7, 8. I would say 12 million for Alex Foxen. How many chips are in play? Let's see if we. Uh, I think 59, or uh, sorry, 49 million. I would say 6.2 million for Boas. And then 4 million for Leonard. How close am I to the total? Two players. Off by how much is in play? Less than 3 million. 49 million in play. Oh, there you go. Okay. 4 6 queen here. The black chips are the hardest to, to make out. I mean, Mishikowski might have a million more. Rustler might have a million more. Close enough. Here we're heads up on the flop between Alex Foxen and Nathan Rustler. Queen 6-4 on the board. Check from Rustler, bet of 700,000 from Foxen. Rustler now in the tank. Oh, probably, yeah. That's what they're talking about. Best looking person on the rail. Yeah. <laughs> Boas must be the happiest player at this table, <laughs> coming into the final table with 10 big blinds, and now he is five handed. Power of the pineapple, baby. Having made himself an extra 90K, still sitting on one of the shorter stacks. Okay. Call from Rustler of the 700K bet on the flop from Foxen. Three hearts comes on the turn. Queen 6 4 3 is the board. Two spades on the flop. Second heart comes on the turn. Rustler checks over to Foxen. Checks, checks behind. Ten of hearts on the river. Rustler first to act here. here. Reaching for chips. Looks like we got 1.7 million as the bet from Rustler. Foxen double checks his cards.
Again, the board is queen six four three ten. River bet here from Rustler is one point seven million. Alex Foxen thinking things over. And looks like he has the calling chips in his hand. Puts them back down on top of his stack. Picks them up again. <laughs> Look at this, Donnie. Back and forth we go. Wow. Why are those almonds frozen? <laughs> we have a call here from Alex Foxen. Queen 10 shown by Rustler. Top pair on the flop. River two pair. Foxen. Puts his hand face down into the muck. Nathan Rustler chips up even more. Foxen takes it below to his stack. We just got a special delivery by Tim Duckworth, who Thanks. brought in the frozen almonds. I, I'm, I'm, I guess, I'm, guess, I'm, I'm guessing the fridge had a malfunction. Can I open these? Oh, so these are safe? Okay, so I got some I got some sodas, we got some frozen almonds. We're gonna probably eat all these. Alright chat, let's chill out here. Don't make me start banning people. You better watch out with Donnie Peters. Trigger finger. All right, action five-handed. Let us, by the way, we're having some chocolate-covered almonds. We're a few hours into the stream. We've got a few hours to go. Let us know what you're, what you're snacking on. Let's hear some good snacks. Mitch says if Foxen loses, Maria will leave him. I mean, I don't know who Maria is. Because he's married to Kristen Bicknell. Um, now yep. Kristen Foxen. <laughs> we are working on another camera. Currently, we don't have another camera, so we can't just put a camera on there. It's pretty complicated. Like, I don't want to go and do a whole thing about production, but you can't just turn on a camera. That's not how it works. Okay. Dana, Dana Craven, they are the frozen chocolate covered oh almonds. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, <laughs> someone stole the power cord to the trailer out the back <laughs> the other day, and everything inside overheated and melted. So then we took the almonds that we had out and we put them in the fridge once we got the power cord back. And now I think the fridge has gone the other way. On the fritz. <laughs> Where? I have a, I have a, the almonds are now frozen. I have a frozen water here. Isn't, it's good for massaging, right? I've seen people do that with like frozen water bottles. AB said some Stroop waffles. Remco oh, knows. I'll crush those. <laughs> I haven't had those in a long time. Snacking on Sierra Nevada. There you go. That's a beer, right? Mm -hmm. I want to. You know where I want to go, Donnie? Before che cheese steak and fries. That sounds like a meal. Before the summer is over, I want to go to Steiner's. Oh yeah, I'm in. I want to go to Steiner's. Are snacking comments Donnie approved? Yeah, as long as you don't go crazy. Big snacker, Donnie Peters. I am a big snacker. This is actually really nice. I'm literally massaging my leg with a frozen right. water bottle. We got a raise. Sorry if we go off the deep end sometimes. The days are long. The sleep is short. <coughs> Just having some fun with it, ladies and gentlemen. Let's do our next giveaway for some merch when we hit 1,000 likes. So let's uh, stay on top of that, stay motivated. We're only 111 subscribers away from hitting 273 
1,000 on our YouTube channel. When, once we do that, we're going to give away a free annual subscription to PokerGo. I mean, Milk D, man. Just, you don't know. You have no idea. So I'm over it. Ammo also over it. I'm going to let it slide for now, but I mean, I'm about to be over. Intense stare down here between Boas and Leonard. Raid. <coughs> Thanks, Dimitri. Coming in hot. Love it. Leonard with the raise here. He ran to the bathroom and ran away, so there's no sand. Yeah, I don't care. You guys don't care? Uh, I'll wait. All right. Looks as though Nathan Rustler went to the bathroom and players are talking about waiting until he gets back. I have sympathy for us, though. I always think it's fine to wait when a player steps away. Just, you know, kind of freeze the action. If all the players at the table agree, if somebody objects, fine. you got to muck the person's hand. But if everyone at the table says, you know, let's just pause the action and just wait, I mean, what's the big deal? There was once a hand at a WSOP circuit event at Caesars Palace that I was reporting on where I got to remember exactly what happened. But somebody... I'm going to look this up. It involved Justin Bonomo going to the bathroom. Or no, Justin Bonomo might have paused. I really got to look this up. I'm totally butchering this. Should have come prepared. Remco. Remco has a mouthful of chocolate-covered almonds, and I'm just talking nonsense about something I'm not prepared for. This is making for great commentary on the stream. Well, the good thing is is that I will get to this, though. Boa said he's waiting for Russell to come back from his bathroom break. So we're literally watching someone do the nicest thing possible for one of his opponents. I mean, this is this is a similar situation to what I'm talking about. And I believe that what I'm talking about also involved Men the Master, which just, like, just makes it even better. Rustler is on his way to return as Boas kicks his cards into the muck. Leonard wins this hand. Here we go, baby. Man, these circuit events were just crazy. 5K circuit. I appreciate that. Thank you. Everyone's making friends at this final table. So this hand from the 2009 WSB circuit event, $5,100 main event at Caesars you found it. Palace in Las Vegas. Yep. Justin Bonomo raised and Men the Master moved all in from the small blind. Matt Graham jumped yeah. up and announced that he needed to run to the bathroom. An action fell back on Bonomo. Jack Schonbacher was also at the table. He also went to the bathroom. So Bonomo <laughs> Ray. wanted to wait for them to come back so that they wouldn't miss a hand. You know, 30, 45 seconds later or so, they, ran, they literally ran to the bathroom, ran back, and Bonomo says, you have no idea how good of a friend I am, <laughs> makes the call and shows aces. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is phenomenal. Yeah. Men the Master has... King so Queen, 27, King Queen yeah. five flop. Of course, so. that is hilarious. Bonomo yeah, looked six. at Graham and said, I, "I hate you." Oh, nine C. So Bonomo yeah. trying to be a good friend. Justice yeah, was not on his side in this one. I mean, technically it's slower, but he was, uh, you know, trying to help out his guys there. Did the blinds just go up, Donnie? What are we? Where are we at? By the way, ace, six, queen, two hearts, fox in against Leonard here. About 20. Leonard defended his big yeah. blind. That's wrong. That's a couple of hands. Ace, six, a couple of orbits for sure. Yeah. You were sick to see that queen. <laughs> yeah. Right in the window, just hanging out. Yeah. I don't know. I think we're still at 200,000, 400,000. The blinds that went up recently. It was oh, okay. To the raise must have been 800, 800K then right from. Fox and who now bets 400 on the flop. Know, just, just one big one. It's lose this one. I'll just put it that way. <laughs> and all of you are better than me. Wow. Nathan Russell coming in with some, with some confidence. He's saying it's going to be really hard for me to lose this one. You guys want to save time? Save some time. I love that. How about Leonard, by the way, makes the call 400K. To the turn we go. <laughs> Deuce of clubs on the turn. Leonard checks again to Foxen. Yeah. 
Fox has been fairly quiet over the last hour or so. Foxen reaching. This could be 1.2. 1.1. One. 1.1. Ah, off by one chip. Big decision for Leonard here, who has about 2.5, about 5 million behind here. Bet of 1.1 from Foxen. <laughs> Boas once more. Just just sitting back there in the pineapple shirt. Hoping for the next pay jump. Finish this after dinner, break it down, and then There's a call. To the river we go. Or just Mac Big pot brewing here. Good players. Huh? River card, three of clubs. We have ace, six, queen, deuce, three, two diamonds. Or sorry, two hearts, two clubs. Fox and studying that river card. Given that he raised on the button and bet all three streets. Sorry, all two. Uh, no, so far, raise, bet, bet. Let's see what he does on the river card. Check, check. check. Let's see him. Leonard shows king, queen, and takes down this pot. Important pot. If you're just tuning in, we're doing a series of giveaways here today on the channel. When we hit 1,000 likes on the video, we're going to do our next T-shirt merch giveaway. And as of right now, we are only 100 subscribers on YouTube away from giving away a free annual subscription to PokerGo. 100 more subscribers on a YouTube channel to give away a free annual subscription. Keep in oh. mind, this is the bonus coverage. This is an extra. We only do this when we see a final table that we like or when we have a chance to stream something you guys otherwise would not be able to see. Tomorrow, the main PokerGo broadcast is back with the final table of the 25K Pot Limit Omaha High Roller, which for now, could be headlined by Daniel Negreanu and Josh Arie, both still in the tournament with 23 left. The pace of play has slowed down a little bit as Leonard limped in from the small blind and a raise to 1.6 million from Nathan Rustler in the big blind. We're battling. <laughs> Leonard trying to decide if he wants to take a stand here or perhaps see a flop for an extra 1.2 million. Seems unlikely that he'll call this raise, given that he's out of position. 
Meanwhile, the monster stack is on day 1B. They're up to 3,100 entries on day 1B. Massive, massive tournament. 10K 7-card stud. Payouts have just been announced. 95 total players. The final 15 will get paid as Stefan Lenner is counting down his chips. 248K up top for the 10K, 10K stud. A quick look over at the standings. Kevin Gerhardt in the lead. Let's go, Team Pocket Fives. Randy Old, Dario Sammartino, and Phil Ivey also near the top of the counts. I've heard of those people before. <laughs> Phil Ivey knows a thing or two about stud, I heard. All wow, all in shove here from Leonard. What a turn of events here. Rustler seemed as though he wanted to attack that limp. And here he goes, stuffed in his face with the all in shove from Leonard. Let's have a look at the total. 9,100,000. 9,100,000 is the shove. Leonard had been chipping up nicely. But Russell has to let this one go. Wow. The stacks are evening out at this final table. We are in for a tough battle as Toby Boas is the short stack. He is a little disconnected from the other four players. But between Russell. Misikowski, Foxen, and Leonard, it is anyone's game at this final table right now. Maxwell's asking how much is the poker goes up. If you use promo code gets WSOP30, it's only it's uh, it's it comes down to only six dollars a month. Five dollars and eighty-three cents, to be exact. Wow, that's like that'll be that's the annual sub. We also have monthly and quarterly subs available. I believe monthly is fourteen ninety-nine per month. Uh, quarterly is three months, of course, twenty-nine ninety-nine. I believe. Raise the two point nine. Of course, cancel any time. But the best deal is the annual sub, and using the promo code as Remco mentioned, get WSOP thirty. Lock it in for less than six bucks a month. Committing raise here from Foxen, who's uh, fallen off a fair bit. <laughs> Event number 16 here had 1,240 entries. Jeff Platt made a deep run, finished in the top 50. Johnny Moreno. AKA Johnny Vibes finished in the top 50. Now Farrell finished 12th place in this one. Our guy, Romain Lewis, finished in 19th place. A lot of deep runs by some notable players in this one. Down to the final five. Each player has locked up $133,000 with more than 558K up top and to the champion. And of course, you cannot forget about that coveted pristine, beautiful gold bracelet. David Mishikowski is in line for his second WCP gold bracelet, and the other four players are all going for their first ever. Blinds right now 200,000 to 400,000 with a 400,000 big blind ante. Short stack, Toby Boas in the big blind right now, has to throw out 800K total. Looks like he's got about 4 million in his stack total behind. Current chip leader with five left is Nathan Russler. You see him in the upper left quadrant, seat one, white and blue hat with a black t-shirt. <coughs> Pile raise. of chips in front of him. Comes in here with a raise. 800,000 to go. A min raise. Alex Fox in the small blind, takes a look at his cards. Takes a look at Toby Boas' stack. Eyes Russler, the original raiser. Remco throws his headphones back on because he knows something might be coming. Yeah, I'm ready now. <laughs> I'm done with my almond break. I'm 
putting the, the top on these. Yeah, please. I mean, we, we need a break. We need an almond break. You brought your own cooler. I did bring my own cooler. Hey, I didn't bring my food in here. Shove here from Alex Foxen. Toby Boas hasn't acted yet. Asking for a count on Alex Fox. I think he said six million seventy-five thousand. Six million seventy-five thousand. Spot on. So judging by what we see here, he should have Boas covered by about two million, maybe one point five million or so. Of course, Rustler still left to act behind as the original razor on the pot. Wow, but call. Boas does make the call. Calls all in for his tournament live. We can see a three-way all in here. Rustler he does not up. make the call. Ace jack for Alex Foxen. And is that pocket tens for Boas, two black tens? Yes, it is. All right, coin flip situation here for Alex Foxen to stay in the tournament, chasing his first ever World Series of Poker bracelet. He's going to need some help, an ace or a jack or a straight or a flush. It is all still possible. Let's see the flop. Queen, eight, six. Running cards for a straight are needed or an ace or a jack. Nine on the turn. Jack is dead. Four on the river. And Alex Foxen has been eliminated. Oh, sorry. I was too, way too over my head here. <laughs> Toby Boas doubles up. For a second, I thought that Foxen was at risk there. 4,300,000. Alex Foxen should have 1.7 million behind. Wow. 1.7 million and in, in change. 1.775. Alex Foxen not out of it yet, but what's that? Four and a half big yeah, blinds I mean, left in his at, stack. I at, mean. at this stage, I don't even feel like apologizing for thinking that Foxen was at <laughs> risk because he basically was at risk. This was his bracelet. This was his hand. If he wins this hand, he is in strong contention, and we're down to four, and now he's going to need a massive, massive comeback to stay into this tournament. Toby Boas, man, he's been fighting all day long. Came in with ten big blinds. He's been battling the short stack all day. Now is finally up to more than 20 bigs in his stack, thanks to those two pocket tens holding up against Alex Foxen. Praise. You might hear some announcements in the background. We are sitting inside the Bally's Ballroom, not too far from where the final table is taking place. Calling the action in real time. No delays, no hole cards. Foxen, of course, in a very, very tough situation right now. Good thing for him, though, on the button, giving himself at least two more hands to figure it out. Power of the Pineapple says EDK must play. That is right. The Pineapple shirt, Toby Boas. Pineapple power, baby. I could use some pineapple juice right now. That would, that would hit the spot. A little, uh, Pineapple margarita. Yeah, and why not? S spicy pineapple margarita. I'm all for it. Foxen gives it up. Everyone will be eyeing Foxen right now, so maybe Boas will try to take advantage and steal the blinds here as the players might be just waiting for Foxen to be all in for his tournament life. Of course, everyone at this table would be happy to see Foxen go as two-time GPI Player Raised of the Year winner. Race to 900. Leonard gives it up right away. Rustler inquiring about Boas' stack. Sebastian Lewin, you don't have to watch. We're trying to just give you some extra bonus coverage. Just for the fans, baby. For the fans. Tomorrow, full on broadcast on pokego.com of the 25k PLO high roller. Negrano and Josh Arie still chasing that final table. Updates on WSCP.com if you want to go check them out. Right. Ooh, here's a three bet. Rustler sensed what Boas was doing and came in with the 
three bet there, flashing what I believe looked like 7 4 offsuit. Applying the pressure. Rustler is feeling it as Alex Foxen is one hand away from basically being all in here. Let us know in the chat are you rooting for a Foxen spin up or are you hoping to see him go? Let us know in the chat right now. Foxen under the gun right now. Gives it up, meaning he will be posting the big blind and the big blind ante on the very next hand. Donnie, I wonder if you can even fold. Having a fold from the big blind? Yeah. I mean. It's going to need quite the situation for him to do that, I would guess. Definitely good to know the chip counts, and you can do the math fairly easily here. Black chips are worth 500k, the blue ones are 100, and the green ones are 25k. Action on Rustler in the small blind right now. Hey. Rustler is definitely not slowing down one bit. This could become a mind game, Donnie, when you know that you have a very short player at the table, but Misikowski is going to let it go, and that means that we're going to be seeing what's very likely to be an all-in showdown here is Foxen is going to post the big blind Annie and the big blind off a stack that is basically, what, four big blinds, Donnie? Yeah, just about four big blinds here. Has to put off 400k for the big blind, 400k for the big blind Annie. Comebacks are fun to watch, Iron Monkey says. Jeff Blatt in the house, hoping for the spin-up for his fantasy team. Looks like Foxen has about a million behind. Yeah, against you guys, yeah, absolutely. You're I really feel that way, I strongly do. I'm incredibly uh, outmatched against you guys. You're gonna play 4-5, you might as well just play 1. Russler gives it up. To nine and you made it nine, so I was like, yeah. Yeah. Well, puts like, like, Foxen all like, in. He makes the call. Right. We got a showdown here. Call. Foxen at risk now. I have diamonds on diamonds, it looks like. Or King no. eight offsuit for Foxen. He's going to need help to stay alive against the A6 suited yeah, of Mizikowski. Fair, fair fight with it being all the cards live. Exactly. Queen 6-3 on the flop. King or an 8 needed for Foxen here to stay alive. Ace on the turn. That's going to do it. Alex Foxen has been yeah. eliminated in fifth place, taking home $133,300 as David Misikowski rakes in the pot. Round of applause for Foxen, the two-time GBI player of the year. Yeah. He's out. He's gone. We are down to the final four as the remaining players are guaranteed. $180,000. And this is anyone's game, Donnie. This is anyone's game. Once again, let me remind you, Toby Boas came to the final table with 10 big blinds. Nice. And here he is, four-handed. Let's try to have a look at these chip counts. Rustler's stack is harder and harder to count here with all the towers that he's building. Let's just do some reverse math here, trying to figure it out based on the chips in play. Looks like about 8.5 million for Boas. Six point eight million for Leonard. No, I've never had 17 million of anything in my life, so it's kind of cool. My friend is, for sure. <laughs> About 7.7 for Misikowski. Ray. I mean, Rustler has an incredible chip lead. Or am I missing something here? Sorry? How much do you play? Am I playing? Yeah. 
Well, I got counted four times and I forgot. That's fine. Looks like 25 million to me. 15, 16, 17, 18 million? <laughs> Between five and 15 million. Yeah, somewhere in there. No, I'm, I missed a few black chips on Leonard's stack. Leonard's got about 9.5. Hands up. <laughs> Two players. Eight point five for Boas. Check. Nine point six. Yeah, ten million for Mishikowski. And then the rest for Rustler. Still close to twenty million, yeah. according to our recent math here. <laughs> we all know math is idiotic. Come on, man. Michael well, Russler takes even more chips, <laughs> winning that pot. So. Michael White said, "I can get behind pineapple guy. I think so too. I mean, you got to something to root for the guy in the best shirt." <laughs> Sarah says, no dollar sign. It could be Skittles. It definitely could be. Black. Alex Fox, I might get a bunch of Skittles. Boaz from the win coming from 10 big blinds would be pretty incredible. By the way, we are only 85 YouTube subscribers away from hitting 273,000, and that means an annual Pokego sub giveaway. Hey. So don't go anywhere, even if you are an Alex Fox and fan. Plenty of reason to stick around here as we will bring you coverage until the end of this final table. Two players. James is asking. Bagged day two in the monster stack yesterday. Any advice for someone on their first day two? James, win. Just play your game. Check. Don't do anything crazy. Let the cards come to you. Don't get out of line. Whatever you did on day one, yep. <laughs> repeat it on day two. Exactly. Put chips in the bag. Listen, you put chips in the bag every night. You're on your way to a pretty big score. Jack Deuce Deuce Queen on this board. Hand between. Rustler and Mikowski. Check. The Pineapple Express, he's picking up some fans in the chat. You gotta love it. Check. Hope Jones said Jonathan Duhamel was down to 15 big blinds the year he won the main. Well, Greg Merson, I think, was down to three big blinds? I think so, yeah. In the main? Anything is possible. Check, check. Jack that Strauss, crazy. chip in a chair way back in the day. I mean, come on. Yeah. Anything can happen. It's poker. True. Dealer change. Y'all want to switch to Omaha? <laughs> oh, wow. Changing games. I like it. <laughs> Leonard says it's fine for me. Five card? Wow. Six card. Yeah, I'm just kidding, dude. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Careful, uh, careful what you wish for. <laughs> Miss Kowski. Len Len Leonard snapped it off yeah. over there. <laughs> and he added yeah, a card. Yeah, sure. Let's go. What, five card, six card? Yeah, whatever you want. Double board? My weekly Austrian home game, uh, we only play PLO. Yeah, we play seven card PLO. No qualifiers. Could you imagine seven card PLO? That's such a that's such a mess. How can you ever fold? You can't. Pete said, look at Bieber. Definitely channeling some early 2000s pop star type haircut. I wonder how it stays that way. All in. All in here from Toby Boas. 8.5. He says it's 8.5 million. Rustler quickly folds and Which means so it's a 21 big blind shows. 
We still got some play now that we're down the four-handed. Yeah, we still do have some play. A blind increase shouldn't be too far away. Playing 200,000, 400,000 with a 400,000 big blind ante right now. here under the gun from Leonard 800,000 to go Mishikowski in the small blind looks interested looks very focused all of a sudden yep <laughs> Rustler is having the time of his life by the way Mishikowski moves all in. Double check on the cards here. Did he ask for a count? I think he asked for a count. Gives him up. A lot more aggression all of a sudden, Donnie, now that we're four-handed. Yeah, I mean, there was kind of some awkward spots there where there was a little bit of a shorter stack at the table. Of course, you know, after Alex Boxing lost that that big hand to Boas. He was severely short stacked now. That only lasted, you know, a few hands. But now that uh, now that Boas has chipped up a bit and kind of got himself very much back in the mix here, with more than 20 bigs in his stack, yeah, there's a little bit more play. These guys have some decent uh, three bet shove stacks, and then of course you have. Nathan Rustler <laughs> over there with the mountain of <laughs> chips as the chip leader. Nathan Rustler, Nathan Rustler claimed not too long ago that it'll be very hard to stop me. I mean, so far he's proven that. He also said that he was severely outmatched. About yes. You know, five or ten minutes after that. So, <laughs> I guess he's balancing his range. Yeah, he's both <laughs> unstoppable and intimidated at the same time. <laughs> I love it. You gotta let them know you're confident, but then you also gotta let them know that you respect their games. You know, you get Russell here opening up the action with a raise to 800,000 from under the gun. Mishikowski folds on the button. Boas is in the small blind. Action is on him right now. Giving it some thought. Four million. Four million. Committing half his chips to the pot. Leonard quickly gets out of the way. Boas has done this before where he. Boas lets Rustler know how many chips he's playing total. And now it's pretty much up to Rustler if he wants to get it all in or not. Rustler saying that he's outmatched might make him more inclined to gamble when he's presented with an opportunity. All in and a call. Here we go. Big showdown here. Pocket, Pocket five. fives for Boas against the Queens of Nathan Rustler, wow. who is in a commanding position right now to take this tournament down to three handed play. Ladies and gentlemen, wow. We have a huge all in here. Wow, wow, wow. About 4.4 .4 million for Boas, who started the final table with only 10 big blinds. Let's see the flop here. Ace, king, ace. Oh. Five on the turn. Oh, oh. my god. Ace Boas. Or, ace or queen. Ace or queen to knock him out. 10 on the river. And Toby Boas doubles up. Oh my god, what are we seeing here? Wow. Boas says he's all in for 8.7 million. That'll give him 17 point, or 18 million, when you include the small blind and. 8.7. Wow. Yes, sir. I think he's got 18.4 million now. 
which moves him into the chip lead, right? I think it does. Wow, what a hand. What, what a turn. Jeez. Looks as though Toby Boas is doing the unthinkable. Coming in as a short stack and now taking over the chip lead. Pineapple Power in the house. The Pineapple Express is running over this table, getting lucky on the turn. It's going to be interesting to see how Rustler reacts. He gave a little bit of an extended pause there, standing behind the table. Likely thinking about what could have been had his queens held up. But he still has he still has plenty of chips to play with. You know, certainly not in the danger zone, so to speak. He is bunched in now with Mishikoski and Leonard. But we'll see how it goes. Show us your pineapples in the chat, okay, ladies I mean, and gentlemen. Show us your pineapple <laughs> man, Toby Boas. What became a chat favorite. Now he spikes that five. Five pineapples in the chat for me. Toby Boas. We're here for the excitement. That was certainly exciting. Rustler still sitting on a large stack, but he had to hand over a lot of those black chips to pay off this double up. Of course, Mistakowski and Leonard are not going to be happy at all with this development as that it was a massive $68,000 pay jump looming for the remaining three. Wow. Lots of angry people in the chat. Angry? I thought they liked the pineapple guy. Sarah Jones with the angry faces. She must be a big fan of Nathan Rustler. Bunches. 70 subs away from hitting 273,000, which means we're giving away a free annual PokerGo sub. Donnie is trying to find the pineapple t-shirt. Did you find it? I think it's this one. Raise. Leonard with the raise here on the button. I wonder if Rustler is going to be affected by this big all-in and whether he's going to play back aggressively. To make something happen. I believe it's this pastel pineapple unisex crew t-shirt <laughs> from electrothreads.com. How much does it cost? 35 bucks. Wow. I might buy that. You want to know what else is crazy? <laughs> they have they got matching joggers. Oh, wow. You can get the whole outfit. Pine Head to toe. Pineapple pants. That's hilarious. We must be getting close to... The blinds going up, if my math is correct, perhaps in the next five minutes. Donnie, we're playing 200, 400 with the 400K Andy. I'm assuming we're going to go to 255 after that. I don't know if we'll go to 255, only because they've started to shift the green chips over to Rustler, which would tell me that they're anticipating a color up. Yep. So I'm wondering if they're going to jump just straight to 3-6. Wow, that'd be a huge I mean, it'd jump. be a big jump. Ace 6-6 six, six on this flop with two spades. Rustler checks to Leonard, who bets 400K. Small bet, small stab. Sometimes it's enough. I'll tell you what I can do is I can look up the structure sheet. Oh. We do have the internet here. Galaxy brain Donnie Peters over here. I mean, I was, I was deep in the electrothreads.com. Rustler, Rustler makes the call to the turn we go. Eight of spades completes a possible flush draw. If you just structure C says 255 is next. Maybe they just want some of those greens off the table. Check, check. King of diamonds to complete the board. Yeah. 
action on Rustler. He checks. Leonard checks behind right away. Showdown. Pull him in, dealer. Show us the cards. Chop. Chop. Chop it up. Looks like both players have a king, along with the pair of sixes and the ace. Have some news from the uh, from the tournament room. Thanks. Benny Glazer has been eliminated in the $1,500 triple draw event. In sixth place, falling a few spots short of his fifth WSOP gold bracelet, but he does pick up just about $15,000 in prize money. Nice one. <laughs> Over in the 25K PLO high roller, Noah Schwartz just eliminated times, so, yeah. in 22nd yeah, yeah. place, yeah. picking up $50,000. You learned a few. <laughs> Before you that, Stephen Hubbard doubled through Daniel Negreanu. Negreanu still with more than a million chips. Scott Ball, Ben Lamb, and Jonathan Deppa are the three chip leaders in that tournament with 20 players left. Very, very close in chips. David Williams, Jared Blesnick, Josh Arie, Daniel Negreanu, Chance Corneth also still remain. Again, that event is going to be live streamed on Poker Go tomorrow starting at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific Time. More than $1.4 million up top to the winner. All the bells and whistles of the main Poker Go stream will be coming at you with that one. Should be a fun one. Tons of prize money up for grabs. We'll see if we can get Daniel Negreanu to his first WSB final table of the summer. Ali Najad will be on the call. Looks like Clayton Fletcher will be alongside of him. Grace. break here after this hand is over and there it is pop being pushed over to Nathan Rustler don't say that 15 minute break for the final four thank you for everyone tuning in to the live stream just about 65 YouTube subscribers away from that annual sub giveaway Jeff Platt if you're in the house and you want to come hang out with us for a minute Always more than happy to have you on the show. Foxen lost a big coin flip. Ace Jack versus tens. That cost him most of his chips. A little quick break here for the players as we're still hanging out with you guys here. We're a little over four hours into this final table. We're coming back with a 250K, 500K stream. And it looks as though they're racing off the green chips. Or perhaps just racing off chips in general. Matt Savage must have called in. Yeah, must have been upset about <laughs> Must have been upset Too about many the chips on the yeah. table. Too many stacks. <laughs> what are you guys doing? Shout out, Matt Savage. Love you, buddy.
We have some updated chip counts for you. Straight from the floor, thanks to Tim Duckworth. Nathan Russler, 14.775 million. David Mishikowski, 9.25 million. Toby Boas, 17.2 million. And in the chip lead. And then Stefan Lenner, the shortest stack with 8.3 million, but not that far behind Mishikowski. Again, these are the final four players. Well, there's no players at the table right now, but final four of event number 16, $3,000 No Limit Hold'em players are on a 15 minute break. Probably about 12 minutes or so left. My name is Donnie Peters. I'm joined alongside by the chip eating phenom himself, Remco Rinkima. Crushing a bag of chips over there, trying to stay fueled up for the journey. It's the latest WSOP gold bracelet here at the 2022 World Series of Poker. More than 558K up top for the winner. If you guys are sticking around on break in the chat, feel free to drop a question or so or two in, for us in the chat. We will answer anything you guys want or most things <laughs> that you guys want. A little bit of an AMA. I think I need to get on that Jeff Platt One protein bar routine. And yes, Jeff, there are three headsets here, so you get more, more than happy to pull up a chair. Do you think he could find us if we didn't tell, if we didn't tell him? <laughs> no. <laughs> if you don't know where we are, you're just impossible to find us. <laughs> This is a bonus stream, by the way. This is not something you paid for, because it's on YouTube. Tomorrow, 25K PLO High Roller Final Table stream. That's going to be on the main channel, of course, with whole cards and all the bells and whistles. Hope you're enjoying our little bit of uh, extra coverage of the 2022 World Series of Poker. By the way, main event, the big one, still to come. I'd say if I think back of all the pay-per-views I've paid for in my life and what those cost for one night of action and then thinking about the World Series Boker main event which is I want to say 10 or 11 straight days mm -hmm. of action well worth the subscription the main event alone is worth it in my opinion <laughs> most pay-per-views cost what? oh you don't have the most? No. Bucks? yeah I think so more? I don't even know what they are these days is there two more levels with the, t the, with the green? Yeah. Okay. all I know is that I subscribe to ESPN Plus they make me pay six bucks a month, and then pay-per-view is on top of it. Yeah, that's, that's silly. <laughs> you know. At least we're not out here doing that. Two, four, yeah. five, six, but if you seven, use that promo code, yes. get WSP30, yes. less than six bucks a month yeah. for Poker Go. Right. I mean, that's less than a Starbucks coffee a month. Yes. Okay. It's a great deal. Ten million. Can we get a Poker News Podcast throwback episode? Maybe. Maybe, Maybe we can make it happen. I mean, if be Rich Ryan comes to Vegas? I think he might be coming to Vegas. Oh. At some point. So uh, like if that. he does, we'll have to dust off uh, a third or fourth yeah, microphone and fire that one up. Maybe we can get old Jay Carver, old Jason Somerville in the building yeah, as well, have him join us. We have four microphones. So. Well, then wow, let's, let's really? go. Make it happen. That's what's happening with placards. Remco, did you also buy your shirt at Electro Threads? I think I think they're referring to the shirt that you're wearing oh. in the photo there. It looks yeah, kind of similar the to the I pineapple shirt. I know. That is my sweater like from uh, Scotch and Soda, in case you guys have heard of that brand. They got a lot of cool stuff. I've they seen really them. Cool. They do look really cool. They are sweet looking. They do look really cool. Remco bikes to stay in shape. Yes, he does. Well, I really no tinder during WSOP for Jeff Platt. I really bike so I can just gorge myself on chocolate covered yeah. almonds and chips all day. Work out to eat, right? That's Unbe a, unbelievable. Little known fact about me, I met my wife on Tinder. So Jeff, there is still hope for you out there. Yeah, it Jeff. happens. There is still hope. Let me tell you a little secret about how I approached Tinder back in the day. <laughs> it was basically swipe right on everyone. Wouldn't even look. You just hold my phone and just constantly swipe right. Might be having a conversation with someone, my phone off to the side, just swipe, swipe, swipe. Oh yeah. And then I would see if they if I matched with people and then I would go from there. Right. You know, just 
cast the net as wide as possible. How, much, how many matches a day? I, you? I, two I, I think I think Jeff I Platt spends airport, 11 minutes per profile to, to analyze whether he should match with them, and, they have, they and then he may or may not. Yeah, but you don't even know if you're going to match with them, so no, why go through all that work he, first? I know Jeff Platt. He's a picky guy. You can be I, picky afterwards because yeah. you can easily just like block them or whatever or take them off. Wow, that's so heartbreaking though. I mean, whatever, man. There's plenty of rejection in this world if you can't deal with rejection. I don't know what to tell you. 60, 60 YouTube subs away from. You don't be playing with me like that. <laughs> oh, this is a poor strategy. Dude, Jeff does here. super likes. How much money? I don't. I don't know what. So I was in the Tinder game. I like got in and out of the Tinder game, <laughs> like when it was that, early on. So right. I have no idea what a super like is. I, I don't even know what, what, what Tinder probably do. is anymore. Yeah, yeah I probably yeah. go on there. I mean, now people are talking like about. I, I think everyone progressed to Bumble now that like everyone's moved on to different things. You never know. But uh, you never yeah, know, I met bro. my wife on Tinder. We had a date. We went and talked. Bro, uh, met me. at a bar here in Las Vegas. Got here. some drinks, and we hung out for like four hours. Wow. Just hit it off, and that was that. Now you know. Now I'm hooked, and it's, it's game over for me. What am I gonna do? We got a kid. Yeah. A couple dogs. A house. Unbelievable. You know. Locked in. I'm just. I'm old fashioned. I'm just a regular family guy now, I guess. I was spot on with Jeff's tanking. I, I'm not surprised. I am not surprised. Frank Verdonk says the coverage is great. Frank from Brussels. Jeff? Thanks for tuning in from Brussels. Getting late up there. <laughs> Jeff said I was in there pre Super Likes. I have no idea what a Super Like is. <laughs> No idea. <laughs> KO says, met my wife on OkCupid. Okay there you go. That was like before Tinder, right? Like, or does it still I exist? So. I, I don't even know. I wonder. Either way. One thanks. of the best things that anyone can do that is on a dating app, in my opinion, Tinder included, is... Open button. your profile Jeez. and give your phone to a friend and let them do it for you because huh. they will they will probably be a little bit more aggressive than you would you know just in terms of like willingness to open up have a conversation ask questions be inviting etc let them basically set up a blind date for you in a way wow and then you go So glad I never. Is used Hinge the new Tinder? I don't even know what Hinge is. I, I don't know what any of these apps are anymore. The only app that I know now is is I think it's called the Tadpoles app, which is like the app that my daughter's mm. school like sends us updates on. <laughs> and then wow, what's the what's the what's the community one? Is it next door? Oh my god, that's the worst. That's the one I know. Yeah, it is the worst, but that, that's that's where my life is now gone. Sweating updates on next door. About somebody complaining about somebody's you know, bush in their front yard or, or some crap. I've I've learned one thing from living in the US is that if any person walks through any street, people will think someone's getting robbed or stabbed. Oh my gosh. It's yeah. I saw a guy. I saw a guy walk through our street. Oh my God! Should we call the police? Yeah. Unbelievable. He looked suspect. He was wearing a hoodie. Yeah. Shut yeah. Up. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. The the neighborhood next door stuff. The uh, it's the worst. The Facebook groups are just out of control. Out of control. I mean, it's just. I'll tell you a funny people story. People just basically people just here's here's the the, the biggest rule uh, biggest advice I can give people. Mind your own damn business. I have a <laughs> That's I all have, you got to do. <laughs> I have the funniest story. So a neighbor a few houses over has two young kids, and they have, I mean, young. They're, they're like probably seven and nine, two, two boys. They're playing basketball in the yard all the time, <laughs> right? So This is going to be great. At, at some point, their, their neighbor, um, the house sort of kitty corner to their house, so they're not even the direct back neighbor, Posts in the Facebook group and said something like, I would highly appreciate it if children were not out playing past 9 p.m. It's hot in Vegas, right? You, if the kids are out at night, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. It's also Vegas when people are just up late naturally. Exactly. Anyway, 
A back and forth ensues in the comments, and of course, the the person in question, the the, the parent of the of the two kids, immediately sort of suspects that it's about his kids playing basketball, and basically said, "Hey, man, if you have a problem, just come to my house, and we can just like talk about it, or or whatever. <laughs> you don't have to put it out there, sort of like you know, subtweeting the whole neighborhood." And then and then the guy goes, um, "I am almost blind and hard of hearing." But I just wanted to address this. I'm like, hold on. <laughs> you, you, you can't see and you're deaf, but the basketball playing kids are a big bother to you. I mean, when my when my sliding doors closed, you could be screaming on the other side like Ace Ventura style, and I wouldn't even hear much. So I don't know what's going on. Anyway, it I is, hate it. It is pretty. It is pretty wild. I hate it. Every time someone someone shoots off a firework in my neighborhood, it's it's you know nineteen thousand messages about oh my god gunshots gunshots. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah yeah. No, it's Fourth of July and <laughs> people are blowing off fireworks. Okay, <laughs> like chill out. Incredible. Alex says I met my wife on Bumble in twenty seventeen. Congrats, man. Jeffrey says next door is straight up seven deuce off. Yes. Yes, it is <laughs> the absolute worst. I don't have the app. We just have a Facebook group for our. I don't community. have the next door app, but I think my wife does, and she she tunes in and reads me the updates. And then the Facebook stuff is just. I mean, the the people that they just come up with stuff on there. It's just complaining about people speeding, possibly running stop signs. It's this and that. It's like, I mean. <laughs> There's no money in poker commentating. Just chocolate covered almonds and diet cooks. That's right. All right, we're about to resume yeah, action. Toby Boas, the chip leader, is ready to battle. I couldn't believe it. I thought you could believe it. We knew it was coming. We knew it was coming. Absolutely. Toby's the man. Toby is the man. He's got some fans on the rail. Team Pineapple That's Express. It was. All right. We got two million, four million. Four. Once more, the chip counts. Nathan Russell in the one seat, sitting on 14.75 million. David Miskowski on 9.2 million. Toby Boas, our current chip leader, 17.2. And Stefan Leonard, 8.3 million. Donation from Not Sure, $5. He says, three almonds on me. We might use that five dollars for coffees, but we do appreciate it. Thank you so much for the donation. Is there a reason why the ground keeps shaking? Do you I I feel it too. I don't know. <laughs> I, I hope it's. Uh, I hope we're okay up here. Like I'm, I'm, I've been thinking if I'm crazy or not, but no, you're not crazy. I feel it too. The ground has definitely been shaking. Yeah. It's a, they it's basically a, have us in the attic up here. Yes. Toby Boas is ready to fire. There's Leonard coming back. Miskowski and <laughs> Rustler also getting back to the table. <laughs> Let's keep an eye on these uh, events around the room that are still ongoing. 20 remaining. Some superstars still in the 25K PLO. They started with 264 players. Jonathan Depp are currently in the lead. Scott Ball in second place. Then Ben Lamb. Other players still remaining. Jared Blesnick, David Williams, Josh Arie. Sam Stein, Daniel Negreanu, Chance Cornet, and Aaron Mermelstein. Wow, stacked field with 20 left. It would be awesome to see Negreanu at the final table tomorrow, which would be on Poker Go. Get WSOP30 is the promo code to take $30 off the annual subscription if you're new to Poker Go. <laughs> Thomas Shepard is, what's your go-to order, Remco and Donnie? My go-to order depends on the time of day. I start out with the black coffee, mostly. Just uh, French press or arrow press when I make it at home. And then in the afternoon, I'd like to have a cortado with oat milk. So a little, little bougie there, but hey, I like what I like. So bougie. You say cortado, I immediately want to leave the room. I think I'm underdressed. <laughs> I mean, I'm wearing, I'm wearing pink sweat shorts. Yeah, but those look expensive. No, they're not. On the t-shirts G-Star, how much does that cost? Well, not much anymore because I got coffee all over it. I'm a, I'm a huge clearance sale shopper, by the way. Always find the sales. Donnie, by the way, broke out. Donnie brings, like, all the food. What am I going to do? Is this the Shobani no, sh no sugar? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sugar. Costco. That's right. I got the same ones. 45 subs away from a free annual subscription giveaway to Poker Go on our YouTube channel. 45 more subscriptions on our YouTube channel, and we will give away an annual Poker Go sub. A thousand likes for the merch giveaway. We're quite far off, but we can do it. Smash like if you enjoy the content. When we hit a thousand likes, we're giving away a free piece of Poker Go merch. We can do one more high stakes poker Mount Rushmore shirt as we have a race to a million from Leonard. Rustler gives it up. Action on Miskowski. <laughs> Leonard takes it down. Dana says, Folgers Classic on bolt setting in this house. Wow. <laughs> Dana, I, I only get Folgers when I have a lot of family visiting because we go through so much coffee. But over the years, I've become a bit of a coffee snob. I only get whole bean. I got my burr grinder. Measure the coffee by the gram before I make my French press or my arrow press. I can highly recommend it. Very I mean, you nice definitely flavor. definitely have to get full bean for sure. Yeah. It's because it just keeps the flavor within the coffee. It keeps it more fresh. Once you grind it, things start to get the, released. The bursting with aromas. If you're just tuning in, this is four-handed play at the Event 16 final table of the 3K No Limit Hold'em. Remaining players are guaranteed $180,000, playing for that top prize of $558,000. Action on Toby Boas in the small blind. Comes in for a raise to 1.5, uh, 1.65 million. Blinds now up to 250K, 500K with the 500K big blind Annie. Bursting with aromas. Love saying that. Let us know how you like your coffee in the chat. Please enlighten us. Leonard makes the call. We got a pot here over 3.2 million, 3.3 with those, with the big blind Annie already made. 3.6 million in the middle, Donnie. We can see some fireworks here. A3, 7, rainbow flop. Pretty dry. By the way, if you want to try out some whole beans, if you live in the U.S., Sprouts always has, no matter where you live, some local roasters for sale, whole bean. If you're in Vegas, I think uh, Mothership has some coffee at Sprouts, and so does Dam Roast House. Is Sprouts national? I have no idea. Neither do I. I'm so... Like, I, I have no clue. <laughs> you only know Vegas? Yeah, I only know Vegas. <laughs> Easy Win says, I use Folgers Classic mixed with Folgers Gourmet Supreme. Gourmet Supreme sounds like super high roller bowl. Like, it's like you're trying to just up the, up the stakes a little bit. Gourmet Supreme. We should we should or organize a poker tournament and call it the Gourmet Supreme High Roller. Right. <laughs> Donnie is choking on his yogurt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Moskowski raises to a million. Two black chips worth 500k each. Toby Boas. I get the sense that Toby Boas is extremely well versed in the push fold three bet jam area of poker tournaments. Just given the way that he's played, much of this final table, now obviously sizing up Mishikowski's chip stack, even though Boas does have a pretty big chip lead. You know, he's, he's mostly playing effectively with... The All in, here we go. Boas applying the pressure. He is the chip leader. Miskowski gives it up right away, and Boas increases his chip lead. 
He's been putting on a bit of a quiet clinic here today. If you've been with us from the start, you know that he was the one starting off with only 10 big blinds. Alex Foxen eliminated in fifth place. He, of course, the headliner of this final table. On the Dale Laney says, Seattle's best bistro number five rocks this house. Never even seen that before. Columbia blend for Rob Shoemate. Fresh ground, just black from BRCC and a French press for Robert Cole. Oh, we, got some, we got some coffee aficionados here in the chat. Grateful House. Dark coffee. I would not expect anything else from you, my friend. Pete comes in with the information. He says Sprouts is national. I think Sprouts is my favorite grocery store. Yeah, I mean, it's really good. Sprouts and Costco. That's that's my combo. I do Sprouts, Costco, and Trader Joe's. Nice. I've never, I've, I've maybe once or twice been to Trader Joe's. I love Trader Joe's. What do I get there? Whatever you want. Raise from Leonard here to a million under the gun. It's the cheaper version of Whole Foods, although they don't have a lot of like the fresh meats and stuff that Whole Foods has, but like, I usually go to Trader Joe's to get um, like vegetables and that sort of thing, like, you know, stuff that's in, that's for the freezer or whatnot. But I can get that same sort of stuff at, at Sprouts. Boaz defends the big blind. 2.5 million in the middle as we see Ace, three Jack with two hearts as someone just fell off a chair from the sounds of it. Rocket Box, Poker Nose, Sprouts, Costco, Trader Joe's. That's right. Let us know. Let me let me know in the chat. What's your favorite thing to get at Trader Joe's? I'll I'll go there this weekend. I mean, the best thing that Trader Joe's has is. Well, let me let me guess what you're gonna say. Tortilla chips or something? No. Um, <laughs> Seven hundred is the bet, and that's enough. Leonard takes it down. We don't miss a beat, ladies and gentlemen. We don't miss a beat. We can talk all the nonsense we want, and then still keep an eye on the poker action. So there are two things that I really like at Trader Joe's. I'm trying to find what one of them is called. <laughs> Illy Mac says, for WSB circuit events, how long ahead of time do they release the schedule of events, like a month out? I think usually a bit further out, but I would just keep an eye on WSB.com. We are not affiliated with the WSB circuit, so I couldn't really give you a good good answer on that. Rustler is counting down his stack. Blind's still at 250k, 500k. All in is the move. Miskowski all in here. Picks up the blinds and nannies. So Trader Joe's, two things. One is they have they have their own wine. Oh. Platinum Reserve is what it's called. But I believe it's from a really nice winery and then just rebranded to Trader Joe's. Extremely good. I think it's like 15 to 20 bucks a bottle for like the Cab Sav. And then they also have this stuff often that is called cookie butter. Oh. Not healthy, but effing amazing. Absolutely wow. amazing. Cookie butter. It's so good. It looks like in, it's in the jar, like a peanut butter type of jar. It kind of looks like it would resemble peanut butter. And it is so, so, so good. All in here from David Mishikowski from Under the Gun. Action is on Stefan Lenner in the small blind. He looks interested. 
Rocket Box is asking no no cards up today. No, this is bonus coverage. We just found a good table. We turned it on. Card down, baby. Yep. Challenge your mind. Figure it out with us. Leonard gives it up. Rustler tosses him, and Miskowski picks it up again. Tim Ducker said, now I'm hungry. Thanks, Donnie. That's right. Let's go. Pineapple pizza. Stop making me hungry. Please don't ever put pineapple on pizza. Pineapple belongs on t-shirts, and that's it. Also, they're mashed cauliflower. Yes. A lot of good, uh, a lot of good healthy vegetable options at Trader Joe's. Basically a cheaper, more affordable version of Whole Foods, which is why I like it. I always say I want to be rich enough to shop at Whole Foods every single day. That's I and like not care about like the prices, you know. Yes. I mean, it's pricey at Whole Foods, but I mean, but the quality is also better, you know. So I need to like win the WSB main event or something, and then and then go on to just you know shop at Whole Foods. Get the grass-fed, grass-finished meats, all that sort of stuff, whatever it may be. Nice. <laughs> Mike says, I just signed on how many players left. Well, Mike, you're looking at it. Four, just four from a 1,240 entry field. In the upper left of the screen, you have in the white and blue hat with the black t-shirt, that is Nathan Rustler. Then you have David Mishikowski also in that screenshot. In the pineapple t-shirt in the upper right, you have Toby Boas. And then next to him is Stefan Lenner. Those are the final four players in this $3,000 No Limit Hold'em tournament here at the fabulous 2022 World Series of Poker. Guaranteed $180,000 each. Almost 560k to the winner in the coveted WSOP gold bracelet. You got it, Mike. You are very welcome. Thanks for joining. Thank you to everyone for tuning in out there and watching. Very much appreciate all of you tuning in as we grind through another fun final table here at WSP for a bonus coverage. I mean, 53 more subs on the channel on YouTube, and we will give away a free annual subscription to PokerGo. Yeah, so 53. If, you're, if you're listening and not subbed, w what you doing? All right, making a big mistake. By the way, 1,000 likes is what we have to hit in order to give away another piece of merch. So if you're in, in it with us here, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. Donnie and I are trying to do as many of these, almost like a rogue type stream. Like the lights are off on the main set. We just flip the switch, producer Brad gets it all set up and off we go. I really hope we get Ivy or Negranu on the secondary stream at some point on would, the bonus coverage. Would be incredible. It really would be. Action on Miskowski, who's looking at a million chip raise. I think he's considering shoving again. He's been all in a few times already. <laughs> oh. There he goes, indeed. Third time. Is it the charm? Rustler asked for a count.
8.35 is the all-in. Fourteen bigs. Big moment here. We could get down to three, but Rustler has to really be sure about his decision here because this is also for most of his chips. As I said, Rustler counting his own chips to make sure that he's not the one at risk. Looks like he has a ace-queen off type hand, but he kicks him into the muck. Donnie, are you calling there with ace-queen? Yes. What about ace-jack? Jack is close. Probably not. I might just open jam. Not allow the possibility that somebody jams behind you with a worse hand, I mean, like an ace-10 suited, for example. I mean, king-king suited maybe as well. But also there's hands like, I mean, let's say he opens with an ace-jack. Mishkowski decides to jam two eights. Well, if you open jam, do you get those eights to fold and you win the pot? You know, I mean, that's it's a 50 50 flip, so. in a call. Let's have a look here. Ace, ace, six on the board. 1.5 million in the middle. Action on Leonard. Five hundred K is the bet. Just one big blind. Rustler gives it up. Yeah, there it is. And we move on to the next hand. Still four-handed action. One hundred and eighty K guaranteed for the final four. I feel like Boas, Mr. Pineapple, still has the most fans. One million from our chip leader, Toby Boas. <coughs> Picks up the pot.
things are pretty quiet right now. The pace of play has definitely slowed down as we are down to four players. Race. Race to a million here by Rustler. Nathan Rustler was our troop leader for quite a while. And then had queens against the fives of Toby Boas, who spiked a five on the turn to double up and take the chip lead. <coughs> that hand could have taken us down to three-handed play, but here we are, still four-handed as David Misikowski is tanking. He is the start of the day chip leader. Oh. Boas started oh, the day as the short stack, and Misikowski is all in. Rustler. Once again, not looking too pleased. Oh, the action on Boas here. Oh, Saw so a similar okay. situation earlier where Boas ended up getting it all in against Alex Foxen with two tens. Anthony Pettit. We started about five hours ago with today's live stream. 9.550. 9.550 is the all-in from Misikowski. <coughs> Boas moves all-in over the top. Kings, he was, he was playing it slow to see if he could get more action. Kings for Boas, as Misikowski is all in with ace-queen offsuit. He needs an ace. Queen, nine, nine, now he needs a queen or an ace to double up. Nine on the turn, and a deuce on the river. David Misikowski has been eliminated, taking home $180,000 as Toby Boas Extends his chip lead, rakes in about 9 million chips, and look at that stack, Donnie. This guy's on a tear. He's crushing. The Pineapple King, as we like to call him. It's going to be a dead button. A 9 on the turn was actually a better card for uh, Mishikowski as he could have made quads with the ace kicker. Yeah, that would have been beautiful. Quads on board, you don't see it ever. But uh, Mishikowski falls in the quest of a second WCP gold bracelet, hitting the rail in fourth place for $180,000 in prize money. Three players left, guaranteed $248,000 in change. It looks like a $97,000 pay jump on the line next, and then of course that $558,000 first place prize up four grabs. It looks as though Nathan Rustler is sitting on 11.2 million chips, roughly Stefan Leonard on about 10 million, and Toby Boas on about 28 million. Wow. Per our latest estimation. So big chip lead for Toby Boas, but still anyone's game. More than 20 bigs for both short stacks. Final three are guaranteed $248,000. Incredible run up from Toby Boas here. Crushing. <laughs> My question is can we hit a thousand likes on this video? Come on, guys. I know everyone who's been here from the start has already liked it, but if you're new, if you're just tuning in, please smash that like button. When we hit a thousand, we're going to do another, another merch giveaway. on Leonard in the small blind. Meanwhile, 18 left in the 25K PLO. Daniel Legrand was still in there fighting, battling. What a, what a field, Donnie, what a field. So many so PLO legends 
Ben Lamb, Chance Corner, Jared Blesnick, Josh Arya Samstein. Right. Leonard gives this one up after what looked like a call. Three-handed play here in this 3K No Limit Thank event. <laughs> Thank you all for tuning in. Scott Graham, we zoom out from the flop because it's easiest for us to see the chips and the action from that higher up vantage point. We do zoom in whenever there is a flop out there. So far, this is working the best for us, but hey, this is bonus coverage. Now, this is like, this is like uh, our underground show. We might make some changes. We're still working on perhaps adding a camera or two. So far, so good, though. I hope you guys are enjoying the content. A little bit of extra here. Connor, if you're just tuning in, this is not PokerGo setup. If you've seen a, even a single clip on our YouTube channel, you know what the PokerGo content looks like. This is bonus coverage, just a little bit of extra. The usual content, of course, on PokerGo.com. And all our highlights clips on our YouTube channel are from our main streams. 11-2. My favorite hand of the WSOP so far. Sergio Ida versus Scott Seaver. Aces versus 4-3 offsuit. Go check it out. It is on our channel. All in here from Boas. Rustler with a limp and a fold. But yeah, if it wasn't for producer Brad, myself and Donnie, there would be no stream today. Here. The three of us are just hacking it. Having some fun with it. Hope you're enjoying it. Thank you. These three gentlemen are definitely having a good time. Mm -hmm. Who's Donnie? Who you? Who do you think would be the happiest now, or the most sort of satisfied, if they were to go out in third? Or are these guys all just so locked in on that top prize that you know they're, they're going to be, they're going to be gutted or you know at least disappointed, no matter what? Probably Leonard will be the happiest. You know, he, he's just been. I'd say out of these three, the quietest of the bunch. Boas, I would have said earlier that he would be the happiest, but now given his chip lead, I think he definitely sees at minimum a top two finish. And then Rustler, I mean, I, I think we heard a little bit about what his expectations are earlier when he gained that massive chip lead. I mean, he said to the table, you're not going to take this from me, basically. So I think he's... Hey. A confident player, but now if he ends up, you know, he lost that chip lead. He took a pretty bad beat when he did get it in with the queens <laughs> versus the fives of Boas. I mean, anytime you take a beat like that in the position on on a you know on a stage such as this final table, it just it, it stings a little bit more, cuts a little bit deeper, and you're just kind of left wondering what if. That said, you know, Rustler hasn't. Hasn't really blown up since then. You know, we've seen obviously many Good blow ups player. in the past at final tables, especially here at the World Series of Poker. One thing kind of goes wrong and people just have a meltdown. You know, Rustlers, he stayed tough. He's tried to fight back. 7-7 seven, seven, deuce on the flop there. Action here between Boas and Leonard. Boas raised before the flop, what looked like it looked like 1.5 million to me, but maybe it was just 1 million. It's hard to tell sometimes, of course, from this vantage point, but he continues here for 700,000. And yeah, the black chips are a little tricky, especially on the darker felt. But hey, we'll get there. <laughs> Leonard does call here. Okay, okay, got a little pop brewing. Rustler, Rustler not even paying that much attention, but this could have big implications for him as well. King of clubs on the turn. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate the shout out. I appreciate everyone. I love everyone. You're like, you're like Chad Ochocinco over I, here. I hope that we get to like play a, some kind of meetup game with everyone in the chat at some point. That'd be awesome. Meanwhile, 30 four subs away from the free annual sub giveaway. Angel Vu says, thank you for letting me watch my husband's final table. Angel, thank you so much for the shout. 
we're more than happy to do it. Who's your husband? Yeah, now I'm curious also. There you go, Toby. Toby wins another one. Six. Tomorrow we have the 25k PLO High Roller final table on Poker Go on the main channel. Right now that is down to 18. I believe they're going to play down to 5 tonight. Then we stream the final table tomorrow. That is, I mean, I'm just going to assume here, the biggest PLO High Roller we've ever seen at the World Series of Poker. 1.4 million for the winner. Absolutely insane. Massive. Absolutely massive. 10k 7 card stud, meanwhile, has a stacked field as well. 32 players remaining and guess who's in the top 10 guess who's in the top five actually to be more specific mr phil ivy angel vu says the pineapple king is her husband oh my god i love if it that's if that's true that's incredible baby oh, i love it i love it absolutely love to hear it angel you have to buy him the pineapple pants and we need a photo of you and him <laughs> in the full pineapple suit if he wins the bracelet today <coughs> send a tweet to us with the photo to us action on Leonard here on the button Mrs. Pineapple exactly that's awesome attention all dealers all dealers you should be at your seats at this time all dealers please take your seats at this time all floor bosses confirm that your section has a dealer in every right. table committing raise yes, here from Leonard on the button. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure this is true. Oh, all in. Here we go. All in and a call. The Pineapple Express against Stefan Leonard. <laughs> Lots of spades. King Jack of Spades versus King Jack Offsuit. Okay. It's a close battle. We can still see some heartbreak here as Spades would knock Leonard out of the tournament. Three to be exact. Jack 5-3. That to me looks like a chop pot. Seven of hearts on the turn, and a deuce of spades on the river. Action continues. <laughs> yeah, more cards, uh, five. More yeah. Oh my god, Double Angel Boo says, and I will dress our one-year-old like a pineapple. I mean, come on. Full-blown pineapple here. I love it. Pineapple Express. Chopping this pot, though. Moving on. In the blue, FX says, I hate watching poker, and I'm here. This is exciting, LOL. Thank you so much, In the Blue. Hopefully we can convert you to someone who loves the game of poker. It's a beautiful game. Nate Little invites us to his home game in Monterey. Thanks, Nate. I appreciate it. Twenty-seven subs away from the free annual sub giveaway. If you're Almost not subscribe, if you're not subscribing to our YouTube channel right now, I don't know. I don't know All what to tell you. All in here from Boas to apply pressure on both his opponents. Looks like. Uh, attention all players, you're more than welcome to start taking your seats at this time. You have a little over three minutes left in your break. Leonard has players, a little over ten big blinds remaining. If you are in 21B, if you have valleys, orange, late red, you're going to line up right back. Leonard inquiring how many chips Rustler has left. I mean, Leonard knows for sure he is the shortest stack, but he just wants to know by how much. If you are the short stack, sometimes you just have to go for it. You cannot wait for someone else to get eliminated for too long with these blinds and antis coming around faster and faster during three-handed play. We're playing 250k, 500k with a 500k big blind ante. Leonard right now has two, four, five, maybe 5.2, 5.3 million. So just over 10 big blinds left for Leonard. He could still fold and get some shoves through, but if he has a hand that he's willing to battle with against Boas, who just put him all in, then this might be a good chance for him. But he does let it go. He's thirsty. thirsty. Couldn't wait. <laughs> <laughs> you got an hour and a half till you can 
Looks like we have an Amber Boas in the chat saying, you got this, Toby. Big one. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> Can't really run for strategic yeah, water drink. Drink. Approaching 273,000 YouTube subs and 1,000 likes. We can, hit it, we can hit it all at the same time. It's very possible. Yeah, we go in like the two-minute tank for your button on the brake section, right? Yeah, and then miss the button. Yeah. I'm the brake. I'm the brake. What was he doing? <laughs> What's he doing? Bob Black? Oh. You have to have the... And you double that. Yeah, wait for it. I feel yeah. like we should encourage players that make the WSP final tables to wear shirts with fruits on it. <laughs> it's working for Toby. Action here between Rustler and Boas. Rustler checked the flop. Boas bets one big blind, 500k. That's enough to pick it up. <coughs> Very tough spot here, Donnie, for Rustler, who is sort of caught between Leonard and Boas, given his uh, st uh, stack size. Is, is the best advice you could give him right now to just sit back and be tight? Yeah, I mean, like you said, Rustler just stuck in the middle here. I mean, it's also a spot where I think Rustler needs to look for spots to pick up chips and not just be, or not just settle, I should say, for sitting back and hoping that Leonard goes out next. Now, obviously, I understand that, you know, there's a lot of money on the line in terms of ICM. This next immediate pay jump is worth 97K. I totally get it, you know, but if, if Leonard does end up doubling up and you haven't been able to do anything in the meantime, well then you're not necessarily any better off. So play a little bit cautious, of course. Don't just go crazy, but right. also look for some spots where you can capitalize on the situation at hand. I mean, I, I haven't really seen also like, you know, for Toby Boas, I haven't seen him get too out of line. Probably the craziest that we saw him get out of line was when he had those fives. And even then, yeah, I mean, he had, what, 20 big blinds. It's not the worst spot, but, you know, given the situation, being shorthanded at a final table against a guy in Rustler who had been opening at times and, uh, you know, folding to shoves. And then also I think that looking back on it, obviously hindsight is a bit 2020, but... The fact that Rustler thought about it like he did with the Queens kind of tells me that Boas' shove was good because he put a guy with the third best starting hand in poker in a spot where he really thought about it. Meanwhile, 19 YouTube subscribers away from the free annual Poker Go Sub giveaway. 19 subscribers away on, you, on YouTube. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. So much love and so many pineapples in the chat. I'm going to buy myself a strawberry shirt for the next time I make a final table. Mangoes, maybe. Bananas. I just have to get one of each. You got to find out which one's the lucky one, and then you roll with it. Exactly. Year of the pineapple. If you're just tuning in, we are watching three-handed play 
at the Event 16 3K No Limit Hold'em Final Table. This is bonus coverage. This is not your regular PokéGo coverage. This is just because we thought the Final Table was fun. We turned it on because there was no PokéGo stream scheduled for today. And these three players are guaranteed $248,000. My name is Remco Rinkema. Donnie Peters alongside me. You can follow us on Twitter, at Remco Rinkema and at Donnie underscore Peters. You can see our names on the screen. If you have any questions or concerns, please let us know. Hey. Tomorrow, the main channel is back with the 25K PLO High Roller. And if you're new to PokéGo and you want to subscribe, maybe you don't win the giveaway, use promo code GETWSOP30 for $30 off the annual subscription. The price will come down to about, what is it, $9 a month? No, wait, less. No. Six? Less than six. 5.83? Yes. $5.83 per month if you get the annual subscription, which is the best price, by the way. Offer expires at the end of the World Series of Poker. Lock it in now. Lock it in while you can. If you've won a giveaway in the last few days and you haven't heard back from us, please follow up. Twitter.com slash PokerGo. Send us a DM. Our DMs are open. We have an all-in here from Lenner out of the small blind. Two million five seventy-five. Two million five hundred and seventy-five thousand. So five big blinds. Russell looks like he's got a decision here. Twenty-five seventy-five. Remember when poker content was free? Yeah. Remember when poker content wasn't nearly as good as it is now? Come on. Oh. Rustler does make the call. We have a king eight suited in hearts for Rustler. Pocket jacks for Leonard. Ace, jack seven, set of jacks for Leonard. Nine on the turn, brings a straight draw. Deuce on the river, and Leonard is going to double up Rustler with a little shake of the head. Since 2.5 million on over to the Austrian, Stefan Lenner, who now has more than 10 big blinds in his stack. Down 23 asks if the high roller PLO is on anywhere. It is not on anywhere today. Tomorrow it will be on Poker Go. The final table will be live on Poker Go starting at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific Time. That's on Poker Go tomorrow. 25K PLO final table. More than $1.4 million up top in that one. You guys will be able to watch it there. With the A plus, best of the best, all the bells and whistles, poker go stream. This final table you're watching here is event number 16, three thousand dollar no limit hold'em. This is bonus coverage with myself, Donnie Peters, Remco Rinkima as well, alongside me. Three players left, guaranteed two hundred forty-eight thousand dollars, ninety-seven thousand dollar pay jump on the line and then five hundred fifty eight thousand dollars up for grabs brian peterson three players left just said it all in. hope you heard it all, all in, in here from boas yep pressure's on leonard just doubled up remco oh wow i uh, missed something you did with uh, pocket jacks versus rustlers king eight of hearts all in blind versus blind rustler was all on for just over five big blinds now has over 10 big blinds Nine away. Nine YouTube subs away from the free annual sub giveaway. And still, we still need 140 more likes, ladies and gentlemen. Don't be cheap. Give us a like. 
So give us a like. Give us, <laughs> give us, give us the like. Give us a like. Hi, you like me now. I'm not going to sing. All, All in right. again from Boas. Applying maximum yeah. pressure on both his opponents. The pineapple attack. He lives in the pineapple, deep in the sea. Toby, Bo, Wes. See, Americans in general are not very good at coming up, coming up with like good chants and songs. If Boas was British and he had a British rail, that's probably what they would have been singing. Here goes all Leonard, left. all in. Wait, is Russell considering this? I might have to stand up for this. He gives it up, all in showdown. Nine eight of diamonds. Nine eight of diamonds for Toby ace Boas, king. an ace king for Stefan Leonard, who's looking to survive here and have his ace king hold up. Lots of outs here for Boas. Really like his hand here. Let's see the flop. Ace three seven oh. two diamonds. Oh, we got top sweat. Top pair versus the flush draw. Back door straight draw as well for Boas. Diamond and a diamond only will send Leonard to the rail. It's an eight on a river, and he survives. Double up for Stefan Leonard. What a flop there, huh? Incredible stuff. Exciting run out. Angel Vu throwing out them pineapples. Does not come in this time for her husband. Friendly vibes at this table, by the way. A little, very, little fist bump. Friend, friendly vibes, yeah. I mean, at, at some point, it becomes really friendly. You've been playing with these guys for three, four days, who knows how many hours. The camaraderie is high. Of course, there's a lot of competition, a lot of money on the line, but all in good fun here. Two more, two more subs and 100 more likes. We've got two giveaways pending, basically. I feel confident about these two final subs before the annual sub giveaway. Ooh, I see a lemon in the chat. Does that mean we can represent someone else with a lemon? Maybe maybe Leonard can be the lemon. <laughs> Leonard why, Lemon. Why is Leonard the lemon? Because his name starts with an L. Yeah, but I feel like a lemon's like a bad thing. I you love know, lemon cars. Like a, you know, I love lemons. You bought a lemon. You bought a crappy car. It's sour. I mean, you use lemon to make margaritas, right? No? Limes? Limes. Damn it. Raise. Raise to a million from Leonard here. Russell gives it up. Action on the Pineapple Express. Boom. More Polish Zlotys donated by D Zomer. Says, thanks for the bonus stream. Let us know on Discord how to tip you directly. It's all good, man. We love doing it. The only thing we want on Discord is for you to join. Join Dis <laughs> Discord.gg slash poker go. Get on in there. Talk poker with us 24-7. A lot of action in there. More than 3,000 members climbing strongly by the day. Donnie, what does this set number say? 273,000 subscribers. We made it. Okay. We did it. Let's go. Let's see. To the moon and back, baby. What happens in this Rocket hand? ships. Bang, bang, bang. 10, 7, 9, deuce, two spades. Let's get some, let's get some rocket ships in the chat here for hitting 273,000 subscribers. Annual sub giveaway coming up real soon. Thank you all. Thanks, chat. Every hand so meaningful right now. Back. Boaz picks it up. Shows the deuce. Love it, everyone. Thank you all so much for <laughs> tuning in. I got a fun one for you, since everyone who's tuned in right now is going to have a chance here to win that annual Poker Go sub. And of course, it can be only one thing. Give me all the pineapples in the chat to enter the giveaway <laughs> for the free annual sub. All other fruits are also qualified. You can go strawberry, you can go blackberry, raspberry, apple, orange. Somebody was dropping kiwis in there earlier. Kiwis. Let's go. Fire them in there. Any fruit counts. I'm gonna fire. Some, I'm gonna fire some in myself. For the annual Please. sub giveaway, send them in. 
We're going to give away an annual PokerGo sub, meaning you can watch the entire rest of the World Series of Poker, High Stakes Poker, High Stakes Duel, WSB Classic, whatever you feel like watching, it's going to be available. Send me your fruits in the chat right now. We'll give it a few minutes. We'll do a random draw. Lots of pineapples coming in, seeing some strawberries, bananas, peaches. It's a fruity chat today. If you can't find the emojis, it, it still counts. You can also just write it out. I know not everyone has fancy phones like that. What was that, Don? Is that is that a mango? 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 They got mangoes up in here. Donnie, there's some mangoes in the chat. Kiwis? There you go. From, from Tim's Dang. Uckworth? Dang. Blueberries. Oh, wow. What a healthy chat, ladies and gentlemen. So much fruit. Keep sending them. This Do is it. amazing. We're doing an annual sub giveaway. We got melons. Oh, grapes, baby. Oh. Grapes are my favorite. We got grapes in the chat. Cherries. Burgers. On what tree does that grow? Melons. Watermelon chunks. Keep it going. I appreciate everyone. By the way, if you are a subscriber to the channel and if you're in the chat right now, you're automatically entered into our giveaway. Right. One entry per person. Spamming the chat does not help. Only counts for one. Leonard here with the raise to one million. By the way, also smash that like button. We're approaching a thousand likes on the video. It'd be awesome to hit that number during the stream. Total is ten million for Leonard. Rustler deep in the tank here. Donnie, stop. I gotta. I have to ban Donnie Peters. He's blocking my... So he started with what? It looks so pretty. It does look very pretty. All right, keep those fruits coming. Frankie says, no emoji for apricot. Unbelievable. Just tell me any fruit in the chat. You'll be entered into the random draw. We'll give it a few more minutes since this is a big one. We're almost to 1,000 likes, too. They ticked up a lot, so let's get there. I know. Rustler in the tank. He moves all in. Here we go. This could be it. Oh, no, it's not. Leonard folds immediately, and play continues. Here we go. Don't forget to like that video, guys. Let's go. 1,000 likes means another giveaway. Like, like, like. If you're just tuning in and you're wondering what the heck is going on here, we've been here for five and a half hours covering this final table. Toby Boas started today as the short stack. He is now the chip leader. We're three-handed. The remaining players are guaranteed $248,000. We're taking you home. Play down to a winner tonight at this final table. And we're having some fun with it. Doing some giveaways, some merch, some subs. All right, after this hand, we'll do the draw for our very fruity. Get those fruits in. Annual Make sub sure you're in there. You only got this hand. And then Remco's going to draw. All in. All in here from Boas. It's got to be a fruit, everyone. Let's go. All right, Leonard folds. Time to draw. Time to draw. So much fruit. There's, there's so much fruit. <laughs> Overwhelming amount of fruit. And the winner is Tyler McAfee. Tyler McAfee, just so everyone knows, he sent in grapes and watermelon in the same line of chat. Little, little combo there. Tyler McAfee wins an annual Poker Go sub. Tyler, all you have to do is take a screenshot of your YouTube account, send a direct message to Poker Go on Twitter, and send us, you know, hey, what's up, I'm Tyler, I won the giveaway. And they will credit you with a promo code that you can use to sign up for Poker Go. Congratulations, Tyler. Very well done. All right, everyone, we're still three handed here. As Toby is stretching the legs a little bit. Action on Leonard. All, All in. in. All in for Leonard. We're going to get a count again. Lots of counts happening lately. Five point five, five point six. Six million fifty. Six million and fifty thousand. Oh. Oh, okay. 
Tyler says, draw again, I have it. Wow, what a gesture. Tyler, do you want a t-shirt instead? By the way, we got an all in here. Ace King versus Ace Jack. Leonard's tournament life is on the line. Ace, seven, eight on the flop. We are two cards away from being heads up. Eight on a turn, chop opportunities. Let's have a look at the river card. Eight on the river, chop it is. Full house for both players and we continue with three-handed action. Rustler is not happy. He is not happy at all. I mean, I think it's just kind of a combination of things. The Queens earlier, now this. Has been an unfortunate couple of runouts. All right, Tyler has a subscription and he has an NFT. So Tyler, Jeez, pick something. Tyler, you're just all up in the game. Pick something from our store. Not a felt. Pick something from our store. Pick a T-shirt. Pick a T-shirt from our from our store. Send a DM and we'll send you a T-shirt. Wow. We'll do a redraw. Re sh should I redraw right away? Yes. All right, redraw right away. Tyler, you're you're a legend. Send us a DM. We'll we'll send you a T-shirt. All right, redrawing again. Everyone, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. The winner is on the redraw, Tiago Vicente Rents, who sends a beautiful combination of cherries, strawberries, pineapple, banana. Tiago Vicente Rents. I hope I said that right. Congratulations, Tiago. You are the winner of the free annual. Poker Go sub, send a DM to us on Twitter. We'll credit you with the promo code that you have to use to sign up. Lots of fruit still coming in, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate it. We just gave away the annual sub. Back to the action. Let's have a look. Rustler. Action is on Rustler. Tiago, I hope you he heard this. Send us a DM. Either way, congrats, everyone. Appreciate it. Did we just hear raise without a, an amount? I believe so. I heard raise. This is this is interesting. He said raise and I don't, I did he say raise? It might not. It might have been the dealer who was saying the raise coming from. Or oops, I, mean, I don't know what's happening. Oh, I see what happened. Call raise. Call raise. raise. All right. Got it. We're back up to speed. Rustler limped from the small blind. Too much fruit going on. Boaz raised and then Rustler made the call. King nine four two diamonds. Verlis, Verlissi Fiance says, would be funny if that chops, if that chop breaks. Hat dude, he seems tilted. He does seem a little frustrated, I must admit. Checks over to Boas, who. Nine fifty. Nine fifty. Wow, those black chips are so hard to see. Yeah, I mean on the dark felt. We need yeah. green felt. By the way, about 50 likes away from that merch giveaway. Let's go. Let's, let's see if go. we can, let's see if we can hit it. That was a pretty lofty target, and I'm happy that we're so close. Our blinds are 300, 600. Oh, the price of poker is going up. 300k, 600k with the 600k ante. It's really danger zone time for both Leonard and Rustler, who are looking for a double up as Boas. Is looking like a total boss with that enormous stack in front of him. If you're just tuning in, the chip side, the chip colors are 500k for the black chips, 100k for the purple slash blue, and 25k are the greens. The promo code is get WSOP30 to save $30 
on your annual subscription. The promo code makes it so that you spend less than six dollars a month on Poker Go. Five dollars and eighty-three cents. My math guy Donnie Peters ran the numbers on that. Five eighty-three a month. I mean, come on. It's the best we can do. By the way, this is not on Poker Go. This is a bonus coverage live stream. So if you want to see what the Poker Go quality looks like, just check out any video on our Poker Go YouTube channel, any highlight clip. We have plenty of those. Tomorrow, we're back with a main channel stream, the 25K PLO High Roller. We've been providing updates of that event during this stream. Let's have a look and see what's been happening in that event lately as we are just watching Boas run over the table. He just puts both his opponents all in. Leonard wants a count on Rustler's chips. I don't know, man. I can count them from here. It's pretty easy to see. 83? 8.3 million is what Rustler has. Leonard gives it up. Rustler takes a peek. Folds as well. Boas picks up even more chips. Wow. Boas's chip lead is becoming more impressive by the minute. The Pineapple Express is running over the table. It looks like Leonard only has about eight million left himself, which would put Boas at about 32 million if my napkin math is correct here. Very impressive stuff. Brett Mueller is asking, top three poker players you'd like to see final table the main event for entertainment value and best for poker expansion. Mr. Beast question mark? Hell yeah. Give me Mr. Beast. That'd be fun to watch. Well, Mr. Beast has to actually enter the main event for that to happen. That is true. Um, I would love for like three women to make the main event final table. I don't even care for what reason. It would just be cool to see one. It's been since Barbara Enright in 1995 that we've had a woman at the main event final table. Of course, 2011, Andras Karaknai wrecked <laughs> Elizabeth Hill <laughs> and Gail Bauman. That was very upsetting. They finished, I believe, 11th and 10th. Yes. Came very close to the final table. We've had I some. Think, I think. I think yes. Daniel actually reaching the final table would be big just because the reach would be massive. Yep. You know, just in terms of like the notoriety that the event would get. Not that the, not that the event is not massive as it is. It is massive as is. But you get a big name like Negranu at the final table. And also, Negranu is the type of player that if he makes it, he would just run with it. Oh, yeah. You know, like he knows how to market it, how to put it out there, all that sort of stuff. So it would just be really incredible to see him get there. I know he came close a couple of years ago. He got 11th. Famous photo of him falling back. Shout out Joe Jerome for that photo. Joe him, McKeon. Of him crashing to the ground. <laughs> yep. So Negranu making it would be huge. Donnie, I have a question for you. Yeah, what's up? Does this look like good pizza to you? No. You're good. No? Yes, sir. Yeah, it looks average. Where's it from? Who's it from? This is a gluten-free pie from Heavenly Pies. So Je I can't. Just, I just can't get down with the gluten-free pie. No, I know. I mean, gluten-free pie regularly sucks, <laughs> um, but for Jess, it's a ne it's a necessary evil. Yeah, I mean, but I but I but I think that for a gluten-free pie, this looks really good. If you would have told me, like beforehand, yeah, that it was gluten-free, then I would have likely given a different answer. But, but that's what I'm saying. Listen, if you're gonna have pizza to everyone out there, you you just gotta go in and have actual pizza. I know. Like you can't. So I you, agree. It's just one of those things you just can't skimp on. Three-handed play still, 248K already guaranteed for these guys. If you're just tuning into the chat, we just did a giveaway for a free annual sub. We still have one more giveaway left here. If we hit 1,000 likes on the video, we're only about 40 away. Can we get there? That's the question. We can get there. It's just a matter of these guys clicking the butt. <laughs> 
Five king three. It's not that hard. Two spades. A rare flop as the stacks are super shallow. Leonard gives it up once more. I mean, Boas is just running away with this thing. We're going to reach a point in this tournament where even if he doubles up both players, it has almost no impact on his stack. Is Rustler asleep? I mean, Rustler is, <laughs> is, is trying to meditate himself back to sanity after that chop <laughs> that could have brought him oh. to heads up play. Christopher's asking, how did the Fox bust? Well, his bust out hand wasn't that interesting, but it was the hand before where he doubled up uh, Toby Boas with uh, ace jack versus tens. Yep. Ten, tens held up for Boas. Disciple Loa says, my sister's gluten free. Woo, happy one year birthday, birthday, Nacy. There we go. Justin correcting me, says it was only, it was in 2012 main event. All right, fair enough. I was off by a year. Of course, I knew that because 2011 was the P.S. Heinz year. P.S. P.S. Heinz. Na, 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 na. Hey, hey, hey. P.S. Heinz. P.S. Heinz won the main event and said, see you. See you later. <laughs> Bye. I'm out. Deuces. I mean, can't necessarily blame someone. You win eight to nine million dollars. You just say, hey, I'm going to go <laughs> chill. All right, I got you. It's all good. Leonard deep in the tank again. The most obvious result of this three-handed battle is that Leonard and Rustler are going to end up all in against each other and decide who gets to face Boas. Tosses him in. Meanwhile, in the 25K PLO, Josh Arie chipping up uh -oh. against Ben Lamb. Arie now up to third in chips uh -oh. as Jonathan Deppa still leads. We're down to 17. Negrano is nursing his stack. Haven't seen much from him in the updates. Has been trending down. He's 14 out of 17. By the way, the David Williams story, very interesting, was not going to play. Received a last-minute investment from a good friend of his. Jumped in the tournament, and now he is there, the final 17. Way to go, DW. So close to 1,000 likes. Incredible stuff, guys. We're Chat, gonna, we're gonna get there. Chat we're has gonna been get there. You gotta, gotta believe. Chat has been fantastic. Lighty collects says big shout out to all the UK watchers. Absolutely big shout out. Chacharu says, "What what is this final table setup? What happened to the nicer one? Well, the nicer one, the lights are off, and um, they're not streaming today. This is bonus coverage. A little bit of extra, just because, just the because we can. Day off and." Uh, I mean, although it was a scheduled day off anyway, I mean, <laughs> they were here till 4 a.m. last night, so. Yeah, I saw. <laughs> bit of a well-deserved day off. <laughs> I saw someone earlier say, why is the PLO playing down to five and coming back tomorrow with five? Well, let me tell you this. They came back with five in the 08, and they played for, what, 16 hours? It was yeah. it was so long. It was insane. So five-handed lasted for 16 hours. Nine-handed? No, I, I, I think it was 10 hours. Oh, sorry. They played heads up for six, like they, over played, six hours. Yeah. They, um, heads up for six hours. So Dan Zach won, and when he stood up from the table, he actually almost oh. fell over. Wow. Like I'm not joking. He kind of stumbled. He caught himself, and then he went over to like you know, celebrate with his rail. Kind of almost stumbled again. I mean, Damn. he was just he was out of it. That's crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. Uh, but yeah. So just to mention, five-handed PLO. That is not going to be a one-hour affair. Let me promise you that. <laughs> no. You're going to get your money's worth at tomorrow's final table, especially if the likes of Ben Lamb, Negrano, and Arya make it, of course, you know, still to be determined. If you're new to PokerGo and you want to subscribe, please use promo code GETWSOP30 for $30 off the annual subscription. That's how you can watch possibly Daniel Negrano go for his seventh gold bracelet tomorrow. It's very possible. You can watch Josh Arie go for another one in his quest for back-to-back -back WSOP POI titles. I mean, he's he's off to a good start to do that. Oh, yeah. Very good start. Made the, was it the 50K final table? 25K. 25K final he, table? He got third in that one. So, Josh, uh, I think Josh afterwards said that, you know, he had a good run in a game that he's certainly not his best at being no limit hold'em. By the way, I think he considers himself much better at PLO, so maybe he can make a run now that he's chipping up here deep in this one. Jenny and Amber Boas are still firing 
the pineapples in the chat, and so is Connie Kelly. Let's go. Charles as well. Lots of support for the power of the pineapple. Boas. Scott Graham with the OG reference. What's a Danzac? Appreciate you tuning That's right. in. What's a Danzac? Well, Danzac is now a two time WSP gold bracelet winner. Winner of the 10K Omaha High Low Championship last night, beating Dustin Dirksen in heads up play. An absolutely incredible heads up match. Six hours back and forth between those two. Multiple all ins, multiple lead changes. You know, multiple all ins in terms of like the other person had a 30 to 1 chip lead, stuff like that. Battled back. Like it was just, it was non stop over and over and over again. Finally, about 3 30 in the morning, Danzac was able to seal the deal, earn his second gold bracelet. We're still three handed here as Toby Boaz has an enormous chip lead versus Stefan Lenner from Austria and Nathan Russler. By the way, lots of pineapple still coming into the chat. Appreciate everyone for the love. We are 10 likes away from the merch giveaway. We're giving away another t shirt. Let's Thank go. you all. It's been a wonderful stream today. All you pineapple lovers, smash that like button. Let's go. 16 left in the 25K of PLO as Ben Lamb knocks one out. We got to go over there, Donnie, when this finishes. We do have to go over there. Check it out. The $1,500 Deuce to 7 triple draw is down to four with Vaughn Altizer going for a World Series of Poker bracelet. That would be the second woman to oh. win a bracelet this oh. year. Oh, 999. One more. There we go. Boom. 1,000 likes. We did it. Those Let's go. We did it. Wow. We did it. There we go. We did it. Burst through that ceiling. Let's go. A thousand Thank you, five. everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. All right. Let's do the giveaway. Remco, Remco's warming up the giveaway machine. Yeah, I am. I'm thinking of something. Cr oh, actually. Firing up the raffle machine. Let's I, go. I'm going to go back to an OG question, Donnie. Okay. That if, if you've been watching some of the commentary that Donnie and I have been doing over the past few months. I'm you, sorry. You'll remember, <laughs> you'll, re okay. you'll remember this one because I think this was the first ever question that I asked morning, when we did the, f uh, the free preview Good for morning. the Stairway to Millions. And the question is for the T-shirt giveaway... And anyone who answers will be in the random raffle. Is What is your favorite pizza topping? Boom, let's go. Your favorite pizza topping in the chat. And guess what? Pineapple is allowed. All in here for Boas, applying maximum pressure on Leonard and Rustler. I mean, Rustler and Leonard are getting a bit frustrated here. Look at these stacks, Donnie. At, so, at some point, they have to take a stand, of course, obviously. No, hard to take a stand they're when you have 8-3. They're <laughs> withering know. away. What, okay, what do we got here for counts, Donnie? Let's just stare at these chips well, here for a second. All the chips are over at Toby Boas. So, Leonard has, like, what, 6 million? 10 bigs? And fewer chips for... We need, a, we need our guy Tim Duckworth on the case. <laughs> we got a heavy dose of pineapple coming in here for favorite pizza topping. Looks like a lot of pepperoni, too. Pepperoni versus pineapple. Chili flakes. I don't think I would count chili flakes as a topping. That's like if you added salt and pepper to your pizza. It's like a condiment. Yeah, it's not, it's not really a topping. But hey, it counts as a suggestion or a, as an entry. Let's go. Frankie Waters with the banana peppers. Love those, too. All right, keep them going. A few more hands here before we do the draw. Thanks, everyone. See. Favorite topping on a pizza. Drop it in the chat right now when you are entered into the giveaway. <laughs> what is the giveaway? What, what are we giving away? A high stakes poker Mount Rushmore t shirt. Ooh, ooh. In my opinion, our best item in the store. Rustler. Thinking about it. Was all in. He's all in. Let's go. Okay, here we go. Boas folds. Define okay. Okay. Good. Important hand for Boas. <laughs> Leonard, would, Leonard would love to see um, Rustler bust. Yeah. Mushrooms, avocado, roasted garlic. Avocado on pizza? Fish on pizza? No. Impossible meat, pineapple, hot honey, pepperoni by far. More pepperoni. Scott Graham says, now I got to order a pie. That is right, order a pie. <laughs> Anchovies, by the way, on pizza are awesome. Pepperoni popcorn? Uh, what? No, that's not Emily. 
that's not that's not a real thing. Roasted garlic is top tier. I agree. Roasted garlic is very good. Yes. Ham, Roast. lobster. Oh. I call. Oh, all in again. From Boas. Just meat. This person says just meat. What, what does meat? that mean? Meat pizza. <laughs> just slabs of steak on your pizza. Like, Cam <laughs> what does that mean? Ham and bear cheese. All right. Okay. After this hand that's upcoming right now, we'll do the, dra the draw. After this hand. That means you better get those entries in. Let's go. Fire them in. Favorite topping on a pizza. You can win a high stakes poker Mount Rushmore themed t shirt from the Poker Go shop. Shop.pokergo.com for all your best and favorite poker merchandise. And also some special collectible and memorabilia items. Duder says, I was about to get sushi, but now I want a pizza. That's Dude, right. same here, man. Same here. That's right. I just ate my weight in all in chocolate-covered almonds. I had a bag of chips, and now I want pizza. I'm going for a bike ride tomorrow, so maybe I can afford it. Action on Leonard here. Frozen. All in. Let's see if Rustler pulls the trigger this time. How much? Ooh. Yeah, it's at some point, these How much? players are going to have to take a stand against one another. Latest counts here from Tim Duckworth. Eight million for Rustler, 37.9 million for Boas, and 3.6 million well, for Leonard. We're going to see how right Tim is because... Did he say it? I think we might have missed it. 3.6 million is the count by Tim. We'll hold him accountable. After this hand, ladies and gentlemen, we'll raffle oh. off this. Hey, makes the call. Oh, All in a call. Go. Showdown time. Let's see him, guys. Ace high in the lead here. Queen nine offsuit for Leonard looking for a double up. I mean, another correct call here from, from Rustler. Rustler. if he can hold up this time. Ace five off for Rustler. Let's see five dealer. Plenty of outs for Leonard here to keep himself alive. Flop comes out. Queen, five, seven. Queen takes the lead. L Rustler hit a five. A five or an ace for him to win. Nine on the turn, two pair. Now he needs a five and a five only. The river card is a seven. And action continues three-handed as Stefan Leonard doubles up his short stack. And Toby Boas, Donnie, with every hand that goes on, gets closer and closer to winning because these guys are just not winning any chips. Yeah, I mean, you got to feel for... Rustler a bit here at this final table. Loses the queens to pocket fives. Loses with the ace king. Now loses with the ace five. All wow. with the best hand every time he gets it in. And he's still <laughs> in. Mean, he's, he's still in the tournament. I know. He's it still is not battling. It's not over yet. All right, doing the random draw now for the t-shirt, <laughs> the high stakes poker <laughs> t-shirt. The winner is Taylor Buno or Bunot or Bunot. He says jalapeno. I love jalapeno on pizza. Taylor Bunot, please send a DM to Boca Go on Twitter <laughs> with a screenshot of your YouTube login so we can see that it's you. Let us know your shirt size and your address, and we'll send you a T-shirt as soon as possible. Taylor Buno, B-U-N-O-T. Thanks for playing, guys. Appreciate it. Leonard tanking here from the button. Fresh off a double up. Jeremy calling me out going. for missing the aces and out. He is Don't all in, this. is Leonard. Okay. All in again. I mean, this event could end in the three-way all-in, Donnie. Oh, for sure. Because Boas is going to have such good equity here. He does lay it down. We got an all-in again. Leonard versus Rustler, part two. Pocket tens now for Rustler. Can he finally hold up one time? <laughs> King, queen. This is a real serious coin flip. And this time it is Rustler who is all-in. We see, we see all-in coins in front of both players, but... Is definitely the short stack of Rustler that is looking for his tens to hold up. Seven, eight, four, very clean. So tens so still in the lead. King on the turn. Unbelievable luck for Rustler. 
and a three on the river will seal the deal. Nathan yeah. Rustler has been eliminated in third place, taking home $248,000 for his efforts. From the moment he became chip leader, things did not go his way. And now he's on the rail in third place as Toby Boas and Stefan Lenner are heads up for the bracelet and the $558,000 first place prize. Wow. I mean, what a turn of events. I think you just absolutely have to feel for Rustler there. Just bad beat after bad beat. I mean, what are you going to do? Unbelievable. Listen, we fully understand bad beats happen in poker. You're going to get them here and there. But when you get your money in, in dominating position, what? Yeah. Four times? Four times. And he lost all of them. I mean, it's just, it's like, what are you going to do? Well, the one he chopped, right? But, I mean, still, it's just like, oh, wow. Brutal, right? I, I feel mean, I feel bad for Rustler, really. He put on he a, played really well. a really good performance. He played very well. We got a little handshake here. Boas and Leonard about to go heads up for a World Series of Poker bracelet. Neither player has a bracelet. Toby Boas, the more accomplished live tournament player, has just shy of a million dollars in career earnings. Stefan Leonard, $275,000 in career earnings. Looks like about 12.2 million for Leonard, meaning that roughly 36 million, I believe. Where's for Boas, starting off with the raise. The Pineapple family in the chat must be extremely happy to see their favorite player heads up for a bracelet. Jack 8-6 on the flop. Joey Rios, yeah, it does have to take it on the chin, but I mean, come on, losing four times in a row, I mean, that's just pretty, pretty rough overall. You gotta figure you're gonna win at least one of those. Just brutal, gotta feel for the guy, for sure. Check, check, 10 of hearts on the turn here. Who is the suit guy? Well, the suit guy is the tournament director <laughs> who is putting the bracelet on the table for heads up play. So he's not going to take a walk. He's got a job to do. We love all the tournament directors here trying to run things as flawlessly as possible. Leonard going for a bet here. Quick fold from Boas. Next hand dealer. Dave Denholm back in the chat. Dave, are you coming to Vegas or not? Come on. My my second bedroom is available. Wow. Just offers up his house on a YouTube stream. Exactly. I'm not sure why he was thinking of I mean, Dave offers me his LAFC season tickets every time, so it's the least I can do. Scott Graham says, wish I was upset winning quarter million. I mean, it just depends how you get there, man. We've seen some epic blow-ups over the years, you know. It's not about uh, upset being winning a quarter million. It's about losing the 300,000. I know. <laughs> was the possibility. What are, what are some of your favorite blow-ups ever in poker? Scott Lazar, hands down. I mean, hands down. Also, I want to reference one, Donnie, that also probably is way up there. Billy Cop. Oh, yeah. That was crazy, too. Versus Darvin Moon. By the way, we have Ace-6-5. Five five, Ace, Ace Shout out from Pismo Beach, California. Yo, yo, Donnie. Yep. Thanks, 805 Central. Scott Lazar, Billy Cop, those are definitely up there. Philip Hill. I mean, Filippo Condio tried to give it all away. Philip Hill. Philip Hill. I mean, you have to put Philip Hill above Scott Lazar because Philip Hill was actually chip leader nine-handed in the main event, and he finished ninth. Does Joseph Chong count as a blow up? No. Or just a. That was just an aggressive move. Yeah. Was it Ace 8 into Queens? It was Ace something. Ace something. 
Scotty Wynn, Coach Popovic, was 07 main event, I believe. I'm not even sure if Scotty Wynn ever recovered from that. Yeah, Philip Helm definitely blow up Hall of Fame. Dave says, next year I'm going to make it happen. Man, I thought you were going to be here this year. Hope all is well with the fam. Meanwhile, I think we just missed the bet there, Donnie. Was that a, there was a raise to 1.2? 1.2 or 1.3? Queen, Queen, 10 on the flop. We can see the bracelet there just off to the top of the screen. Leonard checks. It's a whole different game of poker now. Nick Cola says Vanessa Selves versus Gail Bauman, quads versus quads. I mean, it was quads versus a full house, and I don't see in any way how that is a blow up. That is no. just a massive cooler. <laughs> massive cooler and extremely unlucky. Oh, Thanks. card player says Anton Morgenstern. Awesome. Every year. Chip leader, <laughs> chip leader with 27 left. I believe he finished 24. By the way, these two gentlemen are playing heads up for $213,000. That is insane. It's great to see. Never seems to, ne never stops to amaze me how much money is at stake heads up. Getting that wonderful audio from the chip shuffler. Next time our producer Brad goes down there, he could move that second mic off the table since both players are sitting on that right-hand side. Here we go, 10-7-9 on the flop. Or 800k here from Boaz taking us to the turn. <coughs> 10 on the turn. Hope Jones says in 2003 some big Scandinavian guy punted a massive stack away when there were less than 50 left. I think you're thinking of William Thorson. Actually, 2003? No, that wasn't William Thorson. Thorson was 06. Jamie Gold year. King Jack. 2003, let me think. Funny story, William Thorson's dad made the final two tables of the main event in 03. Did Dimitri Nobles blow up? 06? I'd say so. That hand versus George Danzer, so brutal. Boas checks the turn. Here comes Leonard. It's like 1.3 million. You guys remember the Screaming Swede in 04? Oh, yeah. Matthias Anderson. Yeah, where is he at? I have no idea. I always want to know where they are. To the river we go. Five of clubs action on Boas. He checks the liner after giving up initiative on the turn. Checks the river again. Donnie seems as though he's trying to get the show down here. Yes. I mean, Boas is in a spot where he doesn't need to. He doesn't need to blow pots. He doesn't need to, you know, push the aggression too much. He has the commanding chip lead. I would say he's probably been the superior player so far. You know, some of that is obviously card distribution. But no need to risk anything too crazy. Bad news for the Negrano fans. Daniel Negrano has just busted in 16th place in the 25K PLO. Ay, ay, ay. Boo. Here comes Leonard grabbing those black chips.
sizable bet here, Donnie. It is. Coach Papa, that would be Eric Molina. What is this, Donnie? 4.3 million? Well, that's a full. So that's a full. It don't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. We're going to move on. It said, if you could change the outcome of one main event final table hand, which one would you pick? Wow. I know mine off the top of my head. One, one final table hand. That's a big question. I mean, you go first. I, I have to think about this. Ivy folding, pocket jacks, the Anton Saouds, pocket sevens. Wow. Yeah, that, that's probably the right answer, honestly. I mean, I, I think a lot of people might point to when Ivy, I mean, it was technically the final table, it was still 10 handed when Ivy lost to Moneymaker with pocket nines versus the ace queen. But we needed that. But we need the Moneymaker era, the Moneymaker boom. Phil right? Ivy doesn't, doesn't become Phil Ivy if he doesn't win that hand. That said, I mean, that hand, when he I mean, folded those jacks, I mean, oh, that, so brutal. That hand is definitely the one. Call. To the turn we go, jack of clubs. Check. Check again from Leonard. 2.4 million in the middle here. Leonard has been doing well here in the early stages of heads up play. I mean, I have a hand in mind. It would have been fun to see Mattisau win that hand against Scott Lazar. This one goes to Boas. Great question, RMX Indiana. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually put that on Twitter. I want to see what people are going to say. thinking about it. It is a great question. Limp here from Leonard on the button. Rough chip counts currently. Let's have a look. We'll do some napkin math here. Looks like about 11 million for Leonard, which means that Boas has about 36 to 37 million. Four, six, seven, three hearts showing now as we have the bracelet right in there. Beautiful. Troy Mikowski asks, what's your favorite breakfast spot near the venue? Well, huh? it's not walking distance, but Public Us is my favorite spot. If you have a car, definitely go there. I don't ever eat on the strip if I don't have to. Eight on the turn, puts a four card straight out there. Both players seem very focused, which is interesting to see given how laid back they were during three handed play. Play has also slowed down considerably ever since we got down to heads up.
Leonard reaching here after Boas checked. That's two million. If anyone's visiting Vegas, I would highly recommend going to Main Street. There's Abel Baker Brewing and my favorite pizza place, Good Pie, as well as Esther's Kitchen, Brazewood Barbecue, Makers and Finers has good coffee, Golden Fog has really good coffee, Rebar is fun to go to. Go to Main Street, go check it out. Mm -hmm. After dark though, it's a good vibe at night. Oh, and Velveteen Rabbit, one of the nicest cocktail bars in Vegas. Three of Diamonds completes the board after Boas made the call. Quite a bit up for grabs here now in this pot. Play has definitely slowed down a lot. These guys really, really want it. It's so interesting, Donnie, how both these players played really fast the entire final table, but now they're... Now they can smell it. Now they can smell it, indeed. Looks like a big bet coming here from Leonard. Is this 3.6 million, perhaps? We have no verbal on the bet size yet since Boaz has not asked for a count of the bet, but it looks like 3.6 million. Boaz reaching. Ooh, he looks like... Okay, so now, with his body language, it looks as though he's eliminating a raise from his options, so maybe he's just looking for a call. I think it's 3.6. Donnie, if you're Boas, given what the board looks like, how light are you considering calling off here in a heads-up play? I don't know. It's tricky. It's it's hard to say just kind of in a general sense of heads-up play because I don't know if I would call off light at all. I mean, it just the lenders just seem to play really solid the whole time. That I'm just I have I have nothing. I guess I have no evidence that he's just stepping out. You know. Boas comes to the same conclusion and folds. If you're just tuning in, consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. It's been an awesome day here on the stream. Over six hours we've been going at it. These two guys are now heads up before the bracelet. Sadly, been eliminated from the PLO in 16th place. Boo. A few spots away from the final table. Ivy, however, still in the 10K stud. Leonard has chipped up considerably. Looks like he's closer to 20 million at this point. Drawing a lot closer to his opponent.
through the flop we go once more. Can really feel the intensity here. Ooh, ace, jack, 10, three diamonds. Some royal flush vibes here at this final table. The sound you're hearing is indeed the chip shuffler. Six million is the bet here from Boas. After the pre-flop action, there's already over three million in the middle. Boas calls big pot brew in here. Seven of spades on the turn. Seems as though Leonard is very confident about his heads-up game. So far, things are working out for him. Blinds are 300K, 600K with a 600K big blind ante. Playing for that gold bracelet and a $213,000 pay difference between the second and third. Boas continues here. Looks like 4.2 million, Donnie. This is a huge pot. Feels Massive. as a ton, ton of, uh, I mean, momentum. I mean, this can change a lot. Leonard wins this hand, you know. I think he's gotta be pushing to be the favorite to come out on top here. Boas. I mean, Leonard's done, done well so far, but and there Ooh, it is. Wow. There it is. Huge pot for Boas. This might be the first significant pot that he wins during heads up play. Very good for him, you know, just from a momentum standpoint, being that Leonard seemed to be doing well early on in the heads up match, and Boas kind of needed to step in there and finally, you know, lay a little bit of the hammer down and be like, hey, hold on a minute there, buddy. Slow down a little bit. I'm the chip leader here, okay? This is my table. I'm the guy with the pineapple shirt on. I am the pineapple king. Oh. Limp here from Boas on the button. Check from Leonard. Six four deuce. Two hearts on the flop. Check from Leonard. Min bet six hundred thousand from Boas. Call from Leonard. Seven of diamonds on the turn brings a second diamond. Added to the two hearts that are on the flop. Three million in the middle. Leonard checks. Your dog is insane. Check behind from Boas. Six of clubs pairs the board on the river. Again, three million in the middle on this one. Leonard first to act. He checks. Bowes checks behind. Let's show him. Let's see him. Looks like a king five. Indeed a king five for king high. Boas Mux and Leonard picks this one up.
Leonard makes the call from the button. Boas checks his option in the big blind. Ace, queen, nine, rainbow on the flop. Boas checks. Minimum bet from Leonard. Boas quickly gives it, gives it up. Excuse me. Boas on the button, limped in there. Leonard put in a raise, Boas quickly folded. On to the next hand. I think I have my answer for the hand that I want to change. Jesus, took it long enough. Yeah, I was just like in a tank, grinding through the main event episodes. I was just in my head going through every year. I had no idea you were still doing that. I would have called the clock on you. Well, my ears hurt from the headphone side. Oh, these headphones are brutal. I hate them. Somebody invent headphones that don't like make me feel like my head is in a vice. I know. Um, the hand in question, I just want Med Affleck to win that hand versus Duhamel. I'm a big fan. wasn't at the final table. God damn it. Okay, I gotta go back in the tank. Right. I'm thinking of like, I'm thinking of like every notable Miss hand deal. I can think of. Missed deal. Missed deal. <laughs> Moving on. Remco misread his hand. Th thought he had a straight. <laughs> misread, misread the question. <laughs> remember, when, remember when Ted Lawson thought he had a straight? Oh my god. <laughs> Phenomenal. Oh, look, I mean that. That, that poker's heyday, man. It was, it, there's, there's nothing like it. Remember, remember, remember when Moneymaker didn't know the action was on him? Oh my gosh, he's just tanking. Johnny so Chan good. looking at him like, bro, so <laughs> good. You gonna do something? Oh, it's on me? Oh man, I'm so sorry, guys. I, I thought I folded a while ago. <laughs> remember when you played beer pong against Chris Moneymaker? Yes. I didn't played yes. Badoogie against Chris Moneymaker. Oh yeah. Crushed him. Go. Chris, if you're listening, crushed you. Yeah, where is Chris? That's Come a great on, question. I, mean, I miss I miss Chris. He's always good to have around. Thanks to everyone who's still hanging in here with us to see how this thing will conclude as we got a real heads up battle on our hands here. A little over or almost six and a half hours underway here at this final table. My only hope is, Donnie, they don't take a dinner break. Keep going, please. I mean, dinner break should be outlawed when your head's up. 1.2 million is the raise from Absolutely Leonard. Absolutely outlawed. Donnie, what are your thoughts on, on min raising when you're heads up with the big blind Annie? Yeah, min raise every button. Call. I mean, just and, and call every big blind. Uh, yeah, I mean, you should be defending really wide. And, and I, I think these players have, you know, so far have done really well heads up, you know. Check. Ace, deuce, five. Mo mo I think they've been mostly limping in from the button, but that's that's fine, too. I'm actually kind of surprised with the limping in. I guess just given the fact that prior to this, there hadn't been a, hasn't been a lot of three betting, so I would think that that same sort of plan of play wouldn't also would also translate to heads up, where they're not going to be three betting each other a lot. So, oh wow, Jeff Platt has a question. How do I get upstairs? Yeah, Jeff, figure it out. Brad, Brad's going to come down and get you through the secret hallways of the Bally's attic. I call it the attic. This is the attic. <laughs> Jeff, if you hear this, please wait in front of the control room. Brad will get you. 
We should we should make him take him on the elevator. Shouldn't he have to take him on the elevator? Just for the full experience that <laughs> Ace five, deuce five, king board here. Leonard has position on Boas in this one. Remco trying to sneak almonds behind my back. I see you. All good. What are, what are we doing here, guys? Check, check. Queen, six. That means a pair of fives. Ace, king, queen. Going to take it down. More chips for Mr. Leonard. Although small, but more chips. Slowly but surely, grinding his way back in. Grinding, grinding, grinding. You guys see that gold bracelet on the table? That's what they're playing for. They're also playing for the $558,000 first place prize. Second place will take home $345,244. Stop making fun of Moneymaker, says Smokey. We're not making fun of Moneymaker. We love Chris. Yeah, big fans of Chris. Friendly also with Chris. We just wish he was here. Yeah. Well, that's a good one. Lee Childs folding queen queen to Jerry oh my Jack God. Jack Shove. Remember that? Oh. Wow. That hand is unbelievable. <laughs> Remember when Darvin Moon said that he had queens and he did? He did. <laughs> The main event is just, it's something else. He was it telling really his is. rail that he had queens. <laughs> yes. Like, not even the players, he wasn't even lying to the other players, he was lying to his wife. Oh, it's so great. Do 7-7 seven, seven here on the flop. It's nothing like the main event. I can't wait for it to be here. <laughs> oh. If it isn't the soothing voice of, of Jeffrey Platt, in the house with the monster energy. It must be a big night for Jeff. Let's see if we can get this this mic routed. You like our hideout? Yeah. <laughs> yes, blinds right now, 300,000 small blinds, 600K big blind, 600K big blind ante. Jeff, try this. All right, let's see what we got. Can you there. Hear testing, testing. Oh. Yeah, that it is. Okay, I can't hear great. them. Can you hear us? No, no. I mean, I can hear you because we're sitting right next to each other, so not a huge deal. But I can't hear any sound. Okay. How about now? Oh, How baby. Can you hear us? Yeah, can that's hear, the dream. Hear Thank program and everything? Hear program and everything. If there's a volume and you can turn it down a little bit, down. great. You guys know I'm a diva. Oh, down. You're way more specific. experienced than How about this, Jeff? How does this sound? Ah, uh, this is lovely. Lovely? Thank you so much. All right, perfect. I think we are good. Let us know in the chat if you can hear Jeff Platt. Hey, everybody. Good to see you all. Gentlemen. It's good to have Jeff in the booth with us. What are you, what are you up to, Jeff? Are Not you, much. Are you, are you on a break? Are you busting? What's no, happening? I, I came down here to sweat the end of day three of the 25K PLO, more from a sideline reporter perspective because as you guys have mentioned we have that broadcast on poker go tomorrow but i figured before then i should just come up here with you guys i know heads up can sometimes be a little slow a little boring some pauses in the action so I figured to come up here and chat so check out this setup y'all have beautiful it is beautiful i'm so glad you're here with us Tell us the real reason why you came down <laughs> <laughs> no i try can't. and sweat alex fox and oh yeah in yeah, your 25k yes. fantasy that no, no, it's true. That's a bit disappointing. I mean, hey, you get a chunk of points, though. Got a decent amount of points, considering that size field. We're doing well in there. Are you guys still complaining about COVID's killing your yeah, team? I mean, our, yeah, you know, it's it's our excuse. Yeah. We have, we have the excuse. I have no idea what place we're in, second to last. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not looking until we have at least, like, a 10K bracelet. Mm -hmm. Kevin Gerhardt, by the way, cruising in the 10K stud. 
ODB about to make his comeback. Same goes for Ospina. Our biggest, our biggest and most painful moment is uh, Dylan Wiseman missing the 25k mm. and the 50k PLO. Because he was obviously going to win those. He was going to win both yeah, of those. Yeah. You know? He was for sure final table. Like it's, it's not even a question. No, it's going to happen for sure. He final tables every PLO of any place. What are your thoughts on the bonus coverage, Jeff? A little bit of a different flavor yeah, here. Yeah, this is awesome. I'm just glad that we can get something going for, for the people. You know, for these smaller buy-in events, these 1Ks, 1500s, they have a 3K today. I think it's, I think it's fantastic. I'm glad we were able to, to pull something off. I'm glad you guys are, are leading the way. Did you play against either of these players? I did not. No, because you ran deep. So I have nothing. In yeah, yeah. 45th. Oh yeah, yeah. So close. Played with Mr. Fox and on my left, he was easy to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> Do you notice a difference, Jeff, when you hop into? the housewarming or you jump into the 3k no limit aside from you know structure and yeah. stuff like that do you notice a difference yeah it's a good question uh, i think this 3k was tough then i bet this I mean, had the field the, looked amazing yeah like, like amazing but in a bad way if you're playing right right like <laughs> a lot of really recognizable players like i bet this was one of the toughest 3ks of the year i know wpt sometimes have some 3ks we see some random ones here in vegas uh, but but this one was stacked. I mean, you guys saw Neil Farrell, Adrian Mateos, uh, Foxen, Kitty. It was uh, just just an unreal field, something that I did not expect. So, yeah, I, I certainly noticed uh, a bit of a difference in this event compared to, you know, the, the 1Ks, the 1500s of the world. Mm -hmm. You're on break. You're on break. You're on break, honey. Eight of clubs on the turn here, pairs the board. If you're just tuning in, this is bonus coverage of the 2022 World Series of Poker. We're heads up in a 3K no limit. They're just casually playing for a $213,000 pay difference. When's the last time you played heads up for $213,000? You know, it hasn't. It's been a while. Ever, ever happened. <laughs> what was first place when you got fourth? Probably around this. Oh, really? It's probably around these payouts. Wow. Dang, so crazy. Thank you for bringing up that I did get fourth in the 1K double stack. Well, they were calling you Jeff Top 50 yeah, Platt in the channel that, yeah. day. Come I was on. like, he, Come on. he finished fourth <laughs> before everyone. Come on. Come on. Jeff, I have to ask you, what's your favorite pizza topping? Uh, pineapple. Pineapple. I'm just saying that because I heard Donnie's <laughs> little rant over here. It's, it's pepperoni. Pineapple is fully allowed on the stream, though, because we have the pineapple thing I do, over here. I do like the pineapple shirt. Pineapple vibes are strong. Got him that five ball on the turn earlier. I know. It's been a fruity, a fruity stream today. <laughs> it's been phenomenal. Do you always order the same pizza? Or do you mix it up? Um, it's, uh, it's, I usually go super basic. You know me. I, I, I know you're basic, basic but there's there's a range there also. You can go cheese yeah, or Yeah, sometimes pepperoni. I go half pepperoni if I'm really feeling wow. frisky. <laughs> I'm a cheese pizza guy, so. Never yeah. supreme? No. <laughs> <laughs> I love how Jeff rolled his eyes at me. Like, come on, what do you think? Vegetables? Come on. That is yeah. Jeff's voice. You hear Jeff Platt. I would say in the booth with us, although we're not in the attic with us. <laughs> in the attic. The balcony. So Jason Summerwell was always in the basement. We are in the attic covering this final table. It's been a great final table, by the way. If you're just tuning in, it's worth the rewatch. We had tons of swings as far as chip counts, and Toby Boas, who is now the chip leader, started the day. It's a one hour. Five. Thirty minutes. Thirty minutes. Are we really taking a thirty-minute break? We are. Well, it was going to be an hour, so I guess thirty is, is a positive development. Alan said, some days we'll, "Someday we'll make it to the main floor." He believes. <laughs> he believes in us. He believes in us. I love it. I think producer Brad's going to verify that break length when he gets downstairs to change out those batteries, and then uh, 
until further notice, we'll just we'll just keep chatting for a bit. You guys just keep it here on breaks, huh? This yeah, is we, this is like we, a marathon we like, like we broadcast. Turn it into a podcast. Yeah. We should just put this out as audio. It is it is a bit of a marathon. At times Remco will just, you know, walk away. I'll walk away <laughs> from the coverage. <laughs> no. <laughs> it yeah. is it is funny how that works sometimes. But yeah, let's let's get confirmation on this break length. I think it should be about thirty minutes. We might stick around for a few more minutes and then take our a little break of our own. Thirty minutes might be a little bit much to fill here. But if you have any questions for Jeff, for myself, for Donnie, please yeah, let's hear him. Come send them into the chat right now. What other events do you have planned to play? I'm going to fire the uh, 1500 shootout on Monday. Just got permission from PokerGo executive producer Dan Gotti because we have the we have the 50k PLO on the 15th that I'm supposed to do sidelines for. And I'm like, Dan, if I make the final table, I won't be. He's like, it doesn't matter. Just play. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Is, is that just a, 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 a severe lack of confidence in, yeah. in your poker skills? Yeah, yeah. That, I, also, I mean, it's, I think it's good that we're pretty flexible overall as a company. I think so too. You know, like people can jump in and out. Can always give Brent Hank some mic because he's <laughs> never going to make a final table. That's <laughs> true, and it's good. It's fun. Like, it, you know. If you guys run deep in a poker tournament, if I run deep, if Hanks runs deep, Shulman, Maria, Jamie, Norman, Chad, also never happening. Although it kind of happened. <laughs> a little bit earlier this summer. I think it's, again, to your point, Donnie, just kind of good for the company, good for the brand. Michael Schultz says, Jeff Platt behind the scenes was cool. Did you wait to 1030 to eat? I followed whatever program that I gave Remco on that day. <laughs> so Remco came in and said, when are the protein bars? When are you eating? All that. And I had it specifically planned out for that day. So that whatever I said that day. Uh, I certainly follow. Are you an intermi intermittent faster? Yeah, but during the World Series, not as strict. Yeah, it's, on it's it, you know. I'm the same way. Yeah, okay. But then, like, you know, on a normal day, it's pretty easy to be like, okay, I'm going to eat at 12. I'm going to stop sure. eating at six. Now it's like, I don't really know what time I'm going to wake up. I don't know what time I'm going to end my day. I don't know what time anything is going on. I generally don't even know what day it is. So <laughs> I'm just trying to, you know. You miss a meal here and there. You want to yeah. catch it later. I legit was last night. I was eating some Capriati sub at I don't know midnight. <laughs> I, mean, I, I went for a ride this morning and stopped for a water refill at a park, and there was a whole family having sort of like a breakfast type setup going. And I'm like, wow, look at these people. There's on a weekday having a little breakfast get together. And then my buddy who I was riding was like, dude, it's Saturday. <laughs> like I had no idea what day it was. Just completely oblivious. No concept of time nope. of what day it is of anything of the sort. I think uh, Troy mentioned in the chat that. Ben Lamb just busted in the 25K PLO. I walked right past him, and at first I'm like, Ben, what's up, man? Good to oh, oh, this probably means that, yeah, Damn. you are We did lose. We busted. lost Negranu ah, in 16th yeah. place there. What, what was the vibe over there in Paris? Um, just just overall, or I, I didn't. I wasn't actually there. Oh, okay. I, I just came straight here to, to hang with you guys. They moved. They moved the PLO to main stage. Okay. Thunderdome. Oh, we're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then. Oh. So, Renka, if you could just kind of squint and yeah, call the action. I will. I can see from way up here. that they are on break. Looks like it. So, you, you guys will get air conditioning before the end of the series up here? So. Or no? no? It's just going to be a no it, for it y'all. Is, is, I think it's a little bit cooler today. I've been rubbing a, a bottle of frozen water uh, That's around my neck. Yeah, That's a good strategy. And every, about every five minutes, you'll feel the floor rumble. Yeah. I don't really know what that is. It must I be the tram. Before. It must be the tram goes by. Oh, maybe that's what it is. I know that they told us that the tram basically goes right over the control room. <laughs> it's so wild. And so it kind of okay. shakes the control room. So if you've been in there while that happens. These updates are just riveting. Back comes Buzz. Back comes <laughs> Stefan. <laughs> this is some quality stuff, ladies and gentlemen. And I'll send you the ones I have with you. When's the last time... You guys live reported a, a poker tournament. God. Well, um, uh, at Remco, more recently, you filled oh, in you for me PGT? on one day at, was it U.S. Poker Open? U.S. Poker Open, I had one day of coverage, which was which was great. And I and I was actually surprised at how not rusty I was. Um, Just got right back into the Right flow. back into it. As soon as I got the chip colors denominations figured out, it was, it was good to go. But the last time I did full-time reporting... I'm trying to think, but yeah, it must ahead. have been. What about yeah? What about World Series yeah, yeah, event? Yeah. The last World oh, Series event. Long time for me. It was 2000. Well, 15, right? 2016 was my last World Series with Poker News. But I, I didn't actually live report then. Mm -hmm. I was more managing. But I always, I would always like take some time and like grab a pen, grab some paper, and do it because you got to keep your skills fresh. 
Right. I also think it's valuable in any profession that when you're a manager, if you did the job that the people you're managing are doing, yeah. you can then, my, my wife is a beverage manager, and she, but she was a server, like she came up that way. You know, so she, like when they, a lot of times <laughs> they'll, they'll, they might try and pull one over on her and she'll be like, I did what you did. <laughs> I, I know what this is, okay? Like you can't, you can't tell me different, right. you know? But then also like you get managers that may not, they come in from the outside, they don't necessarily know it and then they don't get it and you can't relate to them or whatever. So it's good to know that when the people, when they were on the floor grinding with you, they know what it's like. Right. I, I love when you said that, or I, I was thinking when you said she was, she's a be beverage manager, I thought you were going to say she loves to drink, so she knows well, what's up. She does up. like the drink. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. But I think it was for me 2016 or 2015, similar situation as Donnie, because the last, was it the last two years, Donnie, we did Poker News? We were more doing editorial stuff? Yeah. It's been a, it's been a long It's been a long time. It's been a long time, and it's also, I, I remember this because we used to have this um, stat in the back end of Poker News, like who's written the most updates. And when I when I left Poker News, I was I was number one, Hit by a mile. Written the, yeah, by quite a bit, and I think Chad Holloway was was already second back then, so he's probably. I remember Chad was high, you were high, I was up there, and then oh, wow, Frank was Frank. also up there. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. That's the last like full live reporting that I did was Tim Duckworth and I went down to Seminole for some of the high rollers for the PGT August of last year. Best in the business. I mean, it's it's. It's fun to get back on the floor. Jonathan Pye is asking, what is Jeff's favorite fruit? Uh, it might actually be pineapple. Pineapple, nice. maybe pineapple so Express. Good. Maybe ki no. kiwi. Maybe cantaloupe. One of my favorite things about live reporting, it's kind of like a side thing, is when you're just on the floor and the players are talking about stuff and you just get to listen. You get to <laughs> listen to the stories. You get to hear them talk. There was, there was one time where Donnie and I were covering – I think it was the 10K stud, and Helmuth was just on an absolute, like, oh mind-bending amount Helmuth of tilt. Show. He was every hand. He was on tilt. He was playing every hand. And Donnie and I were running hands back and forth, covering that. And wh when I read it back now, this must have been 2015 or 14. It's just so fun to read <laughs> it back. I think we only co like we only, only covered Helmuth. Yeah. I mean, just because it, was, it just turned into the Helmuth show, just trying to get as many quotes as possible. He was losing his mind, ripping into the players, you know, all, all the good Helmy stuff that you always see. Is that what you guys tell people when they're like, so the Helmy stuff, is that all for the cameras? <laughs> and you're like, no, you know, actually I see him do that real. every single day, every single hand. I mean, some stuff I think is for the cameras, of course. Well, some stuff I think he would do anyway. Cameras or not, yeah. But then he takes it up a few levels. That's fair. That, that's probably a good way to put it. But Jeff, you remember not to brag, but we were at Daniel Negreanu's wedding. We were there. Yeah, we, we, were, were, we, we were invited we were by invited. Daniel and Amanda Negreanu, and, and we yeah. were seated at the table <laughs> yes, with <laughs> Phil Helmuth and his wife, and lovely wife Kathy, lovely wife Kathy. Um, and let me tell you, it does not make a difference at all. <laughs> he was still Phil Helmuth at the wedding. Um, I ran into him one time at the. DraftKings Sports Betting National Championship. I had no idea he was going to be there. Okay. I was had worked was moved over to work in the sports betting side of things for a couple of years, and so I went there to do some coverage on it. And he shows up. I think he was a guest of DraftKings or whatever, and like he sees me and he recognizes me, and he's like, "Oh, like I, I know this guy." So like we start <laughs> chatting, but he's like the same person yeah. at this event. I'm like, "Oh, you were just out of control." It's I mean, you see like some of his Instagrams. Like I saw the Instagram story he did. The other day with his kids, but he said like he didn't want to put it. His kids said that he could, they couldn't put him on camera or whatever. So I was like, I wonder what they think of him. They're probably like, Dad, what are you doing? I mean, remember when we <laughs> had his son on Friday Night Poker, and his son's like the most mild mannered, yeah. reserved, complete <laughs> gentleman. Remco, I'm happy to answer that question oh. if you want to go down that path, but yeah, answer. Oh it, yeah, you know, please. You um, you, are you guys are you guys good to go? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, more salt says hi, Jeff. Congrats on the cash. Thank you. Seemed that, no, that's all I wanted from that. Okay. But <laughs> end, <laughs> end, end of end of question. It uh, seemed harsh that Vogel saying had to answer for tanking, but mm. Schindler got off with no interview. Thoughts? So a couple couple of things come into play here. Uh, number one, just for those of you who aren't quite sure what more salt is referring to, at the end of the Heads Up Championship, we spoke with the second place finisher and the winner. Winner being Dan Smith, second place being Christoph Vogelsang. It's very relevant, of course, to that broadcast to ask Vogelsang about his tanking, why he thought it was absolutely necessary 
to take so much time in certain spots. With Schindler, on Schindler's win, I was in the booth, so we had no sideline reporting. We had no interviews scheduled whatsoever. It doesn't matter if Jake but Schindler he, he won. Declined Phil the Ivy to Phil Ivey. Right, exactly. And so no player is ever forced to do an interview. So if, if I asked at the end of the Heads Up Championship, Dan Smith and Christoph Oglesang to come up and do the interview, and one of them said no, that, that's fine. It's not part of their WSOP deal that they – that I talked to them. When Ali made the 100K high roller bounty, you know, I would ask him if he wanted to chat after he busted out. People are gonna think this is bullshit, but after he busted out, our camera that we used for the bust out interviews was out. There was a power outage on the floor, partly because it's so hot, that's another tangent, and that ruined <laughs> kind of that, that interview. And Ali said that maybe he would have talked to me, you know, probably not, but maybe he will in the future. So Schindler, same kind of thing. We'll keep asking him to talk to us. He'll probably keep saying no, and that's that's effectively where we're kind of stuck. But he could have said yes that day, and I just wasn't, you know, nobody was doing sidelines, so nobody would have talked to him on camera anyway. Yeah, he did say no afterwards. Right, and then he said I, no I mean, to, he to did, Tim, right? I don't even think he really wanted to even take photos. Like yeah. He's just... And, but he's, he's also... Not that I'm defending him, and this is going to sound like I'm defending him. He's kind of always been like that. That's all. That's you know? very true. That's like a great just, point. Yeah. He just plays for the money, really, and like he doesn't care about the the spotlight, the you know all that sort of stuff that comes with it, the the photos, the popularity, etc. Like he just goes about his business. There's that's a lot. There's a lot of players like that. You know, yeah. Yeah. someone like Sam Soverell also could give a rip about doing interviews or photos, right. and um, it's just very unfortunate. And it puts us in a tough spot. People on, in the chat are like, "Why are you putting these guys on stream? What's happening?" Yeah. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of um, tears as far as who has control about anything in this world. We are literally at the bottom. Like we have nothing <laughs> to say about who plays what or who plays in which event or who sits at what final table. And of course, if you use a little bit of common sense, you know that there's a lot more things in play than just sort of a black or white type decision as far as you know, whether or not people that have allegedly done things wrong in other places should also be barred from other places. It's, it's a very tricky situation. For us to address it is really hard, um, and I always just want to say I have no control over anything. Yeah, and I, I think it is a big enough story where it's worth mentioning on our broadcast, and we do so. We talk about it once, and then normally we, we move on. Um, part of that is because... You know, we have a TV show to produce overall, so right. these episodes are sent to CBS Sports, and in a couple months, the story will most likely be a little bit less relevant, and we don't want it full of the talk. We'd rather focus on the play and the players, and, and part of it is we want to focus just on the action and, and not the unfortunate stories that are accompanying it. But I understand the, the viewer concern, if that's the right word, of on you know kind of putting the, these guys on a pedestal but i mean it would also be easier to talk about this stuff if there was more firm evidence yeah one way yeah, or the we other ha I mean, we get nothing a lot of the stuff point. out there right now is you know to us it's allegations and, and i believe you know if you're in that high stakes circle you might be yelling at your screen right now saying like no donnie that's not evident or it's not allegations it's evidence i know well we're not in that circle. Yeah. Like, we only know what's kind of put out there on social media. And if Alex Foxen hadn't done what he did, you know, when, when Ali had that situation in Cyprus, then we probably not would have really been talking about this at all now because it just would have been still what it is and kind of, like, off the beaten path. Only people in certain circles know about it, and that's that. I mean, even Daniel Negrani has kind of said that he's immersed in the high-stakes world, but he's not in, like, these WhatsApp groups, yeah. these group chats that a lot of these other guys are in, so he doesn't necessarily always know. Same sort of thing with us. I mean, we're even way more on the outside than Daniel Negron is, right. so we just don't know. So we can only, you know, touch on the story, and we always use those words, uh, accusations, allegations. We say allegedly a lot because we just, we just don't know. Frankie asks, how do you feel about interviewing people you don't like? You know, I actually don't mind it if they're a good interview. If yeah. they're a bad interview and I don't like them, that's a pretty bad combination, and sometimes we will fight to not uh, <laughs> do those particular interviews. But all about what can be the best content for, for our shows that we do. Who's your who's the your best interview of all time? Doesn't even have to be poker. 
Um, that's a good question. Best interview of all time. You know, it, it, recency bias obviously plays into this, right? Mm -hmm. But at, to see Dan Smith get emotional like that when winning a World Series of Poker bracelet, I think in the grand scheme of things, I, I feel like that moment meant a lot for the World Series of Poker. Um, that's obviously not the best, you know, interview content-wise. I asked a question. He was very brief. He was very emotional. But uh, that stands out. What stands out to me personally is just last year's main event whenever you crown a champion of, of that magnitude and the amount of times that I talked to Corey throughout the course of that week, maybe week and a half, two weeks, to see that all come to fruition for him was, was pretty cool. And that, that stands out, especially because, I mean, you guys know this. we got to get a better in-house atmosphere. Yep for the World Series of Poker final tables. And we're just stuck because in the, the 50K high rollers, the 100K high rollers that we show, it's like for those guys, nobody's really going to show up. Maybe their girlfriend here and there. But for the main baby, it is packed. And for these other events, like I've heard some crazy rails for here for our bonus coverage for the horseshoe, and it's awesome. And the World Series of Poker has revamped the spectator experience, which is really, really cool. So I love doing interviews kind of in-house when, when the place is packed. I think that's you know, kind of gives us really cool, cool vibes at the World Series. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, more needs to be done year over year to make it more inviting and exciting to be here for some of these final tables. The biggest problem, however, with a 90 event schedule is that everyone who would come and watch for the most part is playing yeah. other tournaments. Yeah, that's so true. So they stop by on break. That's it. Like, hey, man, how's it going? How many chips you got? Oh, four left. Good, man. Best Let's of luck. Go. go get them. You saw that a little bit yesterday with um, I mean, you had the two tables were juxtaposed to each other. You had the 1K freeze out at one table within that horseshoe section, and then on the other one, you had the $2,500 uh, mixed triple draw. And the person who won it, Dominic Sarley, had a rail, but then he was facing Jerry Wong. And Jerry Wong's like a seasoned professional, been around a while. Like a lot of his friends were, they would kind of pop over from the other tournament they were playing. Like Jake Schwartz was playing on the other side of the room, but he was in a tournament. Yeah. So he would come run over. By. He'd be like, hey, you know, check in. How's it going? You know, let's go, Jerry, et cetera, and then run back. I think he actually yelled, let's go, Chubby, at one point, <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then ran back. So it's, it's kind of like that. Um, I mean, you just don't see the big rails. And it's not that these guys don't have a lot of friends and aren't really well-liked. It's just that their friends are – playing other tournaments. As you saw a lot of that last year when Jason Kuhn won his bracelet. I mean, Jason Kuhn's like the most well-liked guy in poker, yet there was really no one on the rail because they're all, yeah. th it, they're just very used to it. You know, like that's just how it is. Which sucks <laughs> because for Jerry because I feel like he's on everybody's rail. Yeah. Right? We see him yeah. stop by a ton. Again, like we said, just for those brief break spots. Of course. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting. What are you guys firing in? Next, I'm sure you've discussed fifteen hundred dollar horse. No choice. That fifteen hundred dollar horse. Beautiful. I, I'm undecided. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm actually. I mean, not to bring up cycling at every every chance that I get, but I'm actually training for an event. We're doing a race a week from now on Saturday in Elko, Nevada, oh. which is seven and a half hours north of here, oh, that's which is way far. too far. Um, but my, so my fastest to there and back wins the race. Yeah, basically. Okay. My girlfriend and I are, are going to race there in our car <laughs> uh, on Friday. And then do the race on Saturday and race back Sunday morning. Can people like watch these races? No, I mean no, not the level that I'm on. No. What about like that one you do all the time, the Belgian waffle ride? So that's that has like live coverage on Instagram. So there's a Got there's it. a car Sweet. or a moto that like a, like one of those like dirt bikes that follows the race, and you can like you know watch the front of the race. But you know, for me to ever get there, I would have to stop eating all these chips and chocolate covered <laughs> almonds and you know these uh, these. Um, you Capri got a snack. I mean, this is intense. Uh, what time did you guys start? Noon? We started at noon, so it's been about seven hours. I mean, you go seven hours straight with pretty much no breaks. I mean, I know, like you said, Donnie, you kind of can get up here and there. Yeah, I bring my, my food right there. I, if I've eaten two meals already. I mean, Donnie is like water, water boy. Like, he just brings a whole cooler. No one. Every single time he opens it, not, something new comes out. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know how many meals are in there, but it's I feel like it's three. like a bottomless. It's just like a bottomless uh, supply. Um, Remco ate a Capriati sandwich earlier. From last night, just from leftovers. Last night. That, oh, that's how that I roll. Sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> last night was nuts with how late it was. I mean, it's what like time did it end then? Three fifteen or something. I mean, they played heads up for six hours. That's unbelievable. By the way, back to our vlog, Jeff. Yes. which you had a great appearance on. Um, of all the segments that, that we had to trim, yours was not one of them. <laughs> okay, we could just nice. keep it all rolling. Um, but I think there's a lot of misunderstandings. Misunderstanding within the people watching our stream and perhaps yeah. also Poker Go 
of what goes into the production. And then we yeah. did give we did give a good look behind the scenes. So people go check out our vlog. It's on the Pokego YouTube channel where you know Donnie and I give you sort of a behind the scenes look. We have some cool ideas also for this upcoming week. But from your perspective, Jeff, when you first came to play the World Series of Poker and then moved into you know your sideline and, and broadcast the role, like what were some of the more eye-opening things about how how different it was versus your perception of the whole thing? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I mean. Our production crew for these preliminary bracelet events is, you know, around 15 to 20 people. A couple people join for, you know, in certain spots here and there. Like, how many people run this, for example? It's we got Brad here. Brad. So it's Brad. <laughs> boom, Brad boom, and done. Brad and we're talking. So, you yeah. know, you see everybody in the chat. They're like, zoom in on this, zoom out on this, add another camera here, add another camera there. It's just like, you, Brad's doing enough, and, and that's it. It takes a lot more to get together a really solid production. The main event has 80 people. 80. 80. 80 oh on the production God, that's crew. Wow. 80, which is just absolutely insane. They bring in trucks and trucks and trucks and I just like when they bring equipment. in that really big jib. And oh, they bring in the, the big, big jib. Yeah, it, looks the, like, it, it looks like a crane. Jib. I don't, yeah. I don't know what that when, is. when I see the guy with the Kentucky hat, that's when <laughs> yeah, I know it's you serious. Know that, uh, yeah, that's yeah. when I know it's serious. Um, so I, I think, yeah, the magnitude, the scale of the production probably surprised me the most but it, i mean it makes sense when you see it and when you see it months later on, on cbs sports you know that plenty had to had to go into it and a lot a lot a lot does go into this and that's why you know that's part of why i tweeted at bally's about the air conditioning i mean i was like annoyed with it i was hot whatever while I'm playing but for their dealers their staffers but also for our guys like paul dees is this little dude out on the floor and he carries this massive camera around. <laughs> so he weighs 100 pounds. The camera's 40 pounds. It's 112 degrees here in Valleys. So part of part, I just wanted to look out for our crew uh, a little bit because they do uh, such a great job and, and, and they work so hard. It's, it's definitely a different beast once you see it with your own eyes and more than happy to... Uh you know, to give give people. That's why I liked what you guys did. How you yeah. kind of went behind the scenes. You showed in the control room. You talked to to Pat and to George, our producer and and our director, or one of the producers, one of the directors, I should say. His whole crew. And they were able yeah. to give you some more some more insight into that. So for them to work, you know, that twelve hour show or whatever that was, that is really difficult because they always have to be on. Like commentary, yeah. we can talk, we can mess around, we can talk with the chat and whatever. But the, George consistently has to be like camera seven take seven camera nine take nine pat's consistently telling dealer flop turn river you know all that pat's like go to this let's go to this graphic tanner's making graphics in the back i could go on and on but so much goes into it like they are constantly working throughout a 12-hour broadcast oh like w when you're considered talent and you have to speak into a microphone <laughs> that is by far the easiest job it's not close it, it is, is not, not close, close. It have, is. have you ever had a very diva talent request have you seen the snacks that he has? Yeah, but, they're the, like, but that's crew yeah. snacks. So <laughs> last year I mentioned this 80-person main event crew. And so we had a, a PA who I guess was just, like, assigned to me. And so I felt, I felt like, really bad. You know, the first two days he comes up to me. He's like, Jeff, can I get you anything? Can I get you? I'm like, no, 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 I'm good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then the third day he's like, I, you know, I can get you whatever you want. And I'm like, how about, like, some – raisinettes or something he's like done <laughs> and then you know he leaves and 30 minutes later comes back with some chocolate covered raisins and and uh i was good to go and that's that's about as uh as diva as i sometimes i'll notice things donnie is funny funny you mentioned that so like you see how this fifth place thing doesn't have the dollar sign yeah yep. and so i'll like I'll, I'll you know hit my uh talk back to producer and be like pat fifth place you know we need to add a dollar sign to it like i do little little things like that which i'm sure uh get on people a little bit, but I don't really request that much. We just left the dollar sign off for engagement. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, like people that, chat so people chat. notice. Yeah. Good for the algorithm. You mess up one thing a day and then, yeah. Well, we, we've been basically learning as we go on this stream. And John Bovenizer made an interesting comment to me probably a few weeks ago. And he Producer was John, not cameraman. John. Cameraman John. <laughs> yeah. um, he said how he was listening to our commentary, or maybe it was the housewarming stream, where he said, like, you guys have you guys have changed so much since you did your first stream with like oh, the one hour previews. Yeah. And then I, I was listening back to one of the older ones we did, and it's definitely one of those comfort level things where you become comfortable in the situation. And then especially with these bonus coverage streams, by the way, we're about to restart. Um, 
you get comfortable and it becomes sort of laid back, you hang out with the chat, you have sort of conversation, and then it becomes the easiest and most fun job in the world because yeah. you're just like, you know, trying to entertain the people and it's almost like a podcast. It's like once that initial stress is, is over with, you just you just go. Yeah, exactly. Comfort with it is is very key. Hey, I'm about to start heads up again. There it is. We're on, we're on right. Yeah, that's good. We got table audio back. The printer. You can hear the printer in the back. Oh, wait. No, that's the uh, shuffle machine. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't take off these uh, 20 packs. I'm ready. How about the new chips? Oh, they're the pretty dream, sexy. right? They're, they're pretty great. My only... I mean, it's not even really a gripe. It's, it's just that we need to break them in for like another couple more weeks. Yeah, they're, they're a little <laughs> stiff when yeah, you try to just, do some sharp right now. Yeah. But, I mean, that, but that's that's not even a complaint. That's just that they're brand oh, new. They're, they're so amazing. They are. And we have the good chips for every single event. Whether you play a single table satellite, yeah. a daily deep stack, or this 3K, you get the good chips. Obviously different color sets, but the quality is so good. I love it. Yeah, we got at least five more years of these chips still being awesome. Oh. Sweet and especially the higher denomination chips that aren't used as much, yeah, they'll stay Those fresh will be for clean such a long and time. Look yeah, this good. is your eight your, That's your big blind. Okay. The uh, the one hundred dollar, the sort of entry level black chips are going to get all rounded, while the twenty five k and above will stay nice <laughs> and square. <laughs> by the way, action back underway here. If you're just Let's tuning go. in, my name is Rem Karinkama, joined by Donnie Peters. We've been here for seven hours, and Jeff Platt has joined us here for the finale of this event. We're playing 400, 800K, Donnie. Is that the blinds right now? Should be, yeah. 4, 10, queen on the flop. Two spades. Check from Leonard. I think it's a 3 to 1 chip lead for Boas to start. Or a 2 to 1 chip lead. For yeah, Boas we have 32 million for Boas and 16 million for Leonard to start this seventh hour of the final table. You guys get the impression that these two chatted during the break about some cash, or we, you think we're know. playing for it all? Good question. I mean, I honestly, I never have any idea what happens with with that stuff at the WSP. I feel like it's it's gotten to the point now where the players know that yeah, traps deals are aren't facilitated, so they they just pass on it. I mean, I don't know. I think probably if you're if you know the other person, like in some of these high roller tournaments, I think a lot of those guys know each other, or at least know each other well enough that they're like, hey, you know, Jeff, let's make a deal, you know, whatever. Pretty easy. At the housewarming fun. final table, they got to four-handed, and they, they started talking about it on the stream, like on, on this secondary stream. They were like, hey, you know, you guys want to just kind of do ICM and then play for a little bit or whatever. And it lasted for like two or three minutes before finally the tournament director heard them, yeah. came over and was like, guys, no talking <laughs> yeah. about chops. You cannot talk about money. If you guys want to go to the bathroom and do whatever you want to do, fine. But the money on the payouts is what somebody is signing for. So that's that. <laughs> Just quickly squashed it. But the, I mean, those guys, you know, being a more accessible price point at $500 just probably aren't aware of, you know, what's going on. But also, like, they probably got, I mean, they bought him for, what, 500 They might yeah. be in for $1,000, playing for hundreds of thousands yeah. of dollars. For them, it's like, can we just lock up another 50 k please? <laughs> the, the biggest spot for me, which I'll never get into, is getting heads up in a tournament. That's when I'm like, okay, we're just basically flipping coins here for piles and piles of money where I would, would like to entice someone to make a deal. But before that, I would just look, let's let her, let's let her ride, you know, nine buy-ins or, or 11 buy-ins. Let's just yeah. play some poker. I, mean, I, I lean that it would be good to let the players make deals. I mean, it's, it's their money ultimately. Five, four, three, four. Double suited in the flop. Looks like a nice Omaha eight a better hand. <laughs> Boas checks the Leonard who has been Putting up a tough fight here during heads up play. Six of spades on the river. Kurt is giving us some love. He says it's really amazing to see this bonus coverage. Nice. Thank you, Kurt. Appreciate it. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Tim Duckworth in the mix. Tim Moving Duckworth. The bracelet. What a legend. Tim Duckworth just lifeguard short into the shot. <laughs> Quads on fleek. Let's go, Toby, in the chat. Is the, is the Pineapple Squad still with us in the chat? They have to be. We had his entire family watching right now. Oh, I love awesome. that. 
I mean, here the door is wide open with all of your bluffs. I think you're turning any threes that you have into a bluff. If you have a spade in your hand. You can't check back at a, a not so good hand like queen high, king high, stuff like that. 1.5. Blacks are worth 500k for those of you oh. watching. Makes the call. Time for a showdown. Looks like, was it four, four, deuce. four, four deuce, deuce and king deuce? We both have straight. We both have straight. Straight, chop. straight. Chop. chop, chop. The deuce and the deuce. There, there's a little value out of the deuce. Going for a little value, I should say. Pineapple squad in the house. Angel Vu, Kelly, Aaron B, Hope Jones. Appreciate everyone sticking with us here. It's been a long stream, but everyone's still hanging tough. It's awesome to see. Yeah, heads up for a bracelet. This is what it's all about right here. I know. It's kind of funny how that works sometimes where you're you're working up to get to heads up to play for all the money, and then somehow the energy really drops. It's, it's unbelievable. I'm so glad you said that. You notice that in all the tournaments, that, or 99% of the tournaments we do, everything just dies. I always heads say this. Three-handed poker is the most exciting to watch. Yeah, yeah. The dynamics that we had today were, were, were very exciting as well as Boas had such a massive chip lead that he was basically, you know, pushing his opponents around. Boas folds button, as Brent Hanks would always say on our broadcast. You don't <laughs> want to fold the button too often with Big Blind Ante. Maybe you would fold the seven deuces, eight deuces of the world. But then again, why would you ever do what Brent Hanks says? Yeah, I know. I mean, <laughs> what kind of success does he have to show right. for? Do you feel as though your poker game has gotten sharper by doing more commentary? For sure, for sure. I, I mean, it's just when you watch the, the very best in the world time and time again, and then you get to listen to the commentary of, you know, either a Brent or a Maria or a Jamie, a, a Shulman, it's just naturally going to make you a better player. So I feel like... Playing poker helps me in broadcasting. Broadcasting helps me in playing. Okay. It also helps when we get to see the whole cards and be like, yep, <laughs> you know. It does make Should it. Should probably bet here. Right, it does <laughs> make it easy to to predict what's going to happen. But here it's a different kind of guessing game, which is cool. Yeah, we are sort of playing blind here, yeah. but you know, that's what you also be doing if you were playing yourself. Right, right. So you can put yourself in somebody's shoes Have you ever watched the old WSOP stuff yeah. when they didn't have it? Like, when, when Helmuth was on, I mean, he would, like, know the hands all the time. I'm like, I, I don't understand. I mean, obviously he's a really good player. Yeah. So, but, like, he would be spot on. I'm like, what is happening? I mean, it just goes to show you that the level of play. I would like to see. We should see if we can get, like, a, I don't know, like a Nick Shulman in here for, like, this. I want to see him, like, kind of see if he can call the hands or right. whatnot. Yeah. Or, you know, I'm assuming he can, you know. But it would just be cool to see, cool to listen to. Right, because he could give you very specific ranges for really every spot. I nailed one today. I was pretty there happy. There we go. I mean, yeah. you, had a re you, you really nailed that one. The ace jack one, the fox and bluff. I mean, the the river check raise all in. Oh yeah. Well, but then I also nailed there was an ace jack one as well. Oh yeah. I mean, you were right twice in seven hours. I mean, that's, that's <laughs> phenomenal. <laughs> Lion squirrel finds a nut every once in a while. Is it me or is it getting hotter up here? We added another body, so the BTUs go yeah. up. The BTUs. That was there has been like some guy that was like tweeting, or maybe he was in the chat of one of our streams saying that like. Every 1,000 people, the BTU. Yeah, there somebody like, on Twitter. Okay. I've seen that on Twitter also. Oh, wow. Right. Right. Trey in the house. Appreciate you as always watching. This Good. is our bonus. Real Trey, baby. This is our bonus coverage. So not too much wiggle room with our setup here. I think we're they better than nothing. Man. I think we got a good overview here of the action. The genesis of this was uh, 
the 10k dealer's choice last yeah. year. Remember when Helmuth yep. made it and we weren't streaming that day and we kind of scrambled just to throw something up and we basically, I don't know, what did we have? We had like five camera shots just like on the screen and I don't think anyone was commentating. It. it was just there. I did, I, Norman was going solo at first and yeah. I texted our executive producer, Dan Gotti. I'm like, put me in coach, let's go. Yeah. Was on for a little bit, Ben Ludlow was on for a little bit. It's so kind of rotated. It's so honest. fun how it sometimes all comes together. Yeah. Those are the memories from the WSOP that you always sort of, you know, hold on to about what makes this event so special. Meanwhile, we see a flop again. 7 8 deuce, two spades. So many small pots, it feels almost as if we're waiting for two big hands to clash yeah. here. Victor is wondering if it's the new final table setup. It is not, it actually. Is not. It is not. No, this is a one person operation. <laughs> Shout out to producer Brad, who's been doing an awesome job. Tomorrow, the PokerGo main channel is back with the 25K PLO High Roller final table. You can check out the WSP.com live reporting right now to see who's in contention as we just lost Daniel Legrano mm -hmm. and Ben Lamb. Boo. Still got Josh Hare in there. Yeah, Josh is going to go back, back to back POI, most that likely. Would be crazy. Boas check to nice. Leonard, who bet 800K. Got a check raise oh. now. Looks like 2.4 million. Blinds are 400K, 800K with the 800K big blind Annie. Most recent count on Leonard is that he has about 20 big blinds. Boas, about 40 big blinds. Gonna see a call here. To the turn we go. King of clubs, mm. two flush draws. In this situation, Jeff, when you're in Boas' shoes, check raising that flop. Uh huh. Are you just probably check raising a pretty wide pretty, range yeah, here? Yeah, I was gonna say. Like you could have some weaker flush draws. You could have like some backdoor club draws, where you kind of like to see that turn card, and you can continue to put some pressure on your opponent. If you did check raise with a, a flush draw, you're kind of in an awkward spot here. You should probably still be firing and firing big, right? I. I I feel as though, given how sticky both players have been, if you're Boas and you're check raising, you have to also have a plan for the turn. Yeah. I don't see when him just, you know, giving up right away. Right. Because he's, he's probably expecting to get called. So if you he's going for value, he's going to continue. But if he's bluffing, he's also going to continue. Probably want to check raise some of your eights, too. And in that, you might just go check call mode here. This looks like 3.5 million. Leonard with the stare down. And as we've said before, they were both playing very fast prior to getting down to heads up play, and it's slowed down considerably. You could check raise a, you know, jack four clubs type hand, a couple backdoor draws, and find that club and continue to fire. good sizing for value also so well, we're stacking that's a call 3.5 million each massive pot biggest pot of the heads up so far to the river we go queen of Ooh. spades that has a lot of implications Boas could have been check raising with a strong flush draw with overcards could have hit a king at the same time you can also assign spades to Leonard's range. Absolutely, after go Leonard goes call, call. <coughs> Just imagine being heads up for this amount of money and a bracelet and finding yourself in a massive pot like this. What if Boas was check raising with a 
strong value hand that it doesn't have spades, then this of course becomes oh. is it all, in? all in is the all of it. Bet Leonard's gonna double check his cards. Let's have a look. There's no snap call. That means he doesn't have the nuts, but he seems interested. I mean, to counter my own argument. Uh, oh, he makes wow. the call. There it is. Four wow. five. That. Pulling the cards dealer. Looks like he just has a king. king. Is that king seven? Five, seven nine, king eight? Eleven, king eight, two pair. Eleven, the four five, five bluff with the gut shot. Takes it to the river. Massive double up for Stefan Leonard. And the first big misstep for Toby Boas after turning his 10 big blind stack into a heads up chip lead. Took it to the streets. Took it one. to the streets. Oh my God. Did have a spade in his hand, which helps a little bit as far as bluff candidates may be concerned. Yeah, take 100. But that's bold. Wow. I like it, even though it ran right into it. But King eight like makes a rather quick call. And now Stefan Lenner with a huge chip lead. Wow, what a massive hand. Two pair for the call. That is a game changer, gentlemen. Dealer showing it right there. The king of spades. Oh, with the king of spades in his hand. Walk that definitely helps. But that turn card, that unbelievable. Boas check raises with the gut shot. Gets called and Leonard just spikes the king on the turn to make two pair. Wow. Big turn of events here. Looks like about 10 million now for Boas. That means that Leonard is up to 39 million. What a hand. <laughs> Incredible. We, we've done three of these streams now, Donnie, and every single time we've had at least one insane hand. Yeah, we've had many insane that hands. That housewarming final oh, table, that was full of insane table ones. was crazy. The six max one was also pretty wild. I mean, this one has had some big hands as well. Unfortunately for, uh, was it Rustler? <laughs> he was involved in a lot of big hands, but things just didn't go his way. Is that what 12, 13 bigs? Yeah. Just about Rip City Bunny. Yes, Sinji, the ace ace versus ace three hand was insane. Absolutely incredible. That's how Henry Akain won the house warming tournament. He had the ace three <laughs> and an ace flopped, if you guys can believe it. But backed into a flush. What do you think about Boaz going for it there, 5-4? Um, this is going to sound really hindsighty, yeah. but I thought that when Leonard made the call on the turn and committed as much of his stack as he did, he has to be very strong and is not on a draw. You know, it just seems like... I, I just haven't seen Leonard get, get out of line start chasing things like if he had the 10 nine off there or something like that yeah or e even if he was on a, on a flush draw like you know let's say he has ace three of spades like i just i don't know i mean maybe he does and you know we haven't seen whole cards obviously the whole final table so i can't say for certain but it just seemed like when he put so much of his chips in on that that turn that maybe that's something that boas might want to you know pick up on and say hey you know okay like this guy must just have it so I, I took my two shots, obviously check yeah. raised the flop and then fired the turn, so let's just... Uh, and even if down. he does have a draw, if it's the queen of spades that pops up yeah. on the river, it's not like the dream for you. Yeah. No, so he either has that big hand or he has the draw and like queen of spades is just not fantastic. I mean, but then again, I will say that, I mean, I've been extremely impressed by Boas the entire final yeah. table. Like I've been saying it the whole time where he just seems to really understand 
lots of different ranges, stack sizes, what to do. He's been extremely measured the whole time. So, I mean, who am I to question to right. question him? You know, he's he's battled on the short stack for this whole time and now gotten to heads up play. It's kind of fun. We haven't seen at any of the final tables we've done. No one's kind of really gotten out of line, and then like all of a sudden you it's see them kind of get out of line. Yeah. And it's like it's like okay, like you know, not everyone just has it every time, which is how poker is. You know, when you're playing, yeah. you don't always see the cards, and you just kind of think people have it, and you got to just give them credit. And then all of a sudden you see someone show up with like seven three off, and you're like, what just happened? <laughs> like okay. <laughs> Aggressive card shuffler. Oh yeah. Well, really nice. I mean, you there's can't see it now, right but there's it. a mic like right there. Okay. <laughs> that is. Yeah. But sometimes it sounds louder than other times. It's just working overtime. I think Leonard's limped every button. Yeah, there hasn't been seen. a lot of raising preflop in this heads-up play. It's been mostly limping. Bo has folded a couple. Ace for a deuce flop here. I would guess a simple bet from Leonard takes it just given this position. Greg Davis, yes, it should be about three to one in chips in favor of Leonard. The Austrian, Stefan Leonard, on the right of the upper right screen. Toby Boas on the left in the Fabulous pineapple shirt. Khalid says, your five screen split, it's really the worst thing I never see in my life. Absolutely <laughs> disgusting. Well, thanks for tuning in. Uh, Much I appreciate it. it. Thanks for your support. I mean, we can just shut it off and then you guys can, you know. Well, no, there's nothing else on YouTube for Khalid to watch yeah. except this. I mean, it's, it's fine. I haven't really seen Leonard, or I can't recall him getting involved in terms of calling a shove with really anything other than a really strong hand. Like he's, there's been times when he's thought about things and I'm assuming it's been a little bit more marginal and just, just giving it up and not really press those edges. But, so I would kind of expect the same thing here. No need to let your opponent get back in the match. from Leonard on the button. Holding a commanding chip lead, he's obviously gonna try to play as many pots as possible, trying to break his opponent. If you're just tuning in, 7.23 p.m. in Las Vegas, well, let us know where you're watching from. Is it late at night? Is it early morning? Coffee, breakfast, soda, <laughs> beer? Coffee, soda, juice. <laughs> Classic. Absolute classic. <laughs> so. Shout out to Shrunk. Limith Pot check to Leonard, who bets one big blind. I just remember back in the day playing a ton of poker, and you would never, ever, ever bet one big blind. Unheard of. Right. And you even see that nowadays in Raise Pots Free. Yeah. Check to, and they'll just bet one big. Oh. There's a check raise, 2.4 million. It's a decent portion of Boas stack. Right? 
Has about seven million left behind. Blinds are at 400, 800K with an 800K big blind any. Oh, here we go. Leonard makes the call. To the turn we go. Six million in the middle. My math's correct. Queen of diamonds on the turn. Seven million left for Boas. This feels a little bit like shuffle territory. Shuff checked territory, I should say. Yeah, he just open folds. <laughs> <laughs> you got this. Sorry, guy. yeah, sorry. I don't believe in it anymore. Even though, big blind wise, we're not talking about massive pots, but when the, when the stacks are as shallow as they are, then yeah, very significant. Every big blind becomes significant. Did boss check? Yes. Yes. Did the subtle tap to rail? Little. Jeff, you're a you're a point checker, right? Yeah, like, but like I lift my hand way up in the air and then bring down one finger, usually the middle finger, but face down, so it's still polite and respectful. And Jack. <laughs> After Boaz's check, Leonard takes over the betting lead. 1.8 1. 8. 8 million. Small here. Yeah, very small. Basically, open invite to Boaz. Checker is all in. Show me what you got. Let's go. We've got British Columbia in the house, Indiana, Calgary, New Smyrna Beach. Wow. <coughs> if he just calls this, it's very interesting mm -hmm. after the check raise. He does make the call. Could just call it a lot of flush draws here because you know a shove's just going to get snapped off most likely anyway. You think a queen is now sort of out of his range? He would like no, to not necessarily. No. Probably play a queen the same way. Yeah. Check, check. Quick check, check. Deuce five for a deuce. They did a hard draw Ooh, as well. Slow turnover. 10 3. 10 3 it is. Oh, wow. Wow, Leonard um, wins another pot. This is a very, very big one. It's going to be hard to come back from this for the Pineapple Express as he's down to about 5.1 million right now. I'm surprised at the turn bet, but it does indeed work perfectly if your opponent has a deuce. Yeah, wow. Looks like we're saying goodbye to the green 25K chips. Let's see what else we got going on in the chat. Kitchener, Ontario, Indiana in the house, Manchester, UK. Coming up on half three in the morning. Ooh. Nice. Hope you don't have to late night grind. Do anything tomorrow. Seattle in the house. Niceville still in the house, Donnie. Niceville, Florida, baby. Donnie thought it wasn't the real place. I mean, because it sounds like pleasant as sound big. It's 15,000 people as of 2020. It's known for some mullet festival. Nice. Oh, yeah, I read it on the air earlier. Some oh. brewer there. Yeah. Well, it's going to be go time for Mr. Boaz pretty soon. Getting those green chips off the table. Yeah. I mean, it really makes see the difference. It makes Boaz stack look even smaller. <laughs> Leonard has an enormous chip lead. Just tuning in, we're heads up. Event 16, 3K no limit hold'em bonus coverage. Gets a walk. 345K guaranteed for the runner up. And 558 awaiting the winner, along with that beautiful gold bracelet as shown on the table. 
My name is Rem Karinkama, joined by Donnie Peters since the start. And we've had Jeff Platt in the mix here for the last hour or so. No breaks on this channel, we just went straight through Hour it. through, baby. Podcast style. The beautiful sound you're hearing is the shuffle machine. It sounds like one of those um, white noise machines, except on steroids. Here we go. All in on a call. Let's see him. Jack four versus, is that ace high? I believe so. Ace nine for Leonard. Lots of fours. Toby Boas, a jack or a four to stay alive, or this belongs to Stefan Leonard. King, four, three. A four for Boas. Puts him in the lead, five on the turn. Ace or a deuce or a nine. Three on the river. We got ourselves a double up. 3.1 million. We're playing 400, 800K blinds. Never know. It's how it starts. It's still possible. The first of many, as Boaz would like to claim. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. That's my time. Up to a little over six, or actually seven. seven million right now. Nine big blinds, give or take. If you get one more, you're in business. Yeah, exactly. Grinding online a lot, Jeff, as well? No, I just don't enjoy that as much. I mean, I played the 500 on Sunday, um, but the anti list 500. Live is worth, oh, God, for an hour and a half, you just play with like 800 sorry, big sorry blinds, no team. ante. I love the live structures, though, where you just put big blind ante and play right from the beginning. Often just Let's put go. The same structures the same online, thing. just adjust the time. Because right. you obviously see a lot more, you know, right. 10 minute blinds or whatever it is, and just. All in and a fold. Yeah, the live structures have been good, even in stuff like, you know, the $500 house warning. Uh -huh. People are like, oh, you know, it's $500. It's just crazy. I mean, you get a lot of play. I mean, it obviously gets a little bit faster when you make it to, like, level 12. But, I mean, whatever. You got to start busting people somehow. It's 20,000 <laughs> entry turn. Yeah. Yeah. colors in play. The black chips are 500k. The purple-ish, bluish type chips, 100k. I, I can't decide on the color of those chips. I'm leaning A little purple. more purple. Yeah. yeah. Here we go. All in. And a call. Oh, man. Ace-7 shown. There was an ace by, killed, right? By Boas. Yeah. Ace of clubs is dead, but then I believe we're dealing with a bigger yeah. ace. Ace 10 offsuit versus Ace 7. Boas is gonna need some sevens, and you know what they say. It always comes seven. Seven from heaven. The Let's crowd see the calling for diamonds. Let's see the flop here. Diamonds also a possibility here. Jack 9 8. The 10 would now give Boas a straight. Do not want a seven now if you're Boas. Five on the turn. No flush draws. Six also. Nine on the river, and that is it. Stefan Leonard from Austria Ooh. wins event 16 to 3K oh. No Limit Hold'em for $558,000. Round of applause for both players as Toby Boas came into the final table with just 10 big blinds. He was the short stack, ran it all the way back up to finish second for $345,000. The biggest score for each for every player here in this heads-up battle. Well done by everyone that we got to cover today at the final table and a special well done to everyone in the chat tonight. The Pineapple Express was going strong. Lots of fruits in the chat, lots of giveaways. We're done. If you want to give away, please reach out to us, twitter.com slash go. Slide into those DMs. Thank you all so much for watching. It's been an honor and a pleasure. Jeff, thank you for stopping by. Thank you guys for having me. Always a blast. Now that you know how to get here, 
Whenever you're bored, you just I'm come just up here come up, join and hang out. Sounds good to me. Perfect. Let's Don do it. Donnie Peters, thank you as well. Follow us on Twitter at Jeff Platt. Is it just Jeff Platt? Yeah. Simple. He's got the, got the name. It's just easy. Yeah. Unbelievable. Do you have to pay for that? You don't have at Remco yet? I have at Remco Rink. I actually no, I, I negotiated with that guy once. <laughs> he charged this. me a lot of money. <laughs> Wait, you really it. did? I tried, yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, at Remco Rink, that's me on Twitter. At Donnie underscore Peters. Follow him as well. Um, when the next bonus coverage will happen is up in the air. It's called bonus coverage for a reason. If we see a good final table, or maybe even a good day two, we'll try to turn it on and give you guys some more stuff to watch. Tomorrow, though, on the Mothership Station, on the main feature table, 25K PLO High Roller Final Table. Starting at 5 p.m. Pacific Time, 8 p.m. Eastern. If you're new to Poker Go, use promo code GETWSOP30 to save $30 on the annual sub. Donnie Peters ran the numbers. It comes down to $5.83 per month if you use the promo code. So well worth the investment. We've got lots of streams still to come. But for now, this is it. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.